And welcome back to Hoi An Vietnam, continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series from the Hoi An Resort and Golf. Ali Najad, alongside Randy Liu, set to bring you day two coverage of Event 9, this 100K main event, which really has been a star-studded affair. And Randy, let's get to the particulars for those that might be joining us now, didn't catch up on day one. Of course, as mentioned, it is a 100K buy-in, 50-minute levels, 250k starting stacks and on top of the big payout which we'll get to momentarily one jacob and co watch the likes of which henrik Eklund and stevie chidwick are generally seen wearing out there on the felt and we didn't know whether or not we were going to break a record as we drew the curtain on yesterday's action randy but i believe you've got an update yes we had 16 entries at the start of this day and we have a total of 135 entries for this record-breaking event our prior record was 130 from the light London Triton main event. Pretty remarkable when you come to think about the genesis of the Triton tour and how it really was just a few dozen players that we might find buying in to an event at uh, this buy-in level. Really don't know what to attribute it to. Crypto still down. So really, uh, you know, guys have been making money out there quietly. Okay, so the payouts. Talked about it earlier. 20 places will be paid. 175K First is 3.25 million uh, for 1 million plus prizes. That 175, by the way, going to be the first of the payouts. And uh, if you think that is impressive, maybe we should reflect on yesterday, Randy, when one of the most impressive and perhaps even surprising moments of this main event surely played out right on our cameras. David Peters, under the gun. Pocket fives. Open to 6K with the blinds at 1,2500. 1, All seems standard. Negi, pocket nines, a flat. Then Sebastian Guile. In the cutoff. Flats as well. Anson Yu able to close the action with a Jack-10 offsuit. A four-way affair where Anson flopped top pair. But of course, the real powerhouse belonged to Sebastian Guile, who had it checked through to him. And with 27-5 in the middle and middle set, this is where things got interesting. Yeah, you know, you st of course you're going to bet a set when it gets checked to you. And for Anson, top pair, standard call. But Phil Nagy, has got pocket nines, brings in a check raise. And not just against one player, but two. So perhaps leveraging that fact to make this look even more impressive, the nines, blockers, of course, once the queen of spades was turned to a 9-10, but unblockers to the spades, as Negi's check raise was, of course, called by Sebastian, who then bet 30,000 into 104.5, and Negi found his cape with the big S on it, check raised to 105,000, Yeah, one and would sent think, a set of eights into the muck. One would think that he was going to give up when he checked the turn, but the double check raise, pretty much a, a rare move you've ever you've never seen it you, you know, just like really never see it when you unlock achievements in like a you know a mobile <laughs> game or something like that that one really should be we should run a pin out and just stick it on phil nagy with like a 2x cr on it that is one that we do not see that often what exactly is it that you think led to nagy choosing to make that play with the two nines especially the lack of a spade strikes me as an issue yeah you know um the flop check raise not standard there, but maybe he would just want to see if he can take it down. Maybe he thought he had the best hand. Then when he got called, he was a bit worried. Something clicked on his mind on the turn. I don't think it was actually, I'm going to double check raise him. But when he checked to Sebastian on the turn with the spade dropping off, he saw that Sebastian actually bet pretty small, about 30% of the pot, and was thinking, this guy can't handle the heat, right? Like, I've got two blockers and nines. I block some straights. I'm only worried about maybe... A one pair of hand with a spade. Who knows? I'm not sure what Nagy exactly was thinking, but he came in for double check raise, mainly because I think he was attacking that small bet sizing there. Well, then let's focus on that a little bit. Perhaps that's a situation Sebastian doesn't find himself in if he comes with a little bit bigger sizing that might be meant to protect his set a touch more because it, it was milky and it was a vulnerable holding on that Queen Jack 8 three spade board. Yeah, and you know, Sebastian on the turn probably felt pretty uncomfortable checking this because he, he didn't want another spade to drop off. He didn't want a 9 or 10 to drop off, would bring a 4-liner. And he felt like he needed to bet. And then he 
didn't want to bet too big because he didn't want to be too committed to the pot in case he was up against like a nut flush draw or something like uh, a nut flush. And Nagy just pounced on it. You know, maybe the bigger sizing was better. It's hard to say. We might be a little bit results oriented, but Nagy was definitely there to play. And before you go getting too critical uh, in terms of Sebastian's fold there, put yourself in his shoes. You're playing a main. It's a 100K event. You got Phil Nagy, who's a bit unpredictable and could absolutely have taken this line with a hand that has a set of eights beat on the turn, of course. But your check raised with middle set on the flop. Maybe a little bit greedy, but obviously so much hand at, at, on that board, a wet one, and then kind of a nightmarish card in terms of the third spade and the queen, completing 9-10 and completing the flush. If I give you a set of eights in that seat, Randy, might you find the muck as well, as played? You know, as played, him betting 30K and again check raise, it's hard to say because the good thing about a set of eights is that you can, if you are behind, you can still fill up and win a huge pot against a flush. Obviously, you're taking a set of jacks and a set of queens out of that conversation yes. in terms of the hands that we think we are behind against, 9-10 and spades being the ones. Of course. And I also don't think that 9-10 would check raise me a lot on the turn when the flush comes in, so I would discount that quite a bit. I think calling on a turn is a reasonable play, but it seems that Sebastian was very convinced that it's a flush or nothing, and therefore didn't think he had the odds to continue. All right, and on the topic of continuing, let us move forward. Day two action, a look at the Triton Poker Plus app. Download it if you haven't already. Gives us a peek at the top four stacks. Let's start with Daniel Smilkovich, 16th in the GG Super Millions. This is his first ever Triton event. Has himself a whopping 164 bigs. Yeah, 164 picks is obviously a lot. Um, I was reviewing some of the hands as this tournament was going on when I wasn't in the booth, and Daniel Smerkovich played a big pot against Jason Kuhn, I recall, where it was one of those small river bets. Jason Kuhn going for a value raise with a top pair and then a rejam all in uh, with trip fives, and Jason Kuhn, hero, called it off with queen no kicker, and you know, a lot of me lot mind games going on between these players. Vaulted him to the top, and he's been very impressive throughout this series. Of course, getting a, a cash in the GG Super Millions, I think he's going to be able to push his way to the top. Even more impressive, of course, as we look back at our last festival, was that coin rivet title won by Sam Grafton, who currently finds himself in second. Yet to pick up a cash, though, so far here in Vietnam, and not for lack of effort. Then we have Punat Pansri, a member of the Thai delegation, skipping down to fourth. He is our defending main event champion from Cyprus. But I want to take a beat on Brian Kim, another one of these guys that's come out here for the first time. Love his affect at the table. Just one of those steely guys. I know he's not the only one in the field, but sometimes we might expect first-timer, got to get the lay of the land a little bit, be a bit discombobulated. But this is a dude... When he throws his swim trunks on and dives into this pool, he's looking for the deep end. And by deep, I mean deep stack. Yeah, Brian Kim has been very impressive. One of my favorite players on uh, newcomers to come to Triton. You can tell with the plays he's been making, he's very comfortable. Um, he's not worried about playing big pots. He's had a lot of history with these players, probably from the online streets and cash games. I know he's primarily a cash game player. i am just been very impressive, right? Multiple deep runs, um, two final tables already. It's yeah. no surprise that he's at the top right now. It's been a heck of a festival for him. This is his, oh, let's see, eighth event that he has played, so certainly didn't come all the way down to Vietnam just to sit in his hotel room. Third in the 15K, 8 max. Fourth in the 30K. Didn't cash for a little stretch there, and then now here he is targeting an addition to that 271000 in career Triton earn that he has. Just about a minute before we're going to send you over to the feature table. And since we're talking about it, let's get a glimpse at that feature table. Looking at the Triton Poker Plus app, we find the likes of Cale Burns, Pedro Silva, Fedor Holst, David Peters, Elton Singh, Seth Davies, Seth Gottlieb, and Christopher Frank. And as you get a look at those stacks and those seating arrangements, Randy, things to maybe keep an eye on. Well, I do notice some 250K stacks. Those look like the stacks of players who just bought in last minute to kind of get this record-breaking field. Right now, there's no huge big stack here. Fedor Holtz and Burns is in good contention, but right now it's going to be about playing for as many chips as you can. Worthy of note, by the way, Fedor Holtz, David Peters, and Cale Burns, no caches thus far here in Vietnam. Of course, Pablo Silva, I said Pedro earlier, and Christopher Frank, both here at their first Triton stop. And Seth Davies, having a good series thus far. Third in chips here. 
made three final tables, but three blanks since then. Registration officially closed, 135 entries, as we mentioned, as we will get things underway with the blinds at five and 10,000 and a 10K ante. 25K in orbit, the cost of poker, and Fedor Holes will welcome two black nines. Going to work. Excited to see Elton out there, by the way. Just the kind of guy that never really lets poker get to him. He's just always having a blast. So many memorable video clips throughout the course of his Triton career. Not just in the tournaments, but in the cash game streets as well. And here is the Brazilian, Silva. Did cash 18th in the 25K GG Super Millions and 25th yeah. in the 20K Mystery Bounty. I was I was predicting 1 and 130. Yeah, close. A bunch of people must have jumped in there too, huh? Yeah, Ace 10-5 board here as think, Silva has yeah. outflopped holes Paul after defending his big. Checks with the flow of play. Yeah. So, yeah. Not the ideal Ooh. flop for two nines. He is under the gun. There's never been a bigger 100K than 135, 131. I mean, at least now with Triton, I don't know. I'm not sure about otherwise. I think there was like Rosmadov, Rondorf or something. Fedor feels that like, I guess he can represent his ace Rondor. pretty well from early position. It's hard, to get, it's hard to get a lot of 5 BB, 3 bet. It's pretty impressive. Pablo Silva, King 10, middle pair. Enough of a hand to call. Deuce on the turn, as the pot stands at 85k. Pablo checks once more. It's top prize, did they post that yet? Yeah, not a great spot for Fedor, having bet the flop and got called. Maybe he's going to pop Here's control and hope is. to get the showdown. Back away. So top if he line. fires away, Dakla? he's uh, no top prize. Trying to represent a strong range from under the gun. Yeah, okay. going to be turning nines into a bluff if he reaches oh, yeah. for chips exactly. at this stage, but does check back and is unimproved on the river. Let's see whether or not Silva decides to do his own bidding. It's pretty hard to get value from worse of King 10 here. Depends on how often he thinks Fedor would bet an ace on the turn. If he thinks Fedor would check back some aces on turn, then betting doesn't have as much value. So he will check it down and scoop this little 85k pot. <coughs> nice pick up there to start things off for Silva. Brazil, one of those countries where poker has definitely taken root and continues to proliferate. Yeah, I'm always pretty impressed with the Brazilian players, especially in these high rollers. They seem to have a bit of a style of their own where they're just relentless and aggressive and finding lines that most others wouldn't. We're missing a few of the Brazilians thus far here in Vietnam, by the way, the likes of Felipe Ramos. Yeah. Also the likes of Yuri Zivilevsky. I think Bruno Volkman, also from Brazil, that yeah. came, showed up to previous stops. Little am I, is it Carnival? I'm not sure. You know, they got their priorities straight. They're like poker. No, no, no. It's time to party. But uh, is a bit curious. Also, of course, the Dutch delegation. It was a bit curious to see many of them not in attendance. We were able to solve the riddle of why that was associated with some tax implications playing outside of the Netherlands. I feel like they've got some FOMO to people who didn't show up. Like, oh my gosh, record-breaking field in the main event. Unexpected. Well, that's <laughs> good marketing for sure. Here we have Seth Davies, the opener with King Jack. Still the best hand on the ace-nine deuce board. Familiar development to the last pot. Yeah, let's see how Seth Davies wants to act on here. The big blind just going to defend so wide, and if you see 10-7 offsuit, almost certainly he's going to be check-folding this flop at a high frequency. Uh, 13K follow-through. Gets it done as 
the players are getting their feet wet here and looking at that screen on either side of Seth Davies you have a couple of action guys in gunslingers Elton Sang and Seth Gottlieb could see some really big pots brew when they get their hands on the right sort of kit do anything this morning Randy Interesting. Did you get out Did to the beach, the pool? No. No activities? I I did do a little bit of weights, some workout. I was thinking it's just so mentally draining to be in the booth with you. wanted to be mentally fit, you know? You know, it's crazy. I must have just missed you because I was in there all morning. I did it last night for like 30 minutes before I went to bed, yeah. Oh, wait. In the gym or in your room? No, in the gym. Okay, I'm just making sure. I don't know. Maybe you're like lifting furniture. I was not, of course, in the gym this morning. As Kale Burns tries Queen 7 suited on for size. David Peters has him dominated. Are you saying for the short deck? Mm -hmm. And the weight lifted a bit off of this Queen 7, which was in a rough way pre as... An ace high two spade flop is very much his and not Peter's. Yeah, ace high flop seem to be the thing right now. Yeah, last three hands. Pretty nice place. Yeah. 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 Once again, a seabed and fold. Good weather. Yeah. What, you're based in Vegas? Mm -hmm. All straightforward. I had breakfast with Henry. Are we going to get a battle of the cess? I hope so. This morning. <laughs> nice. And okay. We don't get to have really more to the story. Yeah. Yeah. Very often. Yeah. Well, Seth on Seth Prime. A truly Guinness world record effort in terms of <laughs> calories thrown down in one meal by Kilbane. I know he's on this like 4,000 calories. I thought I was actually rare, rare having treat. breakfast with Michael <laughs> Phelps. If you ever get to the breakfast buffet late, by the way, everyone and you find that there is no more bacon 20. or sausage left on the buffet line, you can credit Captain Kilbane with that. Really carnivorous affair. Shocking, actually. I thought I was at one of those eating competitions, but without a timer. There was no speed. There was just continuous ingestion. Kind of a Patrick Antonius like situation. <laughs> As we see Gottlieb with Queen 10. Picking up Elton Sang. These are the kind of hands that get fun. Queen 9 8. Elton second pair. Seth Gottlieb top pair. And just trying to scan the room and get a sense of. I was, I was hoping what we owe the He's celebration. been giving free rolls to the dealers occasionally for like large amounts of money if they pick these exact hole cards. She just picked the exact hole cards. The, did it hit? The yeah. 25k? No way. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Kale Burns saying that the Jason Kuhn like hole card free roll huh? that he's like been giving all festival <laughs> to the dealers, guess my exact two hole cards and make 25k, has just been hit. <laughs> no way. Listen, <laughs> they're not hooting and hollering <laughs> like that three hands into day one because <laughs> someone got showered. Like, that's just not the reaction. Double or nothing, Jason. <laughs> Double or nothing. She wins out the next stop, too. It's pretty insane, she guessed it. Back here, we find a yeah, four liner on is the board. Got late barreling again. Do we know what whole cards the dealer guessed? Don't. Perhaps producer James can Jack, though. Jack head over good. and shed some light. Good. It is, of course, if we can interrupt that Very good. lovely espresso that he's That's currently crazy. swirling with a sugar stick. Just on your what own time, the, producer James. What did she call? What, was, what did she call? Nine five plus, man. Bam. Wow. No need. Wow. Stand down, producer James. <laughs> Nine five of clubs. That's the hand Elton just had. Elton just had nine five of clubs. Um, 
I think he just folded it out and turned and showed the whole table, actually, but I'm not sure what happened. He's yeah. like, he sort of has to, right? I'm not sure. It, it shouldn't have. Or he just tells her. I would mean, assume you would just put it to the side, like, keep it to the side or something. Yeah, it's like, I wonder what he's got, guys. It's kind of obvious. It's like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Raise 20,000. Fold. 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 That's sick. So is it safe to say the dealer has cast just the vent? <laughs> <laughs> we just burst the money bubble here in the main way earlier than we thought we were going to, courtesy of the 9-5 of clubs as we find Gottlieb going back to work with Ace Deuce suited David Peters flatting the king queen. Back over to Davies. It's funny because... When I heard about that free roll, I had an exchange with Henry just kind of inquiring about Pretty what your net worth needs to be to give 25K free rolls out. And then we both agreed that it's far beyond what we would be comfortable giving 25K free rolls out. But nevertheless, I was like, let's gamble. Mm -hmm. Glad we didn't because it hit. Speaking of hitting... Davies, the defender out of the big, has hit middle pair here to leap in front of the competition. Yeah, not a good board for the pre-flop raiser, especially from under the gun. On to David Peters. Two overs, vector club, going for a check. Drop a king. Oh, yeah, that binks Peters squarely. As he makes top pair, hops into the lead. Let's see if Seth Gottlieb wants to stab this king. Yeah, you know, he's <laughs> the one that's going to represent the A's king, king, queens, right? In early position. David here, king, queen. A lot of times you'll just call here in position, control the pot, as well as let Seth maybe multi-barrel his way with no equity. One forty-five k in the middle, and we drop an eight. Clubs got there, straights got there. Boards game dicey. Let's see. Gottlieb's done with it. Didn't take long to get our answer. Well, David Peters is mainly only afraid of ace-king. I think he would expect two pair plus to bet the river. Queen of clubs is a little bit helpful in the sense that you're blocking some flushes in case you were worried about that. Mainly got away how often your opponent has ace king, how often they have got like king jack, king ten that can pay off. He Pete's mulling all of that over. Yeah, he's breaking down the combinations, and there seems to be more combos of worse kings than better kings. Just got the check in there. Hmm. Nothing wrong with cautious play. <laughs> Fedor's smirk always makes me think he knows something we don't know. Looks like he didn't value bet that one, David. Okay, noted. Dude, he's just side-eyeing him right now, like taking notes. Sometimes it's the hands you're not involved in where you can gather a lot of information. Right about that. And look, I'm not going to make any assumptions about whether or not Thank you. we've maybe taken a little Febreze to the track jacket at this point or not. But I do believe that since purchasing that track jacket, that eight of clubs saved me from Christopher Frank bullet. hasn't <laughs> taken it off. <laughs> it's comfy. Committed to the Teddy KGB look. 
I want to see him splash the chips in. It'd be great if he had bought like eight of them, and every day we just saw him wearing a new one. We just didn't realize it. Hmm. Yeah, Burns. I got like Jack eight suited. There's another King Queen services this time in Davies hands. A small. Yeah, Davies is up against an early position raise. Let's see if he comes in with three bet or a call. Well, pretty good options for a thirty five big blind stack. Will call, and that's going to let Gottlieb into this pot. Ace five off suit. Three ways. 70 out there. Ace nine deuce. Seen this board before. Yeah, it seems to be the fourth time we've seen this ace XX. Yeah. This is the Kalahari of textures. Dry. Burnsy, asking a little question. Call. Gets an answer quickly from Gottlieb. <coughs> Maybe some alarm bells with a snap call from Seth. <laughs> Time tells live? They're real, but you know, Seth easily be consistent with playing fast in general. Jack on the turn now hits Kale for second pair. Yeah, good good card for him in the sense that if he was up against 9x, now he's pulled ahead. Maybe taking a free one is going to be the way to go. He agrees as the Queen of Clubs now rolls off. Not great board development for Ace-5. Ace Ace good. As <clears throat> snap check back from Burns. Be a welcome sight, I suppose, for Seth. Yeah, you know, you never like to see those running Broadway cards come out. Of course, it's also nice to check some aces on the river. Improves your checking range on the river where people just think you got mid-pair and might barrel you off, so yeah, I think it's good balance. Well, this morning, Randy, at long last, especially given the incredible value, I wandered over to the spa in our hotel Took a peek at the menu and just inquired because I'd heard rumors that you can, when the spa is closed, still have a massage therapist come up and set up a table, give you a massage in the room. It's like, okay, a little premium, no problem. But how do you make it happen when the spa is already closed? Well, <coughs> swapped WhatsApps with uh, the spa owner, Victoria, and... If you need her contact information, Randy, I'll be happy to share it with you. She said that she can make arrangements. 90 minutes, 85 bucks. Okay. That's Come a good on, price. Man. That's a great price. Uh, Bottom pair for Christopher Frank. Facing the 10K barrel. That king for bet is <laughs> gunslinging. <laughs> Bottom end of the gutter, which comes on in on the river, but of course, there is a better straight available to 10x. Okay. Seth took his shot. Seems done with it. Yeah, with the bottom end of the straight, too. Probably throw some chips out there. You're going to expect the better straight to bet the river. I think Chris Frank will try to go for value, but he won't be able to get paid off by King 4. And should be over shortly. Oh. 
You change that place? Yeah, brain's good. Now, Randy, you might be thinking to yourself that that story that I told you earlier lacked some of my trademark hijinks, mm -hmm. envelope pushing yeah. subject matter. But I, was wondering I feel compelled to advise you that, that kind of during my discussions, <laughs> that makes more sense. if I'm reading the situation correctly, <coughs> oh. it did seem that there were some things oh. that might not have been on the menu, <laughs> but <laughs> were, were also available. Now, I, of course, Randy, as you know, have no interest in such things, but thought it was notable. Good for everyone to know. <laughs> Good for everyone to know. Nice to know. <laughs> King eight suited for David Peters. Elton saying now with Ooh. Black <laughs> Kings flatting. A little naughtiness. Christopher Frank with the sixes being allowed in here. Let's see how he wants to play two sixes. Going to take a flop here. Or attempt to at least. Four-way affair incoming. Yeah, Unless Kale no wants to like, get reckless. Yeah, yeah thanks. Cool. Oh. I don't think Elton really was hoping for a four-way affair when he flatted here, but he's got one, and he is still in the lead on a flop that Christopher Frank... Rates to remain interested in, of course, David Peters as well, given he has a king high heart draw. Yeah, if there was a four way flop for two kings, this is one of them. Feels pretty good. David Peters, pre flop razor, king high flush draw. Gonna opt for a bet. You know, he's got backup with the. Flush draw. The king is usually good, not in this case. Let's see how Elton plays this one. Is he going to come in for a raise or just call? You know, with a couple of guys out there behind him, board texture obviously isn't too scary. I mean, obviously the heart combos. Not sure how much 5x he thinks is in the mix. But putting the raise in here strikes me as nice in terms of Informing you. Yeah, noteworthy that the two six is straight into the muck after seeing the raise on the flop. And David Peters is wondering what kind of hands Elton Sang would raise this flop with. 5x would have a lot of incentive to just slow play as there's we're still two players to act. Make a call here and see what develops. I think Elton, you know, he was looking to get it in if he could on the flop against a weaker pocket pair. Board now double pairs. Yeah. Yeah. Elton not going to mind that card. Yeah, a very inter interesting spot here is he needs to protect against a flush draw. He can still get value from pocket pairs worse than two kings. I don't think Elton's worried. He's not going to expect a deuce to be opening and bet calling the flop from undergun plus two. Good awareness. Now for David Peters, king eight of hearts. You know, he still beats some flush draws out there. King high might be good on occasion. Say he's up against queen jack, jack ten of hearts, eight and a heart. Well, not eight, sorry. Since he's holding... The Eight of Hearts. Could it's Peters a, it, ever credibly rep one of those suited wheel combos? You mean like a ace, ace five? five, ace deuce? He could, but the thing is, if he had those hands, he wouldn't be check raising the turn all of a sudden with the full house on board, right? Well, here he is, flat calling. So maybe on the river, where the ace is actually not what Elton wants to see. And 
the wheels are spinning for David Peters right now. He might be like, can I maybe credibly lead here? Or do I think King High has enough showdown value against other flush draws? The thing is, if they both have flush draws, they're going to chop the pot. They play the board. Oh, he's, he's looking down at his chips. There's only 137k behind for Elton Tseng. So he's going to check. Can Elton find a bet here of two kings? That would be really hard to do. He could easily be up against an ace, X of hearts. Stroking his chips, mulling it over. Ooh, time card coming in. This is thin. Peter's just playing the board. Yeah, so it won't be a great spot for David Peters to call, as he would only be winning half the pot if a bet comes in. Like, I mean, Elton really feels like he's got the best hand. He's targeting smaller pocket pairs specifically then with a bet here. Yes, queens, jacks, tens, nines, etc. One more time card coming in here. You know, weighing the, how often he's up against a better hand. How often will a worse hand call right now? He knows he's got the image of a gunslinger that could get called down. Wow. Value betting here with two kings is thin. Just a quick glimpse, by the way, at the chat where Doubt It had written, this would be elite as we awaited Elton Sang's action. Peters puts it into the muck. Kind of opens yourself up, though, to a really nasty spot if Peter's check raises. Yeah, I mean, I guess he would have 1.5 BBs behind. Who knows? But that was a, a thin play. It was fun to see. Well, if you want to make viewing specifically the experience of doing so as a audience member on the stream, a better one. Head over to PokerStake.com, where you can get a little taste, or a big one, whatever your heart desires, of the action. As you get a peek at some of the returns for a $100 investment. <laughs> King-10 suited. And raise open again. Pocket sixes for Frank, by the way. Looks like he's going to push all his chips in there, take a stance. He knows that oh. Seth is opening. Oh. Not good enough. 25 big jam. Seth saying not good enough. Show me the jack ten. No jack ten, Seth. Not from Christopher Frank, certainly. It's all right. I'll see. I'll see it in a little bit. Frank did finish 16th in the 30K 8 max for 71,800. Um. D. Peters, ace four clubs. Oh. Oh. 
is open. There's no black cat. No. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> get punched in the face of me <laughs> after. <laughs> what if DP's just like looked up at him and was like, what do you think? Do you not use the Triton Poker Plus app, Fedor? Three of clubs in the window was such a pretty card, but it was no other pretty ones behind it as Fedor flops top pair for the lead. Well, let's see how David Peters wants to proceed on the flop. That's a backdoor potential. His stack is dwindling a bit, so would really love to win this pot. 18K. Fedor now top pair, middle kicker. 15 big blinds remaining in David Peters' stack. We'll be playing out of position here. Check call from Fedor. Yes. Respecting that under the gun range. Yeah, standard so far. Queen over cards. Not good for Fedor Holtz's range. Check. Conversely, they are good for David Peters' range. Yeah, it's the type of card where you'd be pretty tempted to bet. Problem is, he bets and he's wrong. He would be sitting on sub 10 big blinds. David Peters is reaching for more chips from under the gun. 45K, Ali. He's got 106K behind. Well, I mean, these facts are not lost on Fedor Holes. Neither, of course, are the ones that support the idea that Peters is well capable of doing this without a hand that has 10-8 beat, but this is meaningful. It is meaningful. I think Fedor's hand is still quite strong. He's not going to be able to get away right now. River. Getting one more off, Randy, and bringing the pot to 181,000 as Peters hits a four. I think the four is irrelevant, despite improving his hand. If he was beat on... For someone to check call twice, it's unlikely... The four would have done anything for David Peters, right? They would usually have 7x, 10x, queen x. Is David Peters going to continue to sell this story or just wave the white flag and hold on to 10.5 big blinds? Oh, taking a little check. Going to give up. Yeah, this has not been a good run at the feature table thus far here for David Peters as he is still searching for his first cash here in Vietnam. Marathon, not a sprint here in this three-day 100K main event, two full days of play. The idea, by the way, is to get down to the final table tonight, Randy, but as we know, situation always fluid. Luca Vivaldi, our tournament director, and his team always receptive toward what the players deem best. So if for some reason, at the conclusion of the number of levels they anticipated playing here this evening, we still have yet to set the final table. I'm sure they'll evaluate, make any adjustments as necessary. Burns, red queens, upstairs, and ace four. Didn't work out so well last time. We'll see how Peters feels about it in the big against the late position open. See if he thinks he's got fold equity. He thinks he does. Snap call. He beat him to the pot. Mm. 
course, not what you want to see when you're jamming with Ace-4. As Burns holds the lion's share of the equity and David Peters' fate here in the main event in his hands. To the flop we go. This time, no ace. Two clubs, two kings, and a nine. Peters hunting an ace for the time being. Not there on the turn, and his main event is hanging in the balance. An ace needed to continue, and a seven of spades. Spells the end of the road for Peters. And that's so good for David Peters. I mean, like a class act, knows how to play well. We know he'll be back. You know, it's funny. We talk about those big dry spells that Seth Davies and Nick Petrangelo went through. Petrangelo broke his seal here in Vietnam, picking up his first cash. But as I look at Peters' track record, Randy, something stands out. Point. Fourth straight festival without it's a cash, mine, dating back mine. to Montenegro uh, in 2019, London it. after it, <laughs> yeah. and then North Cyprus oh, late last time. year. <laughs> Sometimes the run bad can kind of be a self-fulfilling prophecy, a little bit of a kind of a snowball effect, if you will, as you just start to visualize and just imagine like, oh, well, yeah, of course, of course I'm going to run bad. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get plenty, lucky. Of we course, are, I'm not going to be able to spin it up. It. I got 30 big blinds. You got yeah, I got Peters, blinds. I would imagine, like the rest of his <laughs> peers, way to go. <laughs> staves those sorts of thoughts off with plenty of sort of mindset. 20, <laughs> you know, I'm not too worried about David Peters and of course, he's going to be playing all the different live poker tours around the world, and sometimes it's just not your day. Seems it's been that way from for a bit, but he'll be back. Well, he does have 5.1 million plus in career Triton earnings, so obviously he's cobbled together yeah. enough. One would imagine to to fade some real run bad. As we resume at the feature, Seth Davies. Up front, the king eight suited. Gottlieb a flat. Fedor pipping Seth. Gottlieb, that is. Flats in turn. Elton's got king six. A little bit of a tank right now. Not sure which play he's got in mind. Oh. Hmm. The weakest one. Well, his king six was not in a good way. As three players will take the flop. Queen six tray monotone. Gottlieb the only diamond draw. What's that? Oh. Pretty tough spot for Seth Davies to continuation bet. Just no connection at all. Two checks. Does Fader want to pounce on some weakness? Doesn't have much of a hand to bet on this flop. Feels like that those sorts of realities sometimes do lend to us taking one little stab because it's so easy. Well, there we go. To kind of take a shot and then our hand has so much clarity in terms of not being the one. Well, the hand's not over yet. Seth now reaching for raising chips. Fold. Tell you what, we called it. Just ten of diamonds. Can't you so dominate it? Gottlieb was gonna be the guy to give us the excitement here at this feature. You shove that hand, you're getting it through. You're getting it through if you shove that. Maybe I had something good. Well, what if I had that? ace king of spades? Okay, 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 fair enough. Yep. I didn't have ace king. <laughs> <laughs> I had the king of spades, though. Quick peek at the chip counts there. 
Tail Burns at the top. Fourth through seventh, separated by just seven bigs right now. And even the shortest stack of Pablo Silva, 26 bigs, plenty off of which to operate. As we slowly start to build momentum here on day two. Yeah, don't forget that uh, registration is closed now. Players are <laughs> going to try their best to not risk their tournament life unnecessarily. As opposed to when registration is open and they just savagely gamble. I mean, some people have savagely That's gambled, true. I'll tell you that. That's true. I heard a rumor that KCG was in for five bullets. Yeah, what's that? At least four, I know. Just... No luck, really. Gambled a bit, but also got really cooler in spots, set over set. Just one of those days. But don't feel too bad for him. He did have a final table prior to this event. A little fun one here. Monotone. Two players of a diamond. Seth Davies is the one that's going to take a stab. have the better flush draw. It's always scary playing against Elton because you're like, oh, this looks like a standard check fold, but then he's always got something you know, turning in his head where it's like, hmm, how can I win this pot? Oh, he's out. Even Elton knows when the prospects are grim. Jack Deuce not the one. Quick peek at the Triton Poker Plus app for KCG, by the way. Very Super tight. Random. Very tight. Six bullets. No rebuy, so. Mm -hmm. no yeah, rebuy. six bolts is pretty brutal. Play tight. I just right. I mean, he is a man who. Not quite three. Is willing. He's three used point. to these big swings. Yeah, close though. The sixth one lasted three. the longest. <laughs> By the way, you definitely want to mill day for one of the sets. Some value. I hope it's me. <laughs> I hope it's. I hope it's me and not you. <laughs> Fair one enough. of the bullets lasted. You got four enough hands. money, man. Uh, let me, let me have one, some. Six oh, yeah. hands. <clears throat> That's annoying when that happens. Maybe I'm wrong though. I don't, I don't, am I reading this right? Hang on. All right. One, let, me, let me let me take a look here two, at the Trident Poker Plus app. Three. Ali. No, no it's, four. it's four. Okay. Jeez. It's four. There was just some hands missing. I type player. I play tight too. I mean, six sounded excessive. Six sounded expensive. For that matter, believe. four sounds expensive. <laughs> Peter knows. <laughs> You're a changed man, right? Yep. Yep. With the Don't. occasional fallback. Uh, yeah. I don't want to embarrass myself on stream. I got to wait till I get off, and then I'll, then I'll punt with six three Rush offsuit. Mm. I bet mine was better. Yeah, I had the jack. No you shame in embarrassing cool. yourself on stream. I, I do it daily. I, hmm? I made a good fault then. Yeah, I must have had you pretty dominated. Pretty dominated. Of course, I sort of aspire. Yeah. Oh. The card was a jack. Towards <laughs> embarrassing myself on the daily, oh. Randy. These yeah. guys, not so much. Not a successful day unless you've done it multiple times. <laughs> okay. Ooh, words to live by, Randy. When I think of most consistent Triton players, Seth Davies and like Chidwick comes to mind all the time for me. They just seem to always be deep in tournaments. Well, not always, okay, as we not know. But once he frequency. broke the seal, Davy seems to have yes. figured out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting from that day he got his first cash in onwards. That first cash came in Madrid, where he had a third, a seventh, and a fifth. Here he is with King Nine. What is this body language from Christopher Frank? Just head on the table. <laughs> He's got second pair. Gottlieb 
as the King High nut flush draw. Well, Seth is the pre-flop raiser. Does he want to represent 20. that A6? Do you think so? Gonna get action from Seth Gottlieb. Seth's been aggressive. And he is reaching for aggressive chips. Once again, check raising. A draw. You got what you want. I'll show it. I got the, the best hand to fold. Ooh. Oh. Oh. You know, I just feel like yeah, that move. Good fold today. I would have flopped the flush draw too. <laughs> was so <laughs> popular once upon a time. The, the check raise the draw on the flop out of position, you know. Tight, tight out. He's bringing it back. Right yeah. out. Tight but is right. I feel like these days uh, you don't got see it as much. Like three times already. Not to make generalizations, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it was off. really popular once upon a time. You're 100% right, Ali. All right. yeah. All and if it's not yeah, popular anymore, chances are the solvers don't like it. <laughs> Pretty much. Does Seth strike you as a guy who's using solvers regularly? No. Classic it's style. Strong. Bully his way to the top. Seth is a wild animal in his natural environment. Not domesticated by the solvers. Uncaged. Cash game legend. A couple of red hooks for Fedor, who goes to work. Kale Burns from Australia, 8-6 offsuit. Not shy of playing pots. Let's see if he wants to come along here. Is against Undergun plus one. Yep. No surprise for me. Heads up to the Jack 6-7 board where Kale has bottom pair and some coordination up against top set. Yeah, some trouble for Kale. Bottom pair inside, well, backdoor straight draws. We know he's definitely going to want to continue in some manner. Fedor just smashes it. Holding two jacks, blocking top pair. We may see him size down. Hoping to get some calls from some hands, some floats. Fourteen K ahead added to the equation. Fedor looks over at his opponent as he does so often. Really intense surveys whenever holes his heads up. Yeah, pretty much a blank card. Fedor looking for value. Oh, thanks. I'm good, though. I mean, like, once I, once again, yeah. I, you know, he's holding top set, so it's hard for him to be up against Jack X. More likely he's up against some 7X, 6X, maybe with a straight draw. Let's see how he wants to size. We are playing 60 big blinds from here on out. So maybe he does want to size up to try to build the pot. So let's see. 48. 48. Just above half the pot. Yeah. Is that going to be discounted enough to keep this 8-6 interested? Well, the 8 is not the ideal card for Kale Burns because he'd want to pick off like 8-9 type hands, which would be a straight draw. You might think that he could be best. Apparently. Yeah, drawing dead. He does. Those chips won't be coming home. Interesting card, actually, for Kale, because he might think that Fedor should be slowing down on this king a lot. We know Fedor is going to come in with a bet. Fedor might try to use this king as a card that is perceived to be a card you want to barrel on and, and size up a bit. We know he knows that Kale was willing to make some big hero calls, given his style and history. 
Look how deep they are, too, in terms of SPR here on the river. Could Fedor come with something that's going to look really polar? I think it's very reasonable. A lot to... It's really hard for Kale to, to have King yeah. X, so... When, and for poker, I am, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, just... Yeah, I'm curious to see what size he comes in with. I'll get one in a little. I'm trying to hold out as long as I can. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get pretty cracked out if I have Do you think that Fedor can easily have King X himself yeah, that's awesome. in the form yeah, of yeah. King X of it's Hearts? So strong. <laughs> so strong, yeah. yeah. Big chips but coming in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything here is great. The food, the drinks, yeah. everything. It's a little hard for me to find. 128 into 179. Oh, yeah. No. Sorry, I can count. Yeah. So, Kale here, his like hand looks the, pretty weak. The the soup, yeah, the chicken but he might butter. think that Fedor should be slowing down with a Jack X on this river card. Yeah, yeah. Can you try the, uh, the Korean barbecue? Gonna use a uh, time yeah. card here. Who's strong? Very good. Like I mentioned earlier, the eight of spades is six not good already? if you're trying to pick yeah, off eight good. nine. Definitely go there before yeah, you leave. I'll give it a try for tonight. <clears throat> he just, he must be feeling that Fedor sh shouldn't be betting the king too often. And the fact that he's betting it is making it seem like it's a bluff to him. Well, we'll lay it down. Yeah, Nicely done. Kind of a grudging muck there by Kale, but one that preserves... At least 120k of his stack. Maybe just keeping an eye on the ace X's unimproved that he thinks could have turned into three barrels. Ace four, ace fives that picked up a gutter yeah. on the turn, maybe, and kept on barreling. It never feels good to be laying down a pair as Six well, no? someone who's got some sticky history to him. Do we get a blind raise up? Um, Didn't Brian Kim straddle? I couldn't even believe that that was allowed. Henry was in here. And Did he really? Said yeah. No, he straddled. I didn't know you were allowed to do that in a tournament. You did not straddle, Ali. I'm telling you, it said straddle. Okay, then There's it was just a graphical graphic error. You right. can't straddle in a tournament. I'm just saying. You maybe can you gamble can. in a tournament. That's allowed. Ah, uh, maybe he straddled. No. <laughs> maybe blind raised. Blind raised. Gamble. King Chris Queen. Frank. For Elton, yeah, talk to me. These uh, Solver beloved suited wheel cards on the button. And they like to play them very aggressively. Ace blocker. Lots of equity. Yeah. If you're a young guy and you got this hand with 20 blinds, it's pretty much mandatory all in of oh. ace five suited, ace four suited. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Like you're not allowed to play for folding this hand. Ooh, did that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Elton does not want to lay it down. He's wants to teach Chris Frank a lesson, doesn't he? But will do it. Discipline. Yeah. Just too much of his chips on request there with King High. Though, you know, Elton's the kind of guy that look at you and just be like, all right. Let's go, kiddo. The most legendary move. I, I don't know that anyone's going to be able to top Eight? it in terms of yeah. <laughs> savage <laughs> must be sure. gamble <laughs> decisions would be that of Leon Sukranik against Santosh Suvarna in the Coin Ribbit Invitational. I don't think guys like me and you can pull off shirts like that. No. Yeah. And high. You can. <laughs> Called it off. I don't, I don't know about looked that. Looked at Santosh and said, let's gamble. I don't know about that. <laughs> Showered them, too. Santosh had queens, I think. Was they Some play like a full, whole full day. <laughs> it was just, it's Campbell, last for, hand of the day. For them. Uh, Santosh had ace-queen. Yes. 
No one's ever going to. Queen again? He had Ace oh, Queen no, against he had two okay. suited, but no one's ever going to top Leon Super Nick's mm -hmm. gamble in this game. Just willing to punish people. Love to see the pain. Oh, yeah, Tony him, G likes to see KGB the pain, but on. even he is not as well as a uniform. There's <laughs> <I can't laughs> yeah, like four or five people wearing him today. Thank you. Looks like feature table is finally yeah. looked out it looks super comfortable. Yeah. into Red the field and realized that it is not just Chris Frank the, some other paid a visit to the gift like shop the and scooped up the, like they got the red the tracksuit. By our count, there's five stuff. players in the field rocking it right now, and there's only... 65 really left. Yeah, they, they really got <coughs> You think those like really the last handball. longer? Yeah. <laughs> those with the red tracksuit? I'm going to have to pick up something. You, do we get to win another tracksuit? Red one? Yeah, go get, go get, right, get, get that black jumpsuit. Yeah, I think I what did you just ask? <clears throat> I'm saying, is there a last longer amongst them? Do you think they, they get a prize? No, I know what a last longer is, Randy, but... No, I think they ran out of clothes. They didn't realize how long they were going to be here. They underpacked, and then they went down to the gift shop, and they were like, what do you have left? Oh. Red trucks. Ship it. Meanwhile, no shipping, but a little handling as Elton followed through with the king-queen and is rewarded with the king, but it is a king of clubs, and Fedor who check called now, has himself the nut flush draws. This one gets interesting with 138 in the middle. Yeah, yeah, very interesting here with the backdoor flush draw. Most likely we're going to see Elton come in with a bet, Fedor, knowing that the king of clubs is not really the ideal card to put aggressive action 80? on, despite improving his hand. 80k going in the middle, let's see. King X should improve the undergun. Opener, C bet range. If Fedor was to hold the king, it would be in the form of King X of Hearts. Elton, 317k back. And Fedor makes the call. Leaving Elton with just north of one SPR on the river, which is a five of clubs. Fedor. Rivers the nuts. Backdoor runner runner. And checks it. This is extremely bad for Elton because we know Elton goes for very thin value bets, right? Two kings on a ace ace on a five five two deuce deuce ace board. I can't really see him not value betting this king queen, knowing his image. Can he find a way to get away from this? It's going to be really, really hard for him not to bet. Time card going in. It's kind of weird because it might be the the sort of barrel that he just can't find a hand he thinks that Fedor would call. And if, of course, if that's how we feel on the river, then why are we putting the chips out there? Yeah, Him laugh. holding the King of Hearts yeah, then is an important card because that means that Fedor cannot have King X of Hearts. So the chances of Fedor having a king <coughs> decrease dramatically. 155k, Randy. This is roughly half of Elton's stack. We know the rest will be asked for momentarily. Yeah, so let's see. For Fedor... I mean, we know he's jamming. Elton's going to be faced with a jam for the rest of his 162K. I'm just trying to think of hands he can beat. All in. Oh, man. man. This, is, this is tough. Mm. It's annoying, right? Always happens. You make... Ace four got there. True. Clubs got there. Yeah, does, that's a big part of the Fedor's check raise all in range, right? Ace four hearts, ace four clubs. These baby sets would have been heard from on the turn, I assume, on the two tone board. At a, at some frequency, some sets would continue to check. 
I'm not sure if the set would jam all in on the river when the clubs come in. It's definitely something that Elton's thinking about. That's one question you always want to ask is, do I ever beat value for my opponent? <coughs> I think the answer will be no. And like I mentioned earlier, the king of hearts is important as Fedor cannot have a king X of hearts. It would take some discipline to lay this one down. Look at the price he's being laid. Okay, I believe you. No idea. Nice. Great lay down there from Elton saying as he keeps his main event run alive. Saying, I believe you. Good time to be a believer. Yeah, it's a good lay down. Really, it's just so hard to find some bluffs there from Fedor Holtz. You think he's regretting betting the river, or he still feels like that was the right way to go about things, not being results-oriented? I think given the way he plays, he feels still pretty good about betting that river card, right? We know he likes to value bet thinly, willing to value bet two kings on 5-5, five, five, deuce, deuce, ace. Just with his general game plan, he knows he fires away quite a bit, so he needs to have some more thin value bets in there. Well, Elton now sits with just 14 bigs at the bottom of the leaderboard. As you look at the chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake, Fedor Holtz sitting at the top. Stephen Chidwick has joined the party, running in second behind him. Those counts brought to you by Poker Stake, the official staking partner of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Blinds going up. Six and 12,000. 12K any. Ace four clubs, early position. Awkward stack sizing. Gonna lay it down. Raise. And that allows Gottlieb to open with ace king. Mm -hmm. Back around to Chidwick. On the river. New yeah. arrival. Just got second place against Orpin. And that's 75k. Kind of unlucky to end up in second. Yeah, that was brutal, that two pair, two pair hand. Yeah. And then to finish it off, King Six versus King yeah. Six suited all in pre flop to lose. King Nine Five all hearts. Gutter for Chidwick, but no heart. Can't leave. Top pair follows through for 15k. It's been a great stop, by the way, for Chidwick, Randy. Not just that second place in the 75K, 8 max for 1.245, but two caches before it. 19th in the 50K, 10th in the 30K. Didn't cash the mystery bounty and cashed the 15K, 8 max in 22nd. 13.6 million. On his Triton resume, oh, he folds. Yeah, 18 caches and one title. You played it fine. Mm -hmm. You played it fine. And Chidwick, truly. Love my wife. <laughs> rates to be <laughs> in the conversation. Is she watching? She will eventually. She's probably sleeping. Or potentially right ending up at the top of she picked that the all time money list. Uh, no. I'm thinking Bonomo of and players Kenny who cashed the most in Triton series as you're going through his resume. I'm thinking Chidwick, I think he's like number two or number three, if you had to guess. I know Paul Paul is number one. Right? Bring Kenny a second, right? No, I mean number of caches. Oh, number, in, number of, of caches, caches. in sorry. a Triton <laughs> event. I'm thinking most likely it's going to be Chidwick 24. and Jason Kuhn comes to mind. And, of course, Paul Paul at the top. Think I'm right? Well, the effort and answer for you here as Fedor's Queen Jack dominates Davies Open. Fedor's been active lately. Paul Pua, 26 caches, one title, 15.2 million plus. 
Chedwick was in the 13 range. Button flat. Enticing, but 9-4 suited not as Elton gets out of the way. 78 K in the middle. Usually spin that up still. King 9-5 board. Davies fortunate to hit the side card and jump into the lead with a dominated jack. Fedor has the queen of diamonds working and a gutter. Yeah, Fedor with position two. We'll be looking to continue here. Lots of back doors working in his favor. Seth is going to pawn control and check the flop. Let's see if Fedor wants to come in with a bet or not. Ever so calculated player, Fedor. 16K, that is a very small bet. Hoping to define Seth Davies' range. Maybe put in another barrel on a turn. Lots of cards he could barrel on a diamond. An ace. Maybe he hits his hand, he can pot control more. Davies makes the call after taking the passive line post flop. And now both players pick up the gutter, but Fedor picks up the lead with a pair of queens. Yeah, Seth is going to likely continue his path of checking. Now Fedor here most likely had a lot of intention of multi-barreling turns of Queen Jack after seeing weakness on the king high board. Having hit his hand, might be trying to get the showdown for cheap. One ten out there. No, he's reaching for chips yeah. here. Okay, it's a smallish bet coming in, right? Thirty-eight thousand this time. He must feel that Seth Davies would bet King X or check raise the flop a decent amount. Doesn't think he's up against Ace Queen, especially holding Queen Jack. He blocked Ace Queen, which would be a better kicker. So it seems like he's trying to get value out of 10 9, 9 8, Jack 9. These types of hands that would check call to flop. Probably thinks that Jack 10 would see bet as well, so he's not too worried about that. Seth getting a good price on his hand. Knows that Fedor is capable of multiple barrels and makes the call. A lot in there. Another 76K to be exact as a very dry deuce of hearts comes off. Yeah, very high level poker from these two. Fedor Nine. gets two streets of value with mid pair, Jack Kicker. He's crushing it right now. Dialed in. What do you want? Just, uh, Not sure I've ever you... seen Fedor yeah. dialed out. Nice. One more blues. Um, and my lessons. I'm going to win this hand. You go. That way. Remember when everyone thought that poker got easier after he announced his retirement? <laughs> He's like, psych, I'm back. <laughs> I think in part, by the way, per my understanding, and I think this was through the grapevine during one of the interviews maybe that he conducted on one of the Triton stops. Not sure if it was this one or an earlier one that the decision to come out of retirement in part had something to do with the Triton experience okay. presenting an opportunity to appeal to some of his desires for balance. Obviously, the stakes are high enough, right? The competition is the type that he really yep. is looking for. But then also, everything's taken care of. Every eventuality, you're able to come out here and 
take a few events off if you want. Always in a lovely destination somewhere on the world, a nice resort. Yeah, really, uh, you know, every players are taken care of, man. Yeah, for sure they're taken care of. And, you know, now he doesn't have to go to every single stop out there. He can choose to play the ones with the, the highest buy-ins, minimize the time, and, you know, relax at home and as well as study. Hold you. I you think go. you're right. Power and positivity. The field's probably not too happy that he's out of retirement. Is it our fault? <laughs> like, we want you back, Fedor. Okay. Players, by the way, when committing to a certain number of buy-ins or a certain total buy-in amount, do have their rooms comped. That's correct. Obviously helping to keep the overhead low as a traveling professional player. Every little bit counts. Yeah, it's a good gesture. I don't think many places actually do that. Can't think of one. Yeah, because just like, well, I mean, if you're playing these binds, you clearly can afford it. But no, yeah. it's it's about giving the players anything that can make their experience better. Yeah, and it's listen, it's not as though these buy-ins don't come with entry fees, right? And it's not that those entry fees are lost on the players, but they feel like they are getting their money's worth when they come here. And obviously, Randy, you and I have had a front row seat to the experience. No shortage of conversations with them in between time in the booth and events. And it's uh, something that I've heard time and again players communicate. Team 4 suited. Kidwick got after Gottlieb's big yeah. and out flops him. Top pair. And not much of a hand for Seth Gottlieb. Let's see if Chidwick wants to bet King X here. This is would be the worst king he, he could show up in the cutoff. Expected to continuation bet his air. Might as well fire when you got it. One quick and done. Mm -hmm. Straightforward you stuff. Huh? No, I think you have it. You think you Maybe we should betting and folding to a show is fine. Empty our four oh one Ks. And do what with it? Cash in all of the chips we have at our local casino. Sell off our portfolios. See his cards anyway. Yep. <clears throat> and then yeah. gather an aggregate booth Please. bankroll <laughs> and nominate one of our triumvirate to play in the field. Now, we'll get a free hotel room. Randy, but I guess we'd have to ask for three beds, or we can do what I've done in the past. We see Gottlieb with a couple of kings here, three betting to 60k. Finish this story. I want to know. Three people, one room, two beds. You have shifts. <laughs> Someone's always playing. It works. So it doesn't. I had to sleep down in the pool area on one of those chairs, woke up looking like a tiger. That wasn't fun. This is a small three, bet from the small blind against the early position race, so Fedor is going to come along queen nine suited. You know what I just realized, Randy? Mm-hmm. We what? already get free hotel rooms. Yeah, I know. You just want to torture our bankrolls. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do after this series? We're just... Waiting at the next. We will have money. lived out a childhood dream, Randy, of playing on the Triton tour. We need to find a way to collect enough money. We can maybe make that coconut farm you were talking about, just to get Ooh. to the next stop. We'll get the license for Triton branded fresh young coconut. Meanwhile, Seth Godley, Trappy, top set, tried to get Fedor to bite. Now. Holtz picks up equity on the turn. It's hard to check twice with a trap. And he's done it, Seth. 
he's giving Fedor a wholesome rope here, and Fedor might be pretty darn tempted to bet this. Seen weakness twice. Probably thinks King X would bet by now. Let's see if Fedor can preserve some chips and find a check, but I would not fault him if he bets this Queen 9. Nice. Yeah. Really just unconvinced that Gottlieb is waving a white flag, perhaps. Now he hits a queen, though. Troublesome. Oh, my God. Gottlieb checking one more time. The super trap. The triple check. Top set. Is there value for queen nine? It's tough to say. Doesn't even bet beat a better queen. Clubs get there. Ace Jack is completed, and perhaps the latter of those two hand classes is the one well, that you keep an eye on. But yeah, a little sprinkle. I mean, Fifty into one forty-four. I don't blame him when he sees three checks to him. He definitely is expecting a hand better than this to have. Yeah. Note, by the way, that Gottlieb, not afraid of the backdoor clubs or the ace-jack stuff, has check-raised. Finally, patience rewarded. Yeah, he's been checking this flop and turn and River waiting to check-raise. He does not really care what runs out. For Fedor now, it's just about breaking down the hand, and for him it's confusing because he expects... Flush draws to bet the flop or turn. He expects some straight draws to bet the flop or turn. King X. He wouldn't expect a naked queen to check raise on the river, of course. They would be incentivized to just call. It's just a confusing hand for Fedor, and no surprise he's in the tank here. Do keep in mind he's seen Seth Gottlieb check raise and show flush draws on flops. Although different situation as this is a three bet pot really peculiar the way that Gottlieb approached this pot I, I mean you just don't expect to get three bet pre have a man check the flop and the turn and then that card rolls off and he's willing to check raise as opposed to lead with a hand maybe that has queen nine beat So Fedor is also asking the question, would Gottlieb check raise without a flush for value? Like if Gottlieb had like two pair, would he just still just call? Just giving the flush coming in. Looks like he really wants to call, but he's having trouble thinking of hands he beats. Well, listen, Gottlieb takes lines that definitely create some confusion. They're unorthodox, unexpected. Will they be paid off? That's what we're waiting to find out. Note, by the way, that a set of kings can get really put in the blender here if all of a sudden Fedor decides to be a hero. Yeah, that would be pretty insane for the rejam to come after multiple tanks. I don't think that's coming in. Especially with the body language Fedor has exhibited. Does Gottlieb's stack depth lend credibility it's supposed to but i don't know seth just strikes me as a guy who's willing to swing cool. away if he thinks it's right i had a great hand on the flop and still a good enough hand to raise you on the river <clears throat> seth shows the set of well. kings and uh I don't trying know to let you took him to the river, though. It worked. Yeah, kind of. Almost. Fader was yeah. altogether entertained by being yeah, shown that. Yeah. Change that, please. Well, the way that it's, Seth has played yeah, that hand has yielded him the most amount of chips. Yeah. Fair. He, he bet the flop. Fold. He bet the turn. Fold. Hard for you to have much, though. The end. Gutter. Nah, you're right. Yeah, you I guess it depends. Some. If all of a sudden he had some super cute sizing, maybe Fedor comes along. Didn't have yeah. something. The 
you had better. Might feel self-evident, but I really, really would prefer for Seth Gottlieb not to show those hands and at least be able to live in Fedor's head rent-free for an hour on delay. Yeah, that would be nice. Would you, though? I but, know. you know, maybe Seth I'm will not sure. We'll make that play as a bluff next time. Within this next hour, that would be pretty advanced. Elton, no. jam the ace four, sure. and you win is what you want to hear in that spot as he begins the right. rebuilding yeah. effort. Earlier question posed by you, Randy, was with respect to most caches ever. Yeah, have you Triton figured it out? Tour. We looked up Paul Poix, 26 caches. Jason Kuhn. 25 caches. 25. Wanna, let me verify the Paul stat, though. It's been a minute since I took a peek at it. Yeah, 26 and 25, respectively. What and about Makita? I feel like Makita's got a lot of caches. He's been playing ever since the beginning. Yeah, you okay. can hear him whenever he's around. Makita eliminated, by the way. Not in this one any longer. 14 caches. And he's Jason probably doing Kuhn. pretty decently. Way far ahead. Yeah. He was super short. Sounds happy. Davies way far ahead. Probably doubled, yeah. In the hijack with Ace King. Of the average holding. Yeah, his volume is very correlated to his chip stack. <laughs> he wears his heart on his sleeve. No customers. No customers, by the way, Randy, is really what I feel that the dessert offerings in the buffet here should be experiencing, given that my whole life, I guess, I had it all wrong. I thought desserts are supposed to be sweet. And yet every Fiddle. single dessert the buffet line includes this strange sour yogurt, which is deceptive. You grab a spoonful, down it goes, and then you realize it's not sugary at all. Well, I'm going to win. Then you quietly and politely find the nearest waste bin. Our brother. Look around, make sure no one's staring. Our brother's too. And then spit it out. Because, ew. Well, yeah, so you don't like any things. of the desserts here. You don't like any of the fruits here. No, the fruits are okay. You didn't like. You don't like dragon fruit. Dragon fruit's trash. Everyone knows it's just. You know what it's like. It's like a beautiful person with no personality. <laughs> really, the prettiest fruit you'll ever look at, but tasteless. Burns. Tasting Ace Queen from the button. <laughs> I bet it's the guy who's. I'm teasing. You guys are both. You guys are both crushers. <laughs> Seven four defense and turns into a gut shot for Fedor. So we're playing. Roughly 45 big blinds effective to start this hand. Kale burns. Ace, queen, two overs. Not really the ideal flop for him. Take one off. Reasonable card for Kale. Ace, queen, high looking a little bit better. Fedor now. How does he want to respond here? He sees the check back on the flop, which looks pretty weak. A lot of ace highs, king highs would be in that range. Let's see if he wants to rep yeah, he innate the jack. Nice straight draw. Got back up. Range advantage here? He's having a good Range build. advantage yeah. for sure. He's doing great, yeah. He's the type of board that hits the big blind a bit. But he's going to check. Not necessarily to give up. a little 
pause before Fedor checked. Less of a pause on Burns, who knuckles back the ace queen. Brick River. With two checks on the flop and turn from Kale, his hand really looks like ace high. I wonder if Fedor wants to try and attack that range, which is would be quite weak. Fedor probably expects a jack or eight to bet the turn. He would need to put in a, a little meaty bet, though. You don't want those crying calls from those ace high type hands, and chips are coming in, and meaty it is. Man, this is immediately made awkward. Overbet of 80k from Fedor. Didn't he like double up in the first hand of the tournament? Yeah. And then he's like ends up playing somehow still. As played, this really is just a guessing game for Kale as to whether or not Fedor ever had any of this. Just given the sizing. Kale knows that his hand looks like ace high, and he's wondering why Fedor is going for an overbet now. Why didn't Fedor bet with 8x on the turn? Why did he go for another trap? That's the question that's playing his head. I don't think he thinks Fedor is betting this way with a jack. Nine unique players. Well, I guess not necessarily. Yeah. Burns can make this call to be absolutely sick. Nice. Oh, the Aussie digs in against the German and he's queen. Picking up. What a read. What a navigation there. 226k pot. Listen, uh, Kale knows that Fedor just has value with decent frequency there. Once you check back a couple of times every now and again, you got to make sure you protect. Just get a peek now at... What the folks at Secret Lab have on offer. Game winning comfort for when the stakes are high. Type exclamation point giveaway in the chat to win a limited edition Triton Poker X Secret Lab chair. Randy and I park our bones in along with Henry Kilbane as we deliver what we hope you'll agree is the finest in streaming poker entertainment at the best of prices. Whether you're joining us on Twitch, the Triton Poker Plus app, yeah, or on YouTube. Glad to have you with us. Event 9, There's day 2, the 100K main from the Hoyana Resort and Golf here on the shores of Vietnam. Yeah, what if you end the first level with three bigs? Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Well, it only takes a second. Like, there's you always going to be much to us. But like if, yeah. you, if you have to go to sleep and then wake back yeah, up okay. to come just for three bigs. Yeah, yeah that's fair. But. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see the bigger prize pool, that's all. But 13.5 is pretty good. It's a nice, that's a record. Biggest prize pool ever. In yeah. Right in main event. G does it, they get a lot of free entries. They leave it out super low. They yeah. buy a short stick forever. Yeah. You like that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. Expensive to open. Yeah. I've 10 bulleted the. Even super millions before. This could get awkward. These two <laughs> like to stare down our opponents. And pull it. Yeah. They let you leave with like. Going to limp in and light the candle. So. Uh, it's not that hard. Yeah, you can just keep going over and Stevie over. Stevie checks back and we'll deliver the appetizer this course. Six bullets and 15 minutes. this dinner date. Trying. Yeah. Ten for Trey. Stevie. Top pair. Yeah, Theodore of Ace High two overs. Not looking to give up this flop. Looks like he's gonna come in with a bet. And these are chips obviously that could have been deployed pre flop. As a raise. But instead. Under repping, Fedor limped and now chooses to min bet. Well, Stevie's thinking about raising this one on the flop. Of course, call would be the more standard play. Let's see what he comes with. Call it is. I think I 
Let's bring out the entree. Yeah, 16. Yeah. Board pairing three of clubs. I got 12. Shane needs for the final table. I'll say that Theodore's bet on a flop doesn't necessarily define Stevie's range right now. It's still a bit of a guessing game for him. Still a lot of draws, some high card floats, pairs. Make those lines go. Stevie's pretty happy to see that check on the turn. Seems shady, but within the rules, I guess. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's just pure strategy. Yeah. That's, yeah, I don't, it's not, nothing shady with that at all. It feels dirty, though. Yeah, it feels, it feels dirty when it's happening yeah. to you and when you're doing it to <laughs> Both players check, and now yeah, dessert comes in the form of a deuce of hearts. I don't have any use for them otherwise, so I might have to try it if I get lucky and get to the final table. Worthy of note, <clears throat> Neither of these guys really cared for the entree, which was the three of clubs, as it went check, check. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I don't think either player would expect them to check through that on the turn. He's clean. Thinking about value betting, it seems. He knows he's up against a guy who could call with worse. And I think like value betting chips incoming. It's in the form of 18k. And you're convinced this is for value, this ace queen. Yes, I'm very convinced this is for value. He knows that Chidwick is good at hand reading. May even call him with a worse ace, king x sometimes. Pretty hard to expect Fedor to think that a better hand would ever fold for 18k on this board right now. Blind versus blind, wide ranges. Does invite Chidwick to consider raising here for value. Chidwick's just 70. trying to. What did he raise it? Wow, look at this. Like, raising with a nine kicker is. determination. Like, that's some conviction knowing that you got the best hand here because the nine kicker, by no means, a good kicker. But as played, uh. Chidwick just suspects that kickers are irrelevant. This 10. He deems to be the best hand. What's important is the river bet sizing that Fader opted to choose. I think if Fader had, say, a 10 himself with a better kicker, he probably would go for a larger sizing. It's probably what Stevie's thinking. He also thinks if he was up against a 3, he would go for a bigger bet. And Fader are using a time card here. He seems to be involved in all these pots lately. Things getting awkward at the end of the meal now. And Fedor is just going to leave as Chidwick is left to pay the tab. Mm -hmm. Moving me? On the move. Not sure they're going to have a second date, but given the, where they're at at the table. I'm surprised they, they didn't lock eyes choice. once, Ollie. They didn't? No, they, they kept on well, taking yeah, turns. Yeah. They somehow <laughs> averted yeah. their eyes at the right time. Hey, look at the next feature table. Grafton. Yeah. Third in chips overall right now. Ben Heath, Adrian Mateos, KT. A part of the proceedings. Who's that there in seat one? Is that, is that jungle? jungle? It looked like jungle. I just yeah. didn't recognize him without the rice hat. And there is Orpin, 75k champ. Bryn Kenny rounding out the field. This one's going to be fun. Well, back at the current feature, Christopher Frank, King Queen. Opens to 25. Takes it down uneventfully.
Jungle yesterday during feature table coverage did show up in a traditional bit of headwear. The uh, farmer hat, I guess. I'm not sure what yeah. what to describe it as. Definitely looked the part. He got a lot of chuckles out of Eric Seidel. <laughs> Tough customer. Don't see him wearing any costumes here today, though. Remember yeah. in the coin rivet, North Cyprus, he was... The underwater god Neptune, Trident. I think he called himself called Trident. Trident. Someone Trident. was like, someone yeah. tried to go Trident, and he was like, no, 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 Trident. I like it. The son of, gosh, Poseidon. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, I don't know the other one. The Triton Tour. The son of Poseidon and the Triton Tour. King Force suited, Fade War gets stuffed on by Seth Davies' remaining 204K. And a little bit of mustard on that chip delivery there, Randy. I don't think Fedor has been enjoying himself here. I mean, he is up from his starting stack of start of play here on day two. Yeah, but just, it's you just forget the, about those you know first I mean? hands. It's about the check raise river from the set of kings. It's about the raise on the end from Chidwick. It's about the call from Kale Burns. Yeah, true. Nobody's immune to being a little bit irritated. I'm not trying to make a meal of it. I don't think we're I mean, that awaiting some sort of meltdown from Fader <laughs> Holes by any you stretch. Want, you want to see a meltdown. That Kale Burns call was pretty sick, though. Over bet, call ace, queen, high, good. Stevie, what you got? A six in the cutoff. Chris Frank going to give some action here. Ten, seven, four. A couple of clubs. Not sure what that second card is for Frank. <laughs> A lot of backdoor potential for Stephen Chidwick. Well, clubs, straight draw. They're playing about 22, 23 big blinds effective. Proceeding here. I mean, this type of board also hits the big blind a decent amount, so I don't blame him for checking. Ace rolls off on the turn now, binking Chidwick. I think it's safe to say he's ahead. Tend to agree. Chris Frank is, seems to be the only player who has this position while playing. Yeah, arms folded, head down. Kind of does reduce your visible footprint during a hand. Maybe looking to reduce any measure of live tell. Yeah, and I don't really see Chris Frank traveling, playing these big events too often, so, you know, whatever makes him more comfortable. Turn it. Gets it done. Well, Chris apparently likes to do his thing online. Yeah, that's right. More so than live. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Well, different tells, obviously, online. You got online tells, Ali. Screen name, uh, country, I've location. <laughs> <laughs> Screen name, Dragon Fruit Sucks. I, uh... I actually have not played, save for like a little private club thing, which was my game in, in Vegas, mm -hmm. my mixed game. I have not played a not hand. That was just during the pandemic. Obviously, we didn't have the chance to play in a casino of online poker since Black Friday. 
Thanks, man. That is a long time ago, long time, Ali. Man. Yeah. Long time. You have no idea how it works. I've forgotten. Seth Davies hasn't forgotten what to do with Ace Three suited in the cutoff. Opens to twenty four thousand. Kale Burns, big black defend. <laughs> Top pair against Broadway Gutty. Door spades. Top and bottom. Looking to get some value. Kale inside straight draw. Definitely enough of a hand to continue. Let's see what Seth Davies wants to come with. Ace King three. Yeah, I think I slept on the three there, didn't I? This is up. Much better than just the ace with a weak kicker, of course. 91,000. In the middle. Hills of Davies, barreling 25k. Yeah, and Kale was going to check call inside straight draw anyways, but 10 of spades is quite nice for extra backup. Yeah. Could be relevant, depending on the turn. Take that off the board. Seven of clubs fails to improve Burns in any manner. 116 out there now after his call. Checks again. I mean, this hand is pretty much over Ali. Seth yeah. Davies... Chance of checking this turn is 0%. Yeah. I would bet my bankroll that he would mm. always bet this turn. Be careful. Jason Kuhn lost himself 25K with the free roll earlier. You giving the fans out there a free roll, really? Yeah, my whole bankroll. Seth Davies, you do this to me. I'm never talking to you again. Check it. Check <laughs> it. Oh, he bet it. A quick one. 60K. Burnsy finds the muck with no hesitation. 1,000. Let's go. All right, buddy. See you later. And on that note, the players will be heading for a scheduled break here in the main, where a couple of levels are in the books. Fader holes, 56 blinds, just a Click in front of Stephen Chidwick's 55 blinds. Pablo Silva haven't really called his name much whatsoever. 13 bigs is the blinds will be going to 10 and 15,000. Those chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake as we bring you back inside the broadcast booth here in uh, Hoi An. And Randy, I think we thought we would get a little bit more fireworks from uh, the likes of Seth Gottlieb than we got. But so far, it feels like guys just settling in. Not really too many Ridiculous confrontations thus far. To be expected, I suppose, as registrations close. Yeah, reg registrations close, so you can't really just go crazy and then be able to rebuy. But he's still been active. He's been check raising some flush draws and showing. You know, was involved in a lot of the pots as well as Fedor Holtz. And you know, registrations close, so I expect players to kind of respect their tournament life yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, no doubt about it. Especially if they're on multiple bullets here in a 100k. You don't want to go broke today as we will try to play down to a final table. We're going to step aside, Randy and I, briefly. Henry Kilbane going to tag in for you, and then we'll continue with more coverage from here in Hoi An after this. GG Poker, the biggest poker site. Best poker GG site. Poker. Why? The most Someone ambitious. This is a crazy. It's a doom. Oh, baby!
Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO Bible, and many play and explain live footage, showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker, whether it's online or live poker. Feature tables get the black one. finally yeah. looked out it looks super comfortable. Yeah. into the field and realized that it is not just Chris Frank some, of the, some other paid a visit to the gift like shop the and scooped up the, like they got the, the red tracksuit. By our count, there's five players in the field rocking it right now, and there's only 65 <laughs> left. Yeah, they, they really got <coughs> You think those like the last ball. longer? Yeah. <laughs> those with the red tracksuit? I'm going to have to pick up something. Do we get to win another tracksuit? Red one? Yeah, go get, go get, right. get, get that black jumpsuit. Yeah, what did you just ask? <clears throat> I'm saying, is there a last longer amongst them? Do you think they, they get a prize? No, I know what a last longer is, Randy. But no, I think they ran out of clothes. They didn't realize how long they were going to be here. They underpacked, and then they went down to the gift shop, and they were like, what do you have left? Red tracksuit. Ship it. Meanwhile, no shipping, but a little handling as Elton followed through with the king-queen and is rewarded with the king, but it is a king of clubs, and Fedor 
who check called now has himself the nut flush draws. This one gets interesting with 138 in the middle. Yeah, yeah, very interesting here with the backdoor flush draw. Most likely we're going to see Elton come in with a bet, Fedor. Knowing that the king of clubs is not really the ideal card to put aggressive action 80? on. Despite improving his hand. 80k going in the middle, let's see. King X should improve the undergun opener C bet range. If Fedor was to hold the king, it would be in the form of King X of Hearts. Elton, 317k back. Fedor makes the call. Leaving Elton with just north of one SPR on the river, which is a five of clubs. Fedor. Rivers the nuts, backdoor runner runner, and checks it. This is extremely bad for Elton because we know Elton goes for very thin value bets, right? Two kings on a ace ace on a five five two deuce deuce ace board. I can't really see him not value betting this king queen, knowing his image. Can he find a way to get away from this? It's going to be really, really hard for him not to bet. Time card going in. It's kind of weird because it might be the the sort of barrel that he just can't find a hand he thinks that Fedor would call. If, of course, if that's how we feel on the river, then why are we putting the chips out there? Him holding the King of Hearts, then, is an important card. Because that means that Fedor cannot have King X of Hearts, so the chances of Fedor having a king <coughs> decrease dramatically. 155k, Randy. This is roughly half of Elton's stack. We know the rest will be asked for momentarily. Yeah, so let's see. For Fedor, I mean, we know he's jamming. Elton's going to be faced with a jam for... The rest of his 162k. I'm just trying to think of hands he can beat. All in. Play all in. A very warm welcome back to the Hoi An Golf Resort and Casino here in Hoi An, Vietnam. Randy. Main event time, day two. Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Uh, Randy, I've been out in the booth for the first couple of levels of play today, but I was keeping an eye on the Triton Poker Plus. Uh, there are a couple of names that I saw kind of trade places at the top of the chip counts. One of them, a very recognizable name in the form of Sam Grafton, who obviously took down the 200k Coin River Invitational. But I'm curious, from the feature table, is there anyone that's really been standing out and kind of putting everyone else to the test early showings here? I can tell you that Fedor Holtz has been getting involved in a lot of pots, you know, whether it's in the form of multi barrels calling down and things. And, you know, he's been a bit splashy. He started this, the day with around 600K, got up to about 1.1 million, lost a couple hundred K pots there, here and there. So he's doing well, pretty, still doing pretty well. He's got 935K, been swinging, but has been driving the action. Swinging for the fences, driving the action. That sounds like Fedor. If you know. You didn't even need to say his name. You could have just described that, and I would have would have taken me maybe three guesses. Randy, now new feature table, some very recognizable names in the mix: Benjamin Heath, Adrian Mateos, Orpin, fresh off that victory the other night here. Bryn Kenny, Daniel Case, Jungle Man, Dan, and Sam Grafton, as well as KT. I'm, I'm most excited for uh, Jungle Man, right? He, he showed up late <laughs> in our feature uh, on day one and was wearing that rice hat, that farmer's hat, and was just chatting it up. We got some laughs out of Eric Seidel, which is a very hard thing to do. Points so for that. We'll see how he uh, interacts here on day two. and you know. Do you think we're ever going to see Jungle Man not wearing fancy okay. dress again at a feature to, table? To be fair, we did get a quick glimpse of him. He wasn't wearing anything today, um, but I'm sure his verbal verbal banter will be on point well down to the main stage to see if his verbal banter is on point but you know the verbal banter isn't there let's hope that at least the poker 
delivers as we head to table number five. Sam Grafton, fresh off of that 200k Coin River Invitational victory back in Northern Cyprus at our last stop of last year. 103 big blinds as the blinds go up to 10k, 15k with a 15k ante. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake, of course. So we threw it down. Yeah, he would have actually. Absolutely. 0 for 7, by the way, Squiddy, here in Vietnam. Saving it for the main event yet again, potentially. For those of you just joining us, 51 players remain. Record breaking field here. Plan is to play down to the final table today. 20 places paid with a min cash of 175,000 uh, bucks. We'll that champion, Randy, will be crowned tomorrow. Is going to be walking away with 3,250,000. Yeah, uh, Not too shabby. Just another day in the office for these high rollers, Randy. See that uh, profile picture of Daniel Cates with the hat? Oh, he's wearing it today. Okay, he wasn't wearing it earlier on the outer table, but maybe he's like, I'm on the featured table. It says, welcome to the jungle in his own handwriting. Oh. Love this guy. Had a bit of a haircut as well. A little bit of a trim. Hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong with that one, Randy. Appreciate. Some heavy hitters still out there on the outer tables as well, just scanning through the field. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roman Hrabets. We've got Aurelia Number one on GG Poker Thanks. last year, 2022. I wanted her to do this arm for just like five or ten minutes. Social media guru, you should be. We should be probing. <laughs> we should be asking. You know. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> what are you trying to do? <coughs> <coughs> well, if you want my advice, you got to tell me what you're trying to do. Are you trying to get some girls, or are you trying to? <laughs> Adrian, you trying to get some girls here? Yeah? <laughs> Finally, we know he did all this tournament uh, with one goal in mind. <laughs> get some coaching from Jungle. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> Are you trying to build your profile? Are you trying to get more fanboys? Trying to get some guys? What are you trying to do? I don't know. You're trying to look cool? No I don't know. <laughs> That's wow. your first problem. You have to figure out what you want. Okay. All right, friend. I've got a really Looking annoying for chips, factor face. Or... Keep that in mind. Figure out you know what? what you want first. An <laughs> annoying stack, he says. How much is that annoying stack? It's, uh, let's see. 275. No, it's 350. Oh, is it? No, it's more. 400. Wow. Yeah. Do some damage to your. You can even do some calling. Here. A little bit of calling. A little bit of. C3. Yeah, it you sounds can, so. You could do it. You can comfortable. Huh? Not so uncomfortable. I guess you're kind of short too, right? I don't even know. Oh, he's got I'm like, never short. You were short earlier. Never. What do you got, Brent? I feel like there's five different conversations going on at the table right now. Well, whenever you have Jungle Man and Sam Grafton at the table, safe to say a lot of conversation will be had. Easy for us. Enjoyable to listen to. Sure. Goes from a seven-handed feature table to a 25-handed feature table. Yeah. This spot's getting a little bit interesting here. Ben Heath here, bottom pair. Facing a three big blind bet. Makes the call. Back to our spades. <laughs> Which costs a lot. But he hits the seven. The disguised one. Seven of clubs. Giving Ben Heath, as Randy alluded to, a very disguised trips. One, seven, five out there. Especially given that Bryn blocking the back door spades. Yeah, Bryn thinks he's value betting against the worst jack, 9x, 10, 9, 9, 8, two diamonds. I don't blame him for betting. His hand is vulnerable. 
question now comes for Ben Heath on whether he should check call or check raise here. A lot of stack to play for, just north of 30 big blinds. As Randy alluded to, still a lot of value in Bryn's range as well over pairs. Very wet texture though, Randy. A lot of draws out there. <laughs> True. Does he announce himself now before an 8, 10, queen, king, diamond roll off? Yeah, if you were on a semi bluff, this would be a decent spot to check raise as well because you can represent trip sevens. Depends on how you play the rest of your range. It's going to dictate how Benjamin Heath wants to react with trip sevens and ace kicker. Looks like he's come for the check raise after some deliberation on the turn. Just shy of three and a half X. Action back on Bryn. Yeah, this top pair. Blocking some of the draws that you were alluding to, Randy, with oh, that queen of spades. A little bit. You, uh, like queen 10 the comes to mind. I mean, it's, it's annoying to be able to fold a, a hand this good <coughs> on this poor texture. And he happens to call. He doesn't know if a river bet would be incoming as well. Tournament defining pot potentially brewing here between number one on the Triton all time money list, Bryn Kenny, and the UK's Ben Heath. Bryn really. Stare and bend down. What a fold. Yeah, Randy, good discipline. how about it? How about that? Letting go of a potential <laughs> disaster. Getting away pretty cheaply as well. That 70, 70k bet on the turn. Certainly one, two. Maybe try and speak to Bryn about a little post mortem. Yeah, just he knows these guys are capable of following through on the river barrel too. So it's kind of you want to make your decision on the turn whether you're going to commit to a river for the rest of the chips. And of course, you know, north of thirty blinds is a lot to play for. It's just part of the tournament. Gonna fuck it up, Dan. Oh, fuck. You're always having fun <laughs> playing poker, huh? I always see you having fun. Yeah. Having fun, smiling, fun winning, losing. Why? Much more winning has happened for you, but. <laughs> when you play poker, why are we serious? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, he's not so bad. Uh, I just, he's not, he's I just, not one, he's I one of the, one the worst ones to throw out there. there. <laughs> no. I think he feels very different than how he looks. Right? Yeah. And you feel, on, yeah, of course. I feel I'm too serious. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Inside is just like bubbles. <laughs> bro, he's, how much does he love doing this every day? What are you yeah, talking about? This yeah. is his fucking dream. Yeah. It's like the person that loves it the most. You love it too. Yeah. You grind it in the trenches for a long time till you can play these uh, type of tournaments. Sure, yeah, you gotta appreciate it, you know. You gotta appreciate it. The journey. You gotta, you gotta appreciate, appreciate it, Sam. Uh, yeah. Where you, you gotta, been to where you're at? You gotta appreciate having hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars in front of you effectively. Think about it. Don't make me. You know, it's just chips, bro. That's, no, you know, no, it's not just chips, man. Don't scare me with these big numbers, you know. I might try to. I might go there. Anything goes on the poker table. Certainly some psychological warfare. Yeah, that's fast. So throwing out some numbers and some, some facts. Definitely no facts are barred. Most facts aren't barred from the poker table, I should say. Welcome to the jungle, Randy. I'm entertained. El Matador. Currently sat fourth in chips. Right. Oh, the stacks. They are very deep. 
three bet and the small blind. Sizable three bet as well. Yeah, with deeper stacks, you're going to see people Anything size up doing? a bit more. So ten big blinds. Otherwise, why do it? <laughs> Draft an ace, do suit. At least it. anything you're doing regularly. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, like uh, willing to defend here. Like, not like forced to do it. Yeah. I want to make more money. Yeah. <laughs> He's out now. <clears throat> Two fours in the middle. Yeah, close in the action. The problem is that your hand becomes a bit face up to call here as being wow. that middling part range. Pocket pairs, king queen. Is there a problem with with that in that sense that it's you, a, the problem is that your opponent you you can narrow your you you hand range <laughs> down more? And he, to he, he doesn't like to be off. reminded. Love is good, but five five is also good. Sure. <laughs> Nearly rolled a fight, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely on the list of like loves it the most. Did Squiddy just say he nearly rolled a five? Meaning we were close to seeing. It's easy to love it when you're just winning huge tournaments from 19 and now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, non-stop winning <laughs> big tournaments. <laughs> yeah, Makes you love it a bit easier. <laughs> that helps for sure. This is a guy who won like 20 million or something. <laughs> Imagine how much more serious he would look if he wasn't born. Yeah. <laughs> but also, the guy, uh, maybe I'm the guy who's won 20 mil, but also the guy who's been on the sickest roller coaster. Roller coasters are supposed to be fun, you know. I have fun. I've had fun like back against the wall, like needing to win, you know, X million to get even. You had fun at that point? I accepted what was and I started loving poker. I loved poker still. All right, I want to see this to believe it. Just be like, yeah, I'm stuck 500K. Yeah, 500K in debt. What, what, what was it like? Uh, yeah, right after like the worst like business thing happened. I took like uh, maybe a month off and then went to Triton, the first Triton that I ever traveled to. And uh, one of my friends like went there and almost no one knew the situation, but he knew the situation. And I wound up getting second in there, but he was just telling me at the end how he expected I was going to be there complaining and, you know, talking about that and. Sure. Well, it's good that you weren't. Definitely the whole poker lifestyle, if it's like Mario, what's up, moving, bro? is good. You enjoyed it so much it's yesterday, like you wanted to come and sit with me again. I'm just like, I'm, I'm good, I'd say, at getting to a place to accept what is instead of hoping for something different. Have you studied in case Ben goes for a cigarette and we know how to play uh, the blinds and the buttons? Ben, if Ben goes for a cigarette, I've we have accepted to play, uh, what other outcome world, you know? of this tournament because right. if I lose this it, tournament, I can go. Yeah, to if he's just like I'm um, open off. Nice. <laughs> for, for an open well, don't worry. That's what's going to happen then. <laughs> You'll be sleeping soon, my friend. That doesn't feel like it doesn't feel in sync with the energy. My energy readings aren't feeling that but i mean whatever dude i'll take it i'll take a nap you know? sometimes all you want is a nap so just like usually when i'm playing like a those. big tournament i don't know how often it's coming into my mind that i want a nap i'd say it's pretty rare well i don't know what to tell you man 360. Thanks. All right, so we got Mario Mosbach just sat down, Definitely opening King poker, Jack. Poker uh, quite a lot. Where I thought to myself, "Man, sleeping would be great." <laughs> I can't believe this is our job, right? Well, you're definitely a special kind of animal. How good do we have it? Ace ten three. Mosbach just joining the feature table. Twenty four big blinds effective. 
Bryn defending the big with Queen Jacko. Oswald still with the best of it, but Bryn, enough hand to potentially continue, depending oh, on... He's most definitely going to continue. Yeah, it depends on... I mean, it depends on sizing. I mean, of course, he's not going to call, like, an all-in bet. <laughs> no, but it is a potential big bet spot. Yeah, Jack of Club's important for Bryn Kenny. 20k, I would say, on the small bet size. Bring Kenny on the defense. Alright, check call from Bring Kenny. Blank out. Players <coughs> do brick, as Randy mentioned. Blank turn card, seven of spades. Oftentimes, out there. you know, the turn is the important part of this hand on who wins it. If Mario doesn't multi-barrel this, he likely will not hit his hand. And Brent Kenny is the one that's going to come out swinging, being able to scoop the pot. So let's see. Goes check, check. It does brick out. Eight of clubs does complete the front door flush draw. Bryn's going to expect that Mario Mosbach is going to bet the turn a lot with Ace-X. Even club draws would bet the turn a lot. So I think Bryn can feel pretty comfortable being able to bet this one and, and scooping this pot. Let's see what kind of sizing he comes in with. I believe he went pot size. Yeah, close to pot. 115,000 into 125. Going strong. Kenny getting one through. It's the young Austrian. Mario oh, yeah. Mosbok has been incredibly impressive. Sure, of course, yeah, yeah. No right, problem. So far, Triton series. I'll look out. Imagine the context list I got in my pocket right now. I can senators, politicians, sports stars, maybe even one or two girls I can just message, you know, like. I used the face ID and I got access to it. <laughs> Good for TV. <laughs> it's like a cliche question, but uh, what's the most famous person you got in your phone? What? What's the most famous person you got in your phone? I have, um, let's see, the first one that comes to mind is this like soccer player who's got like 14 million followers. Okay. He might be one. Kind of 14 million. Something like that. Yeah. I'm trying to think of yeah. one. So you don't have to reveal the name. That's a lot. I might have Michael Phelps in there. Yeah. Oh, go on, KT. Take it north. King Jacko. Kenny's got two sevens. That's down. That's a great part of it. <laughs> I don't know, what is it? that part. <laughs> Have ourselves a new chip leader, by the way, Talal Shakurchi. Kings against Chao Vieira's ace king. Come on, and then we have a look at him. Yeah. For a 1.4 million chip like bot. Why are you going? This is 1.4 million chip pot. Wow. 1.4 million chip pot. Big punt. Big punt. The most back lifestyle it deserves, you know? I'm surprised. You don't, you know, man, you don't make these kind of mistakes. I think of you guys who really know the way to have leaving. Snap leaving is not the play, I don't think. Yeah, it's not the play at all. I vetoed that play. There we go. You say what? He vetoed, vetoed that play. That's yeah. It. Come to the committee and we'll vote on it. You get one, of course, it's your life, so you get one vote, of course, a third, you know, <laughs> and then we wouldn't, you know, it's against one already. Yeah, exactly. A lot of a lot of the uh, the plays and actions here, I feel like, you know, the the uh, are not pretty pretty crystal crystal cut, uh, clear cut. But this one, I mean, well, this one's maybe even more clear actually <laughs> than the math one. Now I think about it. The commentators are getting that paying attention. All of 
important life advice. Jungle, someone you would turn to for life advice, Randy? You know, he's definitely gotten a lot wiser, I've noticed, this past year or so. Like, if you ever read his, like, his Instagram and stuff, and sure, he's he can be goofy here and there, but he's kind of searching for this meaning of life kind of thing, you know? That's yeah, what I've noticed. Yeah, he's been on a journey. He's got a podcast now where he reaches out to all sorts of players on I believe it's called like how to win the game of life or similar. He spoke he spoke to Ali. Ali Najad. He did. On his podcast. He did. You're not aware. I well, just didn't want any viewers, so <laughs> <laughs> I listened a little bit, so I gave a view. Go on, ha- no, that's not how YouTube works. How many minutes did you listen? Four. Four minutes. Yeah got to the part where Ollie was talking about how some pro some some female came and he didn't want he didn't want to go out and have a dinner or anything wanted to continue playing his game and he stepped up he stepped away from the game and the game was broke when he came back didn't realize he was the fish he was the mark sounds about right yeah, just found the podcast, Winning the Game of Life. 45, Man, right? Dan. 40. 40. What a spot brewing up here. It's queen seven against two sixes. Looks like we've got a lot of checks in there. Maybe one bet went in. Two sixes might, might find some bet. Might, might, might find a call here, but would be in trouble against queen seven. Does. And yeah. Grafton chipping up once again. Nicely played. And Dan shows the winning hand. Yes. You want to show? No. <laughs> that would be a nice play. Like, yeah, nice play. Like tag, yeah. tag, call. Put the right chips in. Yeah, put the right chips in, and a seven. <laughs> we were gonna have a negotiation. I should have asked, like, what would you pay? You know, maybe you could have. Yeah. I'm okay, gonna next, go forty. Next no, time, okay. next time. Thirty, 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 please. Should, instead of a time bank card, you get a negotiation card. You throw it out. Okay, uh, we're opening, we're opening negotiation. Time. Shall we get one white card each for a slow roll? Each <laughs> you can slow, oh, by the way, of course, you can slow roll. Yeah. I can? Yeah, of course. Are you sure? Yeah. I will. I know you, I, yeah, you're a savage. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you would, yeah. It's okay. For sure, the kids need to be put back into play sometimes <laughs> when they're getting reckless. Open truly is a savage. Fresh off that win in the 75k against Chidwick. Ace Jack suited for Orpin. Love to see it. Truly one of the easiest guys to root for. I mean, there, there are a lot of, guys, a lot of guys here at root. these Triton series that are easy oh. to root for, but. Open definitely up there on my list. It's safe to say he's a lucky man to have not cashed the bounty tor- mystery bounty tournament and still come out with 250k, which I believe topped I mind being on so many people's list, prizes and at I least getting a fourth place like finish roughly. That's right, exactly. Like yeah. Yeah. Guy that tops everyone. Never before, <laughs> Bar the top three. Yeah. With only one bounty. Doesn't right. even go onto his hand and mob. No, it doesn't. That's the crazy thing. Did not cash, but won 250k. I <laughs> <laughs> know. You know, it, I don't know if you heard earlier, Henry, but uh, the dealer has already cashed this tournament. 25k, courtesy of Jason Kuhn. No. Yeah, you know how he was running those uh, free yeah. rolls to the dealer? Both hole cards. Both hole cards. The dealer called out nine five of clubs, dealt to Jason Kuhn off stream. So we're kind of in the money. Kind of. Oh, Someone's cash. Fantastic. Love to hear it. Jason Kuhn, for those of you that weren't aware, been handing out free rolls to the dealers all week. One in 1,300 chance of guessing his two hole cards. 
It sounds like someone pinged it off. Sam Grafton, top of the chip counts here. This feature table, chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. 4,000 of you watching over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel do drop us a quick it point. It takes a couple of seconds. Valuable. It's completely yeah, free. Like and how can you not for yeah. this yeah. kind of high stakes Master coverage and entertainment? Do, you know? This lineup and talking of entertainment, Randy. Pocket aces. For the 75k champ. It says what country when you're playing at the table with them? No action so far. Ben Heath with King Four not too great of a hand. No, he's against early position. Twenty-four big blinds. When I opened the Poker Stars FR Looks like he's gonna take a flop here in massive trouble. Eleven percent for him to win this pot. For Europe is easier. Outside Europe, I'm not sure. No chance. Oh, this is one of those boards where Tom yeah, said it's about this smashed it so fun. hard where maybe he checks. Give your opponent oh, yeah, some many, rope. Many people play. Mm. No, it's not your phone, don't worry. Bro. Four million. He's betting. He's betting like one big one. Mandatory continue. Post no? Just our range wants to do a lot of betting. And also, you know, there's a lot of street draws, gut shots. What's like 8x, 7x, they have, have a half one the pitch. Decent, uh, once or twice a year, or nine some chips in. Every month, okay? Never feels good mm -hmm. when you're putting like snap one or two hundred k or something. When you got top yes, set, yes, yes, it is part yes, of the game. Play to ranges. Yeah, but the Spanish regulation, you can only play an up to two hundred fifty euros per tournament. So they they are fucked because of that. So most of the tournament is 250 maximum. Mm. Uh, when they make it bigger, it's only for France and F dot F R accounts and like a special thing. Mm. They were the ones who created Spinning Go, right? Espresso. <laughs> I like that. It's a good name too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they invented. You? I didn't use that. No, I like it. On the back of a piece of paper? That would be so good, yeah. yeah. That would be really profitable to invent it. Every time they pay a spinning go somewhere in the world, you get just sent like two cents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 You're the spinning go billionaire. <laughs> Probably the person who made it. Yeah, got no, yeah, got nothing. It was on like made almost nothing. It was on like thirty k a year. Yeah. The idea, Steve. I know, I know the guy. <laughs> he, he's he might have been on like eighty a year or something, but still no, uh, no uh, huge bonus or anything. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adrian apparently knows the guy that invented invented the spin and go style format. Obviously called different names on different sites, but original concept. Created by Winamax. Adrian on the spot here. Gut shot, backdoor diamonds against the Seabet under the gun open from KT. Yep, they're playing pretty deep here, so we'll see how he responds. A check call to start things off. Looking for that six. As blank as it gets. But for KT, it's quite hard to multi-barrel ace 10 high here. Yeah, also the 10, not the best card to have, right? Blocking some of the hands that would call cool flop and then full turn, like jack 10, 10-6, 10 10-9. Yeah, you nailed it. Pretty good point here. Let's see if he does opt to find a bet, though. Representing King X, trying to get 8X and 7X to fold. He is from under the gun. Oh, he's actually from Thailand, Randy. <laughs> he's from. He's gonna fire twice. And <laughs> I just that was a cheap shot. I like it. That was cheap. Forty-eight players left. Twenty places paid. Back to the intellectual property of someone creating something like that. What about the intellectual property of the? emotes over on GG Poker. Is there someone out there that gets a couple of cents every time Elkie does the uh, 
the dance. I don't know. But GG Poker could sign up today, get $100 in rewards or 100% up to $600 matched bonus, as well as the daily Triton free rolls. Obviously, let us know okay, thank you. how you guys get in, get in, get on in those. Shout out, GG. I mean, talk about innovation, I might GJ. Just be I actually, proxy. I love really the him, emoji like, stuff. Puts it on this just... guy, so no one ever knows. Yeah. Animation. He's on so salary. Top notch. <laughs> Qualifying opportunities <laughs> as well. <laughs> what, have you ever real railed the GG move. games and like, <laughs> even the pros there are using these emojis while yeah, playing, yeah, yeah. like, the I highest stakes possible. I used to do like a rail heaven styled um, Twitch stream where I would get whenever the high stakes PLO would run. Um, this was back during the pandemic. I would just fire up our Twitch channel, just just to have it a little bit more interactive for people. Like discuss some hands, discuss some of the showdowns. But you're 100 percent right. They were typing away in the chat, you know, throwing like different types of slow rolling, all all sorts going on. They man. love to do the one where, you know, it's all in and someone shows their card at the end of the hand and just like needle, like yeah, you had no outs or whatever. Yeah, it's it's really all all good stuff over on GG. Recommend you check it out. Right now, though, we got a hand. Mario Mosbach, open jack 10. Three bet from Ben Heath. Mateos in the small blind, ace queen. And you can see he's thinking about going upstairs with four bet. Yeah, ace queen, a nice hand to, you know, four bet call off against Mario, obviously. Four bet folding against Ben feels a bit dicey. Depends on sizing. You know, the four bets typically smaller sizings. And how about it? Just didn't, didn't like the situation of, say, 4 betting the 200k getting jammed on for 300k more. Really to <laughs> look at that look, by the way. <laughs> I mean, how good are these guys where Ben knows knows he just got away with one? Yeah. Just based off the tank from Mateos and the small blind. It's quieting down a little bit out there. It's jungle MIA. Is he just enjoying the massage too much? Oh, ju jungle comes and goes. Queens. Really quiet and down out there. <coughs> Twenty eight off the money. Long old ways to go. Mm. Cash of 175,000. Those of you only just joining us and hadn't already heard, our main event champion is going to be walking home 3,150,000 cheaper. Cheaper? <laughs> cheaper. It's been a long week. 3,150,000 richer. <laughs> Top prize of 3,250,000. Raid a lot. It's allow Shikurchi. Currently chip leader. As we dive back into this, Adrian not getting the chance to pounce with the ace queen, but now opting to attack this cutoff open from Ben. Oh, Ben's going to come along here. He doesn't think that he's actually dominated, but in a little bit of trouble. Two marginal hands going at it. Seven in the window, followed by two eights. Good spot for Adrian Mateos. Got four, 40 BBs behind. Analyzing the stack to determine what's the best bet sizing. It's a vulnerable hand. Nothing wrong with going for some value now. Yeah, no nonsense from Heath. Just gets out of the way. El Matador. Climbing slowly but surely. He's sat in sixth overall. Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen? Let us know whereabouts <laughs> in the world you're joining us from. Let us know who you're rooting for. 48 players left out of this record breaking main event field of 135. It is Squiddy. 
Sam Grafton leading this final table. Chip counts brought to you. Final table, this feature table. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake Blind. Still 10k, 15k with a 15k big blind ante. Anyone want to keep tabs on the amount of times I screw up in the booth today? Feel free. Currently two. <coughs> We're doing over and under. Yeah, let's let's do a little over and under. Let me get a pen so I don't forget to. Uh, can you pass me that pen? This beautiful pen from Ali Najad. Thanks. The one that he stole from the plane. Yeah, that one. <laughs> we got two on the tally so far. King Dewey suited, or been limping. Bring Kenny Jack Deuce off suit. Blind versus blind. 23 big blinds back. Tap a hand as some players opt to raise, knowing that it has very little playability. See him pondering. 50k. You're never in love to see a raise when you limp in a small blind about a nice holding, but King Do suited seems like enough hand to continue out of position. On the flip side, he is playing 24 big blinds. Looks like he will make the call here, dominating Jack Deuce, but without the betting lead, a lot of times he will still lose the pot. Let's see what comes out. Well, it's come King High, but more importantly, it's come with some equity for Brent. Potential spot to barrel the king, queen, nine. Yeah, let's see how he wants to continue. Looks like he is going to reach for chips, start with a small bet. See how Orpin responds. 35k. For me, it seems that Orpin's got a clear-cut call. It's a small bet. His hand is good, but not the best on this run out so far. Still top pair. Not going anywhere just yet, as Randy insinuated a lot of scary run outs that could see open muck the best hand and well now just drawing dead. Bryn turning the king high straight. Yeah, interesting development here for Bryn Kenny. Now looking for some value. Hoping to get value out of two pair type hands. That would limp call preflop. Good amount of those, like Queen 10. And he gets some, he needs to protect against three hearts. With no heart backup for Orpin, it's pretty hard to continue here. Unless you think Bryn's got the straight. Could be up against a flush. Gonna lay it down. Keep it safe. Nice pickup for Bryn Kenny. Moves up to just about 40 blinds. Good turn for me. Bad time. True. Open. Good flip as well, I guess. <laughs> that was exactly turn, where he was in that spot. Just a turn. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Craig Peterson tuning in from New Zealand. we got Florida, Thailand. How's everyone doing? Justin Scott saying, I'm rooting for Kilbane to return to form. We know he'll get there, but when? Hopefully not too long, Randy. <laughs> Level and a half. Give it a level and a half. Ah, you seem good to me. And Sheriff saying that you'd like to see Sam Squiddy take this one down. Well, I mean, he did. Champion in the 200k. <laughs> Champion in the 100k main. Okay. I think he can definitely take it down. Winning 5.5 million in the Coin Rivet Invitational back in Northern Cyprus last year. He hasn't cashed a series yet. 
mind you. 0 for 7 right now. I know he's just giving some back. He's just... Yeah, his main caches is in a 200k, a 100k, and a 50k. His only three caches. So anything smaller, he just comes in, loses some chips, pays his fines and fees, and wait for the big one. Doing his, own, doing his part for the uh, sustainability. What? Has the poker economy. Such a bad hand. Oh, I thought you said the. You said something else. What you called it? It wasn't a good hand. I would like to see you try again. I'm not going to try again with that hand. I will try again wow. with a better one. Better. better one, I will. Everyone wants to be in the jungle, eh? Everyone wants to be in the jungle. Right now, there aren't too many wild animals in the jungle, let me tell you. Jungle's, jungle's coming down. It's still early. Nighttime rolls around, that's when the jungle starts getting a little spicy. <laughs> so it must be nice to have such a, a nickname that you could just riff <laughs> off all the time. It's just such a good time. Yeah, jungle's safe in the day, but in the nighttime. Ooh! Yeah, that's when all the fucked up stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> when the hunters hunt. That's right. Pair of fives to Grafton. Gonna just rip it in on Orpin. Ending this hand quickly. <clears throat> that felt like pocket eights type of all in. I mean, it's a good hand to go all in with, right? Yeah. Not like Ace, I mean, like four. Not, uh, not Aces. Not Aces. It wasn't Aces. So. Oh, I slow play it against the Maniac every time. Next one, Ben Heath opening Queen Nine of Clubs under gun. Yes. Sensei King Jack offsuit in the cutoff. Mm -hmm. You can see players sometimes three bet this hand, sometimes they flat, sometimes they fold. A mixed strategy. Against 40 big blinds under the gun open. Wouldn't fault him for passing up on the spot. One ten. Not gonna pass up this time round, Randy. North to a hundred and ten thousand. Yeah, Brin Kenny is a type of player who loves to put some pressure on his opponents. It's hard to put resistance here with Queen Nine of Clubs. He's out. You watch your timing there, Brin. You're two seconds faster than you normally are. Bet. Two seconds faster than what the... That's value then, right? You know it's value, right? Yeah, Two seconds it's faster. Value. It's also like 20k bigger. You can count to 20. He doesn't want to... This is show business. Bryn doesn't want to waste five extra seconds of the viewers. Oh, well, so you know, that's what, what it's about. Doing. You try to steal the camera. No, actually that one I could easily hold it free. Just decided not not the time. Oh, okay. Some insight to how Sometimes jungle's read, mind works. Ego, you know, sometimes gets the best. Yeah. You know, since he check raised me the other one in the big blind, still don't know what he had. Wait, so that was an ego Be raise? Before that happens, I <laughs> had no. <laughs> Gotta make an entertaining narrative. 
That's true, yeah. Thank God. I was gonna ask you what your thought process was. Was <laughs> you go, hey, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is the well, thought the thought, it was like, uh, you know, well, I could make it 85, 90, but I don't want him to flash at 110. Uh, okay. Those are the thought processes I want to hear. I don't want to hear about, oh, like, I should 3-bet, you know, ace jack off smooth. Oh, but I 3-bet last time, and I randomized 30%. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Tell us your thoughts. My thoughts are, uh, I want to hear the thought process, processes, the thought processes of all the, the raises and the bets that don't have to do with the math. That's what I want to hear about. Chris. No, 10 two fives quickly into the muck from Brent Kenny. Dan Cates. Seems like danger time. Ace Queen suited 21 big blinds against KT. Back to back opens. Perhaps some speech incoming. A tie player, yeah, maybe. Oh dear. Squid getting the phone out. <laughs> Wants to catch this one live. <laughs> Two aces about to be revealed. <laughs> Here we go. The slow roll moment is set up. <laughs> he unleashes. This was this was a bad shove. This was a bad raise. <sighs> have one over, John. Come on, you can have one. It's just ace queen suited. Slow there roll. Is. Yeah, that's a, a high card right wow. there for sure. Wow. That's a slow roll. Yeah. Any slow rolls got, about? Like, uh, not eights or something or seven. Oh shit. Oh, He's really missed though. I guess it's better He's than him having eights or sevens at least. <laughs> Nine. It's a lot better than that. In these spots, this one's missed a lot, to be honest. How are you feeling about the river jungle? Well, I actually lose on the ten of diamonds now. That's that's important to me too. You gotta like pay attention to this stuff. Jungle not feeling it. Oh, okay, yeah. The deck GG, bro. All right. agrees with him, Randy, as we lose oh Jungle Man Dan getting his final That's 20 There's a lot of two There's bigs in. On that. That's the problem of manifesting. Oh. Against KT's <laughs> Pocket you, Kings. You wanted to sleep, and now you get to sleep. No, can I put you happened. to sleep? <laughs> put the jungle to sleep. The stream will KT. be less interesting without you, sir. We lo just lost a quarter of a million viewers. They switch off, you know. <laughs> we don't even have someone comparable in the field. We're like, what do we, you know, we need to bring fucking David Copperfield on with a tiger uh, to, to even, to even keep the viewership. Like, what are we gonna do? You're making, you're making bring Kenny look small time. This is how your energy, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's hey, sending he jungle to sleep. <laughs> Great video. I mean, the two times Sam's videoed someone all in a big tournament have not gone so well for them. <laughs> I need to video take all away, bro. There's like, it's like raise, call, call, Leon. No, it's raise, call, three bet, four bet, five bet all in from Ben, fold, fold, and Leon's called four bet, 10 nine off. And he calls all in against Ben's Kings. And I was like, this is quality hand. I'll film it for you. Like, I, like I'm filming. And it comes, just comes like 10, 10, 4 on the clock. And you just see the phone go, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, the phone's just like, oh. This is less funny moment now. Like, you know, in the 200K as well, by the way. A new chip leader, Randy. Yeah, no phones for you. Eric Seidel. Nice. Just cruising along steadily. Yeah, known for crushing. Unfortunately, we do lose Paul Paul here in 47th on the outer tables. Got his remaining chips in of two tens against Ace King suited of Johannes Strava. Ace on the turn. B 
BVB, Mateos, nothing. 7 4 off suit. Gets raised by Kenapong. Tanarachikul. Wow. Aggressive there, Queen Jack. Not going to get bullied around from these pros. Two overs to the 9 5. Gut shot. Takes it down. He knows these guys like to stab away, and he's playing versus blind. He raised us a little bit too slow. <laughs> Seen a lot of Dude, love <laughs> in the chat for Sam Grafton. Not, not, not this time. <laughs> My plan. It's gone up to 10,000, 20,000 <laughs> with a 20,000 big blind ante. Brought to you by Jacob and, and Co. Uh, okay. 14 BB. Wow. Oh, I love for Squiddy. I cannot jam all I think. Of these players. Squiddy gets a little bit extra love, though. I mean, he just. It's always lively, despite the stakes, despite his chip stack situation. Jack 10 off suit. He is facing a short stack in the big line. Like just a Orpin. Ace 9. Great hand to reshove on. 12 big blinds. Dealer button of Adrian Mateo is going to open very wide. Lots of fold equity. Yeah, it does still have fold equity, that being the important thing. And Ace 9. Still performing well against the range of hands that cool as well. Yeah. You know. Pocket pairs are going to call against you. Still got two overs. And doesn't play that well post flop. I, I would love to see Orpin come in with a, with a jam. Let's see what he decides to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Knocking about from Mateos. Snap folding Orpin. Getting a very important jam you through. Need to break. Oh, no, not enough. Did use one time card in that hand. Talking of important, Randy. Why Web 33 saying, when we'll try and run a five card Omaha Live six max tournament? It's very specific. <laughs> it's very specific. Not only is five cards, six max. Five card Omaha Live six max. It is five card, like your hand? part of the woods. Traffic. Yeah. Yeah. No more four card. It's just, you know, the more cards, the more gamble. More cards. Five's good. Five's the good line. Six is a bit too much. Is six a thing? Six is definitely a thing, yeah. How about heads up? We do like 15 cards. Is that, is that possible? Yeah, we used to do like dinner flips or just like flipping for small stuff. Ridiculous amounts of cards. You get like 12 cards, have to dispatch two pre flop, two on the flop, two on the turn. <laughs> and then that sounds like fun. Yeah, it's good fun. And you know, oh no, I just folded the best hand. Grafton coming in at Bryn Kenny's big blind. Diamonds in both players' holdings. 7 5 of diamonds connected and suited. We'll take one off. We'll take a flop, I mean. 95, well, 120k in the middle now. No diamonds, but a little bit of connection for both players. Nines with a king kicker. Open-ended, although the bottom end. Not the best spot for Bryn Kenny. Mm, Bryn's putting a little tank in here in the big blind. Maybe he's contemplating leading. And he is. This is a type of board that gets checked through on a lot pre on the flop. Wants to just take it down. Tangling with one of the tournament chip leaders. He's opened from under the gun. And you're also not blocking any of like the backdoor floats as well. Ten of spades, nine of clubs, eight of hearts. But hey, you can just turn the jack high straight. Feels incredibly dicey though. Lower end. Proceeds. Yeah, let's. Thousand out there. Curious if he keeps betting this bottom end of the straight, or if he wants to check and you know, try 
try to contain the pot. Looks like he is going to bet again. I believe he thinks that if he bets here and gets called, a lot of times he would be up against the queen x. He wants to charge those two pair hands, right? Or maybe like, I mean, I guess mainly two pair. Two pair, over pairs. Over pairs like kings. Hmm. Sets. So can certainly have it all from under the gun. Can also have the higher end of the straight. Yeah, very easily. Grafton drawing life, of course. Four queens in the deck. And also hasn't folded yet. Really thinking this one through. The king is important for him because, say, a queen drops off, he still have a king high straight. But, I don't know, it just doesn't feel nice, right? Calling with third pair on a four liner. Wow, he makes the call here. This is. Getting up uh, quite interesting. All right, let's see a river card. King. So Grafton now has two pair. Although I don't think that mattered too much on a turn. It does now beat hands like Jack 10, Jack 9 that may be stabbed. I don't think Jack 10 or Jack 9 would bet. I suppose it's more important that he beats a random King X. I don't know. It's, it's tricky. This is definitely not a standard line to lead flop lead turn here. Bring Kenny going for blocker value now. Unexpected. I think Grafton was thinking, look, if I call you here on the turn, you're just going to shut down. You see, he winced a bit when the bet came in. I guess Grafton is going to dis discount 7x a decent margin. He probably doesn't expect 7x to bet the turn and river. You would think that hand would want to pot control a bit. So now he's, if he's beat, is would be up against queen x. Most likely from his point of view, he would need to think about which queen x leads flop. Mm, queen jack, of course. Uh, it's a tricky hand. It's confusing, Grafton. Yeah, an incredibly unorthodox line from Bryn. And Sam now blocking some, but does let it go. Some value. Bryn with the flop lead, turn lead, and river lead. Yeah, Bryn got a lot of value from that seven, actually. Two straights with the bottom end of the straight. Nicely Trips executed. Because I play four weeks of poker straight and they're like, you want to play a super confusing hand on stream? Sam Jam? <laughs> Heavy jams? <laughs> Is Sam Jam on the river? Call with Queen Jack. Do a jam when I call with Queen Jack? <laughs> Probably. Queen Jack's like the extra stubborn hand for sure because you flop the straight, so those are always the harder ones. Some like uh, Queen Nine or so, it'd be a lot easier. Mm. Ben Heath saying, I've been playing poker for four weeks straight and saved the most confusing hand for the feature table in reference to Good. the hand we just went well, this to. <laughs> yeah, you can I see that Ben Heath like was pointing out that's a confusing hand despite not even being in the I hand. Right. Yeah. Like you just know that this oh. hand is yeah. not standard up by any means. There sometimes, for sure.
inside board, not much connection. Then he put the betting lead. They come in with a small bet. Deny some equity. No, gonna check it. Got the best non paired hand. We'll see if it invites Grafton to maybe take a stab. Four liner wheel. King Hyde has a little bit of showdown value. Maybe against a, a Queen Jack that checked the flop. Not a lot. Check. I wonder if Ben Heath will continue to check this, trying to get a safe showdown, a cheap one. Still have a lot of showdown with King Queen. It's the Ten of Diamonds completes the board. Also completes some of the hands that Grafton was ahead of. Queen Ten, Jack Ten, Ten Nine. Still beats Queen Jack. Probably the exact one hand he beats. And yeah, a simple one. A check down. King Queen is good. Law, just over two million in chips now. Yeah, I just saw that. Sweat along over on the Triton Poker Plus app, of course. <coughs> Gertrude eliminated the Al Ding in pretty disgusting fashion, actually. Tell me. Uh, blind v blind. Rob, hang on, this hand makes zero sense. <laughs> Rob Young raised from the hijack. Talal peeled from the small. Bounding defended the big. Flop came queen jack five. All uh, right, check th right. Check through. Check through. I got it now. Four of hearts, seven of spades. We got some sense now. Talal. Rivering the nut straight, Biao Ding, rivering two pair. Enough to have someone watch the stream and tell them what, what anyone's got in any hand. <laughs> Long gone. Everyone I know is. <laughs> Everyone I, I have eight friends and they're all in this tournament, or annoyed that they're out of this tournament. <laughs> You'll find Long. Oh, the, the other person I know is my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian's definitely got like a, a squad analyzing oh. everything. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Sam Grafton's wife and his maybe, eight friends who are no longer in the tournament. Oh. Should have played okay. better. Should have played <laughs> better. <laughs> Should have been luckier. Should have brought some lucky charms. No. Just better. Should have just played more like Sam Grafton. We see you bust the tournament. We're interested in watching the stream. Mario Mosbach, 10-8 offsuit, sitting on eight big blinds. Needs to look for an opportunity to get some chips in here. Like a flop looking for some kind of piece. No connection. Dwindling down. I definitely should have been watching it during. <laughs> <laughs> this this is a slightly different lineup. We can trust Opie a little bit more to be. Or, 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 or. Oh. We just trust. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, you never know. Right. Well, min bet. Oh, All you need against a short stack. Some oh, big Jim. name bust outs from the outer tables you already mentioned. The boss man, Paul Poir, won't be winning this one. Pablo Silva, Alexis Ponikovs, Jao Vieira, Elton Sang, Jason Kuhn, Tony G, Chris Brewer, Phil Nagy, Akita, Badziakowski, Justin Bonomo, Steve O'Dwyer, just to name a few. And a half weeks of straight poker. Sure. No five-time champion just yet. Both 
Coon and Makita. Last thing. So over on Twitch, saying if you guys haven't seen Grindhouse 1 series on YouTube, check it out. Really good. Mozbok is from there, so to speak. Yeah, Mario, part of Fedor's crew. Poker Code and Grindhouse crew. And it goes. <laughs> I can film it for you if you'd like, Mario. It's for a spades. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. He's all in. How do you feel, Mario? Uh, I'll be good. Mate, very legitimate hands. He feels ahead. I think you're almost dead now. The camera's up. Like very ahead. Yeah. Very ahead. Got to break. He is ahead, but the camera curse. Huh? Seems still fair. Six is. Mm -hmm. Queen five tray. King of diamonds. The no, camera like curse is real. I feel it. Watch. Watch. <laughs> Needs an ace or a deuce. Doesn't happen. Running like kings. For Ben Heath. Mario Mosbach. <coughs> got his final seven bigs in good. Just so we can ask for. <laughs> I promise you, you pull that out next to me. <laughs> Every time that phone comes out, Randy. <laughs> just goes into the trite screen and cracks it. You know? It's like the Wizard of Oz, it cracks and we see <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alex McGuard pulling the strings behind the scene. A little rude from you now. What? Oh, and he doesn't want to say no. It's like all yeah, fun yeah, on stream. Yeah, yeah. He's like, <laughs> he knows oh, he's out though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's thinking like, what I ever do to Sam? <laughs> King King is strong, but fast. Very strong. GG's in the chat I mean, for King Mario. Beat, you know, nine ten off on. Uh, on the video, mm -hmm. Ace Four doesn't have a very good chance of yeah, King Seven. Forty one left, Randy. Twenty places paid. Still a long ways to go before we get down to that snail pace play around the bubble, but something to keep in mind. Ben Heath going to come along. Two fours. Mateos will get the close action of King Queen suited if he wants to. It is 60 big blinds to play for against an undergun open. So I think you're going to tend to see him err on the side of caution and maybe take a flop here. Three way of that between Mateos KT and Ben Heath. King high flop. Monotone KT flopping top pair and the second lap flush draw. Mateos also with top pair as promptly checks through. Yes, this Queen of Spades could be rather helpful for KT being able to scoop this pot potentially. Right now, action on Ben Heath, a pair of fours. So for Mateos, he's wondering how often he's up against 10x. Probably thinks that Ben Heath would bet 10x on the turn. But it is reasonable for KT to check back a 10 on the flop. Not many 10x in his range, though, right? From under gun, yeah, jack 10, ace 10, 10 9 mainly. It'll have to be suited. Let's see if KT wants to start getting some value. Doesn't want to let this check through twice. Then he pair of fours. Not too good of a spot for him. He's hoping to see a free one to hit his spade. Oh, okay. He's actually going to come in here. Just 
spare force. A little bit surprising for me. Yeah, I'm in the same camp as you are, Randy. Well, for Adrian, as played, not loving the two calls in front of him, but too good of a pair to fold. I peaked it for a second. Close. But Ben, the three of clubs completing the board, Mateus and KT will chop at showdown should it get to showdown. It feels like this gets to show down a good amount of time. I don't know, but KT's cutting out some chips. I think he's checking his... Uh, yeah, it's a reasonable chance you're up against a 10x, right? Like, if he was against one caller, maybe you can find some value but against two callers on a flop, on a turn bet. I don't mind this. <laughs> good job, guys. Oh, the needles have been fantastic so far today. So Mateos and KT going to chop that one up. Talal Shikurchi currently chip leading the final 40 players. Eric Seidel in second, Sir Watts in third. Some other names from the top 10. Sam Greenwood, Sam Grafton, Daniel Smilkovich. All enjoying themselves the out of tables. Daniel Forrest just recently eliminated. Nine's no good against Gitas Lazaninkas's pocket tens. Boris out. Things have gotten a little more quiet ever since Jungle left. Yeah, understandable. That typically is the case in any setup. You get so big, Sam. What's that? You get so big. And are that too big? Yeah. 50, right? Ah, uh, yeah. But too big for 70, yeah. <laughs> he likes to wrap big against you. He knows you're dangerous. Uh, yeah. Push him up. <laughs> I, the last one, that was big, big. Yeah. Uh, the last one, he... <laughs> like, hey, you pot, pot. Pot, pot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pot, pot, pot. Pot, pot, pot. Pot, pot, pot. Yeah. Pot, pot. <laughs> Lava! Welcome. Disrespect. Yeah. Four players no, no currently in event number 10, the 50k turbo. Mike Haxton, Makita Batsiakowski, oh, Chris Burr, and Linus Love. Linus Love got all regged from the start. Willing to play anyone and everyone, those four. I mean, they want to play with deep stacks as much as they can. Very well experienced. I'm happy to see Vashislav. He's just been... Oh, yeah. He's just got this funny demeanor that he plays with, right? It's body language. He's uh, He just keeps it lively. He's got these his style of jokes. Kenny opening ace, jack of clubs, Orpin in the big blind. Suited king, just north of 14 big blinds. Very reasonable hand to take a flop with. He would be up against the under the gun opening. Perceived to be the strongest. Connects best with a pair of fives. Bottom pair of Agnor Spades for Orpen. Facing the under the gun open. Or Bryn. Bryn going to continue. Rarely going to get check raised. He's got two Although overs. That, and, yeah, you know, a lot of depth. turn bets that he, turn cards that he can fire away and put a lot of pressure, right? Like the queen, the club, the king he would perceive to be a good card from the barrel on. Maybe make his hand. Yeah, 
turn card, 180,000 in the middle, it's the Ace of Hearts giving Bryn top pair and 89% of the equity with one card to come. Yeah, the better card of the two to hit. A lot more clean. Bryn Kenny looking to charge those 10x, 9x type hands, straight draws. Anything really. Five K and Orpin doesn't have that much turn. enough hand to continue. Good Thanks flop, bad turn turn. again. Same result as last time, says Brent. Orpin just knows, Randy. Good flop, bad <laughs> turn. But the silver lining being that if you put chips in the middle, Randy, when you have the best of it, more often than not long term it's going to work out for you as we saw in event number 5 this main event not going Orpin's way so far putting chips in the middle with the best of it turns and rivers having different ideas but still in the hunt 12 big blinds as we welcome <coughs> legend true living legend of the poker world Stephen Chidwick how many of these hoodies does he have? They just all... Exact same make. Different colors. So he's got every single color you're saying? Well, we've seen the black, the white, and now... What would you call this? Like burgundy? Burgundy is pretty good. Two fives. Orpin. Gonna try to take this one down pre flop. It's an earlyish raise. 230? 230. Gonna make the call here of ace 10 and we're gonna run it. <laughs> <In the map? laughs> can't, can't be ace 10. <laughs> you want the camera or no? I'll take the camera. <laughs> Wow. The, bye bye, bye Orpin. <laughs> wow. Orpin, brave. It's all low cards. It's all baby cards. Taking Why would camera. you take the camera, Orpin? <laughs> two people have been eliminated by the camera already. Not just two people. Like, this is a thing. Better this way. Better the backdoor space. That's Ace how we like space does it. give him nine Six additional eight. outs. Can this Orpin the hit the river to stay alive? No dice, says the Six of Hearts. Completes the board and some small revenge, if you will. Stephen Chidwick finishing runner up in that 75k. Took down. Of course, suggest these two good friends. Yeah, go and go hit some of the other tables. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. You got my number? No, 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 no. Add up. You want the video of Open's exit? Oh. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course, okay. Three times. KT wants a collection of all these <laughs> videos of that he's been shooting, players being exited. Collection of souls. That's one way to put it. Collection of souls caught on camera by Sam Grafton. Oh. GG's once again to open of course ah, but the video left. With jungles thing was on his camera okay. well if you're all in so mm -hmm. we'll uh we'll get that from him dropping like flies out here drop us a like whilst you're at it talking of dropping 5200 people watching over on the triton poker youtube channel One day. Take a couple of seconds out of your day completely free to click that like button and it really does help us continue to go from strength to strength here at the Triton series. 153k subscribers now, Randy, by I'm the happy. way. Do appreciate the continued support over the last nine days. This is going to be the last Hold'em event of the series. 
playing down to the final table today. That's the plan, at least. Plan, Randy, is to get down to the final table. Of course. Tournament director Luca Vivaldi will, of course, intervene if it comes to a gridlock in the wee hours of the morning. Tomorrow, though, we're going to be crowning our champion. Record-breaking main hit in Vietnam with 3,250,000. Going for first. Four seven figure scores up for grabs in this one. Because why not? Double aces here. Opening into Grafton's big line. Queen Jack of Clubs. 1.4 million to play for. I'll start with a call here. Sweaty with all the back doors, Adrian. With the aces. Maybe a spot to mix against the big blind. Some people actually check aces on this flop. Mateos tends to agree with you. As the king of hearts does present an open ended straight draw for Sam Grafton, we could see. The top end would boat Mateos up. Squiddy still drawing live to a nine. Yeah, good carper. Sam Grafton check. contemplating check. betting. We'll check. Mateos now no heart in hand. Well, he wasn't. He was looking for more of a two street game. Getting value, thinks that getting three sheets would be difficult unless they have a 10. So most certainly looking to bet the turn and river. For Grafton now, open-ended. I mean, there is some percentage where he puts in more chips in terms of raising. Calling is okay too, and he's done it. Those are raising chips, Randy. 5x check raise thereabouts from Sam Grafton. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, these two, both top 10 in chips, really attacking this delayed C bet of Adrian Mateos. Yeah, Mateos' check on the flop was trying to avoid making it a big pot. Does get called. Grafton now. 6.10 in the middle. Hearts bricking. See if he tries to follow through on this brick river. If there's ever a time to fire it again, this may be the opportunity. Yeah, so Grafton, of course, was representing a 10 on that turn. Raise. He'd need to go quite big. He's going to expect Mateos to have King X here a lot, right? right? Like Ace King, King Queen, King Jack. I don't think he thinks that Mateos is sitting on a ten. A ten that's the flop a lot with deep stacks. Wow, he's he's reaching for chips here. Grafton also knows he can fold out, say Ace X of Hearts. Right, it's a sizable. Double barrel, Randy, 450,000. And this is one of the biggest pots of the tournament already. Action on Mateos. Yeah, Grafton is selling the story that he's got 10x. It's very credible right now. Let's see from Mateos with two aces. Two doesn't, aces, no heart. Doesn't block the hearts. Right. It's good to pick off with. Doesn't block... The Queen Jacks, the Jack Nines, the gut shots. 
Lays oh it down to aces. Randy. Grafton. Aces quickly into the mark. And Sam Grafton, the 200k Coin River Invitational champion, gets one over on Adrian Mateos and is now moved up to third in chips. 1.8 million. Momentum for Sam Grafton. Yeah, that, that check on the flop of two aces now backfired as he tried to contain the pot. Just couldn't avoid the big pot. Wow. Sick. Well executed turn check raise. Yeah, that was a beautiful turn check raise. But the follow through, the, the follow most important through. part, right? Because a lot of guys that are on level one, they're like, all right, I'll just call this check raise. Just, just tag me next time, Randy. <laughs> the level one thinkers, just call them out. Just say Henry. Okay. Ben Heath, looking to get busy with a couple of jacks from under the gun. That part, Sam Grafton up to second in chips. A couple of times we've seen aces anyway. like hit the mark. Post-mortem. Feel it, you know, like a little bit of wandering for a while, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Squiddy doesn't realize just how much he got away with there, putting Mateus on a hand like ace, jack, ace, queen. Besides, I know if Adrian's annoyed, he just takes it out on Ben anyway. Yeah, just three bets. Oh. Every, it's like he can't do anything to me. He's like pissed <laughs> off with me. He'll just be like, oh, I'm going to fuck Ben up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to raise him on this flop, steal his blind. It's, it's, I don't get punished if you're like annoyed, you know? <laughs> How about it, Randy? Tails proving that these super high rollers are human. And that they too sometimes come to the wrong conclusion in big spots. We've all been that. Very easy to kick oneself on the back end of a bad fold, but we sure can expect to see Mateos just shake that one off once he finds out, of course. We are on an hour of delay. I mean, it takes heart to make that play with Queen Jack. Check and flop. Just check turn. 5x check raise. Beautiful. 75% pot river. It was just... I think he was very well aware that he was targeting these king, queen, ace, king, and expecting them to fold, knowing how credible his hand looked. Regardless, onto this pot, Adrian Mateos going to take it on Ben Heath, as Grafton alluded to. Calls currently has the best hand, blanks out. Follows through. Clubs do complete on the river. Has to be somewhat concerned. Yes, yeah. can have some suited broadways, ace highs that check back flop. Cool turn. 65. Reaching for just a little bit of chips. 65k. This bet is designed to attack ace 10. Right. Ace jack. That isn't a flush. I, some ace kings that keep him honest for one street. Yeah, it's basically all of the ace x type hands, and I guess 
queen 10, king 10, that check back the flop, reasonable. I don't think this is going to get Mateos to fold 7s and 9s. Well, it does seem a little milky. The price is just too good. Let's see, though. Yeah, there we go. Wow, Adri getting put through the ringer. Back to back hands this time. Finds the call. As predicted. It's a little bit back. Grafton with the needle. I knew it was coming. Did it work or anything? That one? Oh, you don't know why they fall, but well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's how good Adrian runs. <laughs> the spots you want to know his hand, you don't get to see. <laughs> We did see it though. We did. They yeah. think they don't know, but we know. Oh. King 10 out. Bryn Kenny, ace king. Oh, Piazza oh. Slav. Oh. Calls oh. into hijack. Ace king. Is uh, this, no reason to run. This is a pretty big trap out. here. You know what they say, Randy, uh, as well. They say that the first one's never a trap. For sure. Yashislav clearly in, boss. didn't get the memo. He is trapping and waiting to pounce. The ace king. Still with the best of it, post flop. King of clubs in hand, but does remain unpaired. Yeah, the limp pre flop. Definitely pretty important here. His opponent's range is in a small blind, big blind is extra wide. Should be over soon. One big blind tickle from VBB, VBB, VBV. And maybe thinking of something, no, ace oh. five into oh. the mark. Vecherslav picking up a small one. Deal a change as level 14 comes close to a close. I hope there's no closing going on over on the Triton Poker Plus app. I know a lot of you guys have been watching through the app as well as sweating the updates from the other tables, the other tournaments that haven't necessarily been streamed at 50k turbo event number 10 currently seven runners in that one if you guys do want to sweat along linus love kita badziakowski david peters ike haxton all over in that one chris brewers ponikovs just to name a few of the runners and also of course you can add four tables from the field a million of this main Let's event. 9.75. Talal Shikurchi leading the final 38. Grafton asking Bryn Kenny for a chip count. He's got King Queen against Undergun. Kind of flat here. Going to let KT come along with 9 7 of clubs, closing the action. Suited and connected, very playable. Let's go. KT, the jungle man assassin. <laughs> it's on video. 
is indeed. You got proof. Let's see, flops a nine high flush draw. Bring Kenny, the under the gun opener. Coming up short on the ace jack five. Grafton's got a little piece too, right? Broadway draw. King of clubs. Working with those two clubs on the flop. Bring Kenny going to check. Grafton with king queen. Thinking about taking a stab here. Let's block some like Broadway hands of king queen. So maybe he thinks he can take this down on the flop. A small stab from Sam. Yeah, Sam's just trying to fold out those middling cards, pocket pairs under the jack. KT, nine high flush draw. We'll oh. come in for continue with the call. Players remain unimproved on the four of hearts turn. KT taking some time. Comes in with a check. Now Grafton's got still got that gutty. May, maybe he bets again, trying to fold out Jack X. Just depends on how. Heavily he waits, KT having Ace-X or Jack-X. Check. Check. Knuckles behind, we're going to see a free river. It's the King of Hearts. Grafton now improving against the Jack-X and 5-X of KT's big blind defending range. Bring Kenny, by the way. Back door to flush. Yeah, I guess KT is trying to think about how often he's up against an Ace X. Ace X, he doesn't think would fold, but he does think Broadway's would. So he's going to come in swinging 175k. It's a sizable bet here, and it's pretty tough for Grafton to call here of just a pair of kings. Does block the back door flushes, right? Queen of Hearts, important. Block some straights that would continue in this manner, like Queen 10. Yeah, that Queen of Hearts, by the way. Key card. The sizing is important too, as he might not think that KT would value bet in a naked ace for this sizing. Say ace 10, ace 9, maybe they go smaller. So, this size, in your opinion, polarized to like two pair plus, or? Yeah, a bit more, I would suppose. Oh wow, so we're saying straights plus. A two pair would what be ace jack that didn't raise the flop, ace five, ace four. King Jack. King Jack might not go for this sizing. Oh, let's see if Grafton can figure it out. The blockers are important. King of Clubs is not good in a sense he does block well I mean King X would have a pair, never mind. Hmm. See him trying to break this one down. Looks like. Which one is it? He can't decide. It's a fold. KT really having to earn that one. It's a 1.4 million chips now. Great stint for him. Yeah. I make it. What he did. Look at our next feature table. Milkovich, David Yan, Limitless, Eric Seidel. I spy Tan Schwen there. Haven't seen him in a while. Had to try and stop. It's going to be good to see him on a featured table. I know the fans have always been asking me, where is he at? 
Where has he been at? Three, just chilling. Just chilling. Pretty much. Don't worry. You'll get to see him splash around. And what they just ask you about updates of any they're Asian like, poker player. Where <laughs> they do, but they're like, where's Tan Shuen? I haven't seen him. They just think that you automatically are all just, you know, in a in a group chat also together. <laughs> for the fans. Not gonna be this for the fans. Not this time. Last time I bluffed you with free four air. <laughs> yeah, you did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish that had come into my head actually. It sounds like he loves the buff view. So a bit of a post-mortem there between KT and Sam Grafton. Grafton getting busy. That Queen Jack of Clubs may be going to be one of the biggest talking points of this main event here. 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam main record-breaking. 135 runners. Squiddy closing this feature table with the chip lead. Vyacheslav going to look to get busy as we back into the break room. Welcome back. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilmain. Randy, Talal Shikurchi currently leading the final 35. And we're down to 35 at a point in the tournament that you maybe think we still have 45 players or so. They've been dropping like flies out there. Yeah, you know, the players are obviously fighting and trying to put themselves in a position to get that top prize of, what, 3.2 milli. Um yeah, Talal's one too known to splash around, is willing to get in there and, you know, disrespect the ICM a little bit, I suppose. Um, but for now, you know, it, it is some grinding. Last level, that last stint there was a lot of post-flop play. It was right. a lot of fun to see. And, you know, some big folds was had, mainly the pocket aces of Adrian Mateos against Sam Grafton. Well, I'm sure we'll Queen get a Jack. chance to speak about that hand time and time again. As we throw it to a quick break, when we return, Ali Najad will be stepping in. Randy, and we're going to be closing in on the money bubble here in the 100k main. Don't go too far. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker.
his hand he can pop control more Davies makes the call after taking the passive line post flop and now both players pick up the gutter but Fedor picks up the lead with a pair of queens yeah, Seth is going to likely continue his path of checking. Now, Fedor here most likely had a lot of intention of multi-barreling turns of Queen Jack after seeing weakness on the King High board. Having hit his hand, might be trying to get the showdown for cheap. One ten out there. He's reaching for chips yeah. here. Okay. It's a smallish bet coming in, right? Thirty-eight thousand this time. He must feel that Seth Davies would bet King X or check raise the flop a decent amount. Doesn't think he's up against Ace Queen, especially holding Queen Jack, you block Ace Queen, which would be a better kicker. So it seems like he's trying to get value out of ten nine. 9-8, jack-9, these types of hands that would check call to flop. Probably thinks that jack-10 would see bet as well, so he's not too worried about that. Seth getting a good price on his hand. Knows that Fedor is capable of multiple barrels and makes the call. A lot in there. Another 76k to be exact. As a very dry deuce of hearts. Comes off. Yeah, very high level poker from these two. Fedor Nine. gets two streets of value with mid pair. Jack kicker. He's crushing it right now. Dialed in. What do you want? Which is deceptive. You grab a spoonful. Down it goes, and then you realize no, it's Seth. not sugary at all. Well, I'm going to win. Then you quietly oh, and politely three, find the three. nearest waste bin. Our brother. Look around, make sure no one's staring. Our brother's too. And Seth. then spit it out. You're because, ew. Well, yeah, so you don't like any of the desserts here. You don't like any of the fruits here. No, the fruits are okay. You didn't like... You don't you like dragon fruit. Dragon fruit's hoodie trash. Kind of, hoodie on today. Everyone knows it's just... You know what it's like? It's like a beautiful Price. person with no personality. <laughs> <laughs> really, the prettiest fruit you'll ever look at, but tasteless. Ah. Burns. Tasting ace queen from the button. <laughs> I bet it's the guy who's. I'm teasing. You guys are both. You guys are both crushers. <laughs> <laughs> Seven four defense and turns into a gut shot for Fedor. It's the handsome one who's good at poker. What? It's the handsome one who's good at poker. That's right. It's 
So we're playing <coughs> roughly 45 big blinds effective to start this hand. Kale burns. Ace, queen, two overs. Not really the ideal flop for him. Take one off. Reasonable card mm. for a Kale. Ace, queen, high looking a little bit better. Fedor now. How does he want to respond here? He sees the check back on the flop, which looks pretty weak. A lot of ace highs, king highs would be in that range. Let's see if he wants to rep yeah, he an eight, a jack. Nice straight draw, got back up. Range advantage here? He's having a good build. Range advantage for sure. Good here. He's doing great, yeah. He's the type of board that hits the big line a bit, but he's going to check. Not necessarily to give up. There was a little pause before Fedor checked. Less of a pause on Burns, who knuckles back the ace queen. Brick River. With two checks on the flop and turn from Kale, his hand really looks like ace high. I wonder if Fedor wants to try and attack that range, which is would be quite weak. Fedor probably expects a jack or eight to bet the turn. He would need to put in a, a little meaty bet, though. You don't want those crying calls from those ace high type hands, and chips are coming in, and meaty it is. Man, this is immediately made awkward. Overbet of 80k from Fedor. Didn't he like double up in the first hand of the tournament? Yeah. And then he's like ends up playing somehow still. As played, this really is just a guessing game for Kale as to whether or not Fedor ever had any of this. Just given the sizing. Kale knows that his hand looks like ace high, and he's wondering why Fedor is going for an overbet now. Why didn't Fedor bet with 8x on the turn? Why did he go for another trap? That's the question that's playing in his head. I don't think he thinks Fedor is betting this way with a jack. Ninety unique players. Well, I guess not necessarily. Yeah. Burns can make this call to be absolutely sick. Nice. Oh, the Aussie digs in against the German and he's queen. Picking up. What a read. What a navigation there. 226k pot. Listen, uh, Kale knows that Fedor just has value. King King is strong, bro. Wow. Very strong. GG's in the chat I mean, for King Mario. Beat, you know, 9 10 off on, uh, on the video. Mm. Ace 4 doesn't have a very good chance for right. King 7. <laughs> Here we are with continuing coverage of event number nine, the main 100K long deck festival. Turning toward the short deck side of things, but not quite yet, as there is still business to attend to. Ali Nijad alongside uh, yeah, Henry Kilbane. <laughs> I almost did it again. Well, no, uh, you did it. Well ple played. Well pleased played. to have you with us. We are assembling a new feature table as we speak, though. That last frame of play, uh, Henry, you bring me up to speed on what you deem to be the bluff of the tournament, of course, with Sam Grafton against Adrian Mateos. Yeah, fascinating hand from Squiddy, reigning champion, of course. So a bit of confidence coming into this Triton series, but a delayed C-bet from Adrian Mateos on a 10-10 deuce rainbow board. Uh, King of Hearts rolling off on the turn, Grafton opting to check his queen jack of clubs, and then coming with a 5x check raise once Mateos did fire out a C-bet. Brick on the river, strong follow through from Squiddy and a pretty swift fold from Mateo. So that one's certainly going to make the highlight reel, if you will, and maybe a tournament defining hand as yeah, well, no. given that, that Grafton is now up in second, I, I believe, second or third. Currently looking at him in fourth, but not by a lot, as right. uh, we do see top four stacks for Shakurchi, Greenwood, Seidel, and Grafton being separated by 
really 75k so it's uh not as though squiddy can't be considered one of the chip leaders and that honor being shared by three others uh it would explain by the way why it is that producer james and i who are out just outside the tournament area players do have a, a little dining area that that they're able to take seats at and squiddy was on his way out and had a lot of swag on him. And, uh, you know, we kind of asked him, uh, what do you got in chips? And he was like, eh, you know, 1.7 million, something like that. So that feeling one. it, you know what I mean? And there's something to be said for that. Plays like that oftentimes I think do come on the back of confidence. It kind of is a snowball of effect uh, a little bit. And we'll Has see. Be feeling good. Yeah, if we're going to have any more of that on our hands as we're just about ready to send you to our new feature table. And you'll get a look at the likes of China's... Tan Xuan, but off of 10 big blinds, what sort of look will that be? With the blinds at 10 and 25,000, you get a look at the boss stack of Seidel, chief among these seven. Just 37 remain with 20 paid as we hunt down a main event champ from here in Hoi An. Unbelievable how decades later Seidel is still a force to be reckoned with. The difference in play styles, decade in, decade out. He's here for <coughs> the biggest 100k of the year. And I mean, just, you, you just can't overstate you can't. the achievement. Uh, the game was so different when he first took it up. And he has been one of really the few who date all the way back to that era who have managed to continue to cobble results together. As we see Tanchuan wasting no time getting his chips into the middle with the ace jack, and that'll be an orbit's worth of biscuits picked up. How much you have? It also feels like he gets slapped on quite a bit as well. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> it, everybody's guilty of looking at a guy like Seidel. A little bit of the quietness, but also just ageism a touch. <laughs> you know, you look over there and you're like, come on, this guy, game's passed him by maybe. You know, yeah. it's a natural thing. It's no, not as though it's lost upon these folks that it is Seidel, the cyborg. Man has notched so many results over the course of his career. But I, I do think that some of the younger guys just have this presumptive sense that the elder statesman can't possibly be as well-versed in the game today. Agreed? Similar confidence from these young bucks in the booth as well. You know, when the you old say balls. These, <laughs> I don't count myself among said bucks who each mating season I do have to impale with my antlers. Right. No? Welcome back to the stream, <laughs> Marley. <laughs> it's Jack for Seidel as he seeks to impale the field. 50K, 55K. There we go. 1.9 okay. million. Chip leader. Let's go. Munching on something. Have we had a final tally on the number of red Triton tracksuits that attended the main? Was it five? <laughs> Not sure, but Smilkovic fits the bill. Teddy, Teddy KGB-esque look on him. It's more than I can say, by the way, for David Yan, who doesn't appear to fit the hoodie get a look at it momentarily here he looks yeah, that, like that. you know marshmallows are on the go around the campfire it's been a day of hiking in you know, some national park sun's gone down you know tomorrow we're back to bouldering again in yosemite that's that's the look i dig it i see it yeah 50k from yen part of the Kiwi delegation that includes Sosia Jang already has a result in the 75k where he finished 10th just on the final table bubble. Here he is, a bit adrift on the Jack 10 7 board after Seidel defended with 4 5 offsuit. Another OG, by the way, the live arena. Go on. Oh, Jan's just been around a while, been around the block. 40k C bet suggests he's been in these 
waters before. Speaking of waters, Ali, are you hydrated today? Well, I'm not sure what the recommended daily amount of hydration one is supposed to have, but... I can tell you if you want. What is it then? 220 mils every hour for the first 10 hours of being awake. I don't know what that is in ounces. Do apologize. 2,200 liters? Milliliters. Or millili so 220 per hour, 10 hours, 2,200 milliliters. That's 2.2 liters of water over the course of 10 hours? First 10 hours of being awake, yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, Henry. You slacking? Over the course of the first 10 days, <laughs> I'm not certain that I've had 2.2 liters of water. Actual water. Illuminati confirmed. No. Same. <laughs> From a desert dwelling migratory peoples. We've learned to conserve. Johannes Strava with the Ace Jack off suit. Putting a 8-9 suited into the muck. Courtesy of that up front credit. Milkovic, he's five, <coughs> bit smothered here in the big. Nevertheless, an understandable defense. And both players hit a piece. Top pair against bottom pair. Daniel checks it over. Two Triton newcomers. Is that Kudanov saying Suka at the table? 95. What does that mean? Slip that one out. Grim spot for Smilkovic. Just going to let it go. Discipline fold. Sizable seabed from Strava. First timer out here in Vietnam. Did make the final table. No, he didn't. I do apologize. Came 17th in the 50k from Big Cash. 100,800. <laughs> Sure, Seidel appreciates having his ear canal probed while they're at the feature. Came in for the real thing there that time. Ducklings on the button for Seidel. Getting after the boys. Uncontested pickup for him there. Earlier, by the way, at the onset of our broadcast, there was some real commotion centering around the free roll that Jason Kuhn had been giving the dealers where a dealer correctly guessed the two exact cards that she dealt Jason. It was the nine and five of clubs, 25K, headed her way during the break. I was speculating as to whether or not she would be dividing the spoils <laughs> of this bet with her fellow dealers. And? Some seem to think that it was a given self-evident. I, of course, <coughs> was rooting for her to give them very little, mm. if anything, mm. and also submit her resignation. <laughs> I, you know, rare occasion that I'm going to agree with you on this one. I do think she should, should keep it. 
And he's been offering it to like everyone, right? So if she's the one that guessed it, give a little bit back, you know. Keep 20k for yourself. Buy everyone else a drink. I was kidding. No, you weren't. I really was. No, you really weren't. I, I was just going for comedy. Henry, you, on the other hand, have shown us what kind of person you are. Keep it. 20k. Well, Malinowski rates to be keeping 225k in chips with top two here against an ace jack. Flatting. Giving Yan a little rope. Turn card. Let's give David Broadway Gutty. Malinowski checking again. Very wet developing texture here. It's David with a very relevant ace of clubs in hand as well. Wow, he's reaching for chips. Feels like a turn card. You were anticipating a check back there? Yeah, 315 in the middle. Let's find out a bet of 160,000. Sizable. Thought... Sorry, go on. I was going to say sizable turn barrel. I was going to say perhaps you thought we were dealing with a mere mortal. David Yen. Yeah. Firing. Into Limitless. Oh, Who jams, and that is not what David wanted to see. I'm going to ask for a count. 275,000. 510,000 out there. Maybe you're going to regret <coughs> barreling this turn. Not getting to realize, or maybe just me being a bit results oriented. See David reflecting upon that spot there as his ace jack finds its way to the muck and Malinowski oh, calls gee. in a nice one. <laughs> Do you suppose that's a clip on tie? <clears throat> Something a little suspect about it. Get a good close up because now now I'm kind of second guessing it. Clip on would make sense in this weather. Well, I think clip on generally when one is determining the financial fates of others is from an asphyxiation standpoint. Right. Probably the safer play. I can see where you're coming from with that one, Ali. Mixed games you play, right? Yeah, yeah, with true wild animals. Right. Kind of imagine your regular game being somewhat similar to an office out of the Wolf of Wall Street movies. Or movie, rather. Several <clears throat> characters out of that film have certainly made their way around the felt. I got it all. What's the worst you've seen that you can share on Earth? That I've personally seen? Far from aces. That's the best I've seen. 50k open. Mm. There's a guy who plays in my game that used to deal that. that used to deal? Yeah. In the pit. And, uh. Did mention that on more than one occasion, shockingly enough, a player has relieved themselves on him, which I thought was. 
Maybe emblematic of too much forgiveness. <laughs> As we see top set for Strava, an unforgiving development for 7-4. Should be an easy exit for David Yen. Uh, don't deflect. Not at all. The top set. No. Relieved themselves onto mm -hmm. him dealing yeah. in the pits. Yeah. Urination. If you seek further clarity, Henry. I appreciate <coughs> thoroughness of your explanation on that one. Shout out Andrew, by the way, if you're streaming. A whole different meaning to <laughs> Now are you the is the confusion around. on your face centering around logistical curiosity? Well, I'm just trying, you know, yes, logistically thinking, you know, security guards at a lot of these places the time it would take to lose a hand of Baccarat and then... You know, I'm just trying to also put myself in that mindset, that headspace to which I would be on the losing end of, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 hands of Baccarat. I don't know. Maybe 20 hours. Listen. Maybe that's what's needed. You really only have to be on the losing end of one hand of Baccarat if it's the one. But I don't understand... Why it's happened to him multiple times? It's almost like it's like he's kind of like it. it's his fault. Feels like oh. it's his fault. He might be a bad dealer. Well, there's that. You never know. It's 2023. You know, open-minded. Could just be a situation in which the nearest restroom to that particular gaming area is a bit of a walk. Sure. Suspect that's not it. I think these say. were targeted attacks. I doubt this happened at, like, the win. <laughs> this off-strip sort of property, as we see. Strava with the ace-jack. I'd be willing to bet we're not going to see anything like that on the Triton Super High Roller Series. I think... Uh That'd be very quickly met with a grab of the neck, thrown out the building type of situation. Fair. Poker being played. Stories being told. Dragon saying, don't play the whole shoe, bro. You can get the early reshuffle on the shoe if you just ask. See the Triton free roll over on GG Poker. Kicking off in 10 <laughs> minutes time. Password for that one. Poker Vietnam. No late, re no late reg as always. Get involved and best of luck from us here in the booth. Down to the final 34, by the way. Michael Watson leads the field. A couple of deep runs at the start of the series, <coughs> followed by five bricks. <clears throat> Those are painful. Those oh. bricks are heavy on the bankroll. Not oh. cheap. Jacks, raise and take it. <laughs> Down back to, to 34 players, Henry. I'm sorry. Yeah, dropping like flies. Really are. Didn't well, expect to be at this stage of the tournament so far. Most recent casualties? Most recent casualties. Anson out in 35th. Artur Martirosian. This is Wad Pack and I, one of the most entertaining players we've had in recent memory. Agreed. Daryl Go, Sebastian Gale. Obviously, we saw the departure of Orpen just before the break. Gale, if I'm not yeah, mistaken, was oh, at the top of the leaderboard for some time really? during day one. 
obviously not quite as prosperous here in day two as Malinowski goes to work. 8-9 suited up against a 7 suited. Seidel in position, but well behind. Top pair for Wichter. Limitless opening from under the gun. A hand that wants some protection as well as value. Doesn't want to give a free card to suited broadways, ace <coughs> See someone in the background doing no work, as always. I'm going to go with Lara. Oh, right, that was Lara. <laughs> we tease. Half day, you know how it is. Seidel. Hmm. A7 of spades, wants to see a turn card. Yeah. Equity available with the right card, and that rates to be among the most right cards as a wheel and seven high straight draw double gutty appears and a little nut flush draw for dessert. How do you find that one in the deck? That's how you stay on top of the game for three decades. Probably. You just ping turns like that. Well, pot isn't his just yet. Malinowski is going to defer. It's an interesting spot for Seidel. Should never really face a check raise from the under the gun. Opening range on this turn card. Seidel can still have all of the sets, all of the straights. Nice to just use this and fold out some ace highs that stabbed flop, some broadways that stabbed flop. Malinowski being asked for all of his chips here, 250 on the turn, 790 behind, but the sizing kind of alluding to a river jam, given that it would set up a very natural river SPR of around 0.6. Obviously, we do reserve the right to change our minds depending on variables. What a gangster. You said there was something that we didn't expect, and have we not yet come to expect the unexpected out of Limitless? Well, certainly from a player of his caliber, finding the small spots inside hell, flicking in the core with 41% equity. And suddenly, much at stake as we spin this wheel of destiny, courtesy of Eric Seidel's call. Chip lead pot. Ten of hearts on the river. One of the safe ones for Malinowski. He is going to double through Seidel. That is a big chunk. Taking out a cyborg. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Don't think Emilus expected to have the best of it against a pretty swift call on the turn. Never mind expecting to have the best of it. How about expecting to have the chip lead, as you alluded to, Henry? Seidel falling well out of that designation. <clears throat> but Malinowski vaults to the top of the leaderboard with 33 left here in the main. Seventy-four big blinds for Limitless. Saw him run deep in the main event back in Cyprus was chip leader with three left. Recall a huge pot played against the eventual champion, Panat Punsari. Tens against Ace King. Both getting in like 55-ish bigs or so pre. 
Yeah, it's gold anyways. Oh, okay, okay, whatever. Was it black? <laughs> yeah, it was. Four caches on Limitless's Triton track record. Largest coming in that main event. Third for 1.2 million. <clears throat> Ten Juan Henry, a real nose for the big games, whether it's the main or cash games. No, he's been burning the candle at both ends. Outside of the tourney area competition. No limit hold'em, his main game, or also diving into the four card streets? I think there was a little of both on hand. Trying to remain as ambiguous as possible, by the way, with regard to those goings on. I have no idea what you're talking about. There it is, toe the line. Seidel doesn't appear particularly phased, by the way, by that crushing blow that he was dealt from Malinowski. What a line by Richter, by the way. <coughs> Check jam. Seidel, 21st in chips now, off of the lead prior to that confrontation. Sounds, uh, hey. Practice makes perfect, Henry. Bit bored. David Yan giving a little excitement to us with this 3-bet 4x. Queen 10 out of the big. Let's see Limitless going nowhere. Bottom v big blind. Pretty deep to start the hand. Mm -hmm. 40 bigs, effective. As the field whittles away, those short stacks being absorbed elsewhere, the affair is going to become a deeper and deeper one. Yeah, Cecilia Jiang falling victim to the short stack. Her final chips in the middle. Pocket deuces against Petrangelo's ace jack. That would be quite the story, eh? 0 for 23. So then come to Vietnam and take down the main Petrangelo. That's a very healthy 52 bigs as Malinowski gives up against the Seabet. Well timed aggression from Yan. Big pot poker. Yan looks particularly aerodynamic out there in this. Schwann's all in, blind, by the way. Get up. Chips on the button. He's definitely not all in blind. I'm okay. Is he? I mean, he put all of his chips on the button. Does that... <clears throat> Is he obligated then? About to find out. Well, he's got all of his chips on top of his time banks. They were all on top of the button. Oh. Posturing. Perhaps. Some signs of frustration. Suggesting maybe leave it to me. Go on, boys. Fold. I'll get it in. Doesn't matter. Any two. Yeah, it looks like it's been a really grindy day. <clears throat> 
full tan. Well, listen, we've seen people have some epic spin-ups off of short stacks. It does take some patience, though. <coughs> yes. Kudinov defends the big with two fives in front of King Jack on a nine-high rainbow flop. Yeah, just looking now. Pride Nation. Sorry, Ali. No, 35K, the follow-through figure here from Seidel, called promptly by Victor as we head to the turn, which binks Eric for the lead. Two overs, backdoor clubs, materializing into 95% equity on the turn. Kudinov, the shorter end. A size down. Really, some wine out of water on that turn. 42% bet. Setting up a natural river jam. I'm going to keep him honest for at least one more street. <clears throat> and that street does not provide him any improvement. And we'll see how much Cyborg. Wants to carve out of Kudinov's 280 on this river. Yeah, all the obvious double barrel bluffs bricking on that eight of diamonds. River, Kudinov. Playing a bit of a guessing game. He is up against the under the gun opening range of Seidel. It's like a non all in sizing from Eric. How annoying is that? Really is. I mean, 160 <clears throat> into 385. It's just trying to get a cheap bluff fruit. Eight of diamonds really shouldn't change much. Trying to get a cheap bluff through is what it feels like to, yes, to Victor. certainly what it can feel like. Couldn't have in a really grim spot. Because hands like Queen Jack, Queen 10, Jack 10. Some Ace 5, Ace Deuce. And it also feels like the King of Spades is a turn card that you'd expect Seidel mm. to consider continue selling a story on. <clears throat> so if we, remo we remove a good bit of 9x, <coughs> 8x, any sort of 3 or 4x from Seidel's range. Yeah, it's just a very natural river card to continue telling the story on. All of those broadways that I mentioned, all of those ace highs that want to lean into the big blind defending range, the perceived weakness of the big blind defending range. Wouldn't fault Kudinov for flicking in the call here, but does find the fold after some deliberation. One of the best in the world, by the way, is Kudinov. The online arena. Well, in doing so, does preserve a decent amount of his stack, which had he clicked call, would have been down to just 100. 20k. Five bigs with a small blind upon him. Just finding, just found a video over on our YouTube involving Fedor Holtz and Viktor Kudinov. Do check it out. As mentioned before, a lot of memorable hands from previous festivals uploaded, both inside and outside of our live stops as we dive back into this potential. Oh, this, yeah, this, this is Strava? weird because Smilkovich with the ace queen appears to have limped under the gun. 
not the one that I would expect him to be trapping with, and not entirely clear why he elected to go this route with it. And no, then Smilkovich is open. That's 50k in front of him. Just a small is, misclick. Okay, all right. You know, sometimes we've seen this where player thinks that they're in the big blind and then puts what would have been a big blind out there and really ends up limping inadvertently. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have been the first time that happened, but then for Strava to He's not get even, involved yeah. would have been absurd. So, all right. <laughs> we figured it out. We got there. 710 in the middle. Kudinov going to need a lot of help to get out of dodge in this one. Top two, and things are grim. Backdoor Broadway and Hearts need to show themselves. And the seven of Hearts does just that suddenly from no outs. Nine outs to none. Victor Kudinov's run here in the main event coming to a close. Bluff me. The Versace index. Pretty bad. It's been lowered <laughs> here in the <laughs> yeah. I bluffed you a call. <laughs> I bluffed you a call, B. Last time. GG's in the chat for one of Russia's finest. Yeah, like the good enough. I mean, he always does like this and then moves like this. So, like. Yeah, I just look at yeah, the I, I, I think you can. No, no, you yeah, like, right, no, 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 you can use this box actually. I think. Welcome, Roman okay. Rabbit. I, I, I'm not too sure. Can you use this box? 1.1 million. Oh, okay. yeah, that's. And. It appears to be the spoils of a visit to. Because if you move forward, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems yeah. always like a fall, though. Right? Downtown Hoi An. The markets. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. I will not need it, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll change as well. What do we call that hat? Uh, Other than cultural appropriation. I don't know, Ali. What do we call it? It's like a fishing hat. Could it possibly be the non la or leaf hat? Traditional headwear here in Vietnam. Thank you, Google. King eight six. Thank you, bottom pair for Smilkovich. Yan went to work from the button. Continues to do so with the action check to him post flop. Someone in the chat correctly pointing out it's Krabets disguised as Jungle Man. Yes, Jungle was the first to bring the conical headwear to this main. He's a bit of a trendsetter in the poker world. Smokovic check calling, picking up the gutter on the turn. Just air for Yan. Yeah, and a really bad turn card. Him to barrel. Pick up no equity. The check back brings a four-liner on the board. Not the kind of card that I think Daniel assumes is going to complicate things for him, but we'll see. If he reaches back for an Oreo and twists it <laughs> beside his ear, obviously we'll know. It's better than a pair of sixes. Doesn't do it though. Yeah, seems content to get this pair of sixes to show down. 
Just the suit. And the Anne. Gonna knuckle back. Put the ace high, just the six announced, and it's good. Just the six is good. Feels good to pick those ones up without having to face pressure. We really need to do a bit in those track suits. I don't know exactly what it would involve. Well, Maybe presumably just you and I going around New York City or something. Just <laughs> I don't even know. I, I actually with. would prefer to be a receptionist at a Russian banya with that tracksuit on. Yeah, yeah. It'd be there's some funny skits that we could make. That's for sure. <laughs> Limitless. Nothing funny about his stack. Leading the field with 1.6 million. Tan Ali needs to get busy sooner rather than later with just seven big blinds. Yeah, you know he's eager to stick those seven in there and hopefully pick up a double. 30 left, by the way. Vyacheslav, Rob Young, Viktor Kudinov. Obviously saw all busting out. Recently, his tan does get busy. Two nines. Very aggressively. Oh, slamming his chips open. in the middle. Smilkovic asking for a count here. Ten nine suited, not performing altogether well. One eighty five. Yes. Ten off the money. Gave it a moment. I was thinking there might be a little spike call there. Spike call? Yeah, spike call. You never spike called someone before? <coughs> yeah, but I don't know that there's a reason that he would take spite with Tan, would he? I mean, the shirt isn't particularly <laughs> offensive, nor is the hairstyle. The watch is lovely. <laughs> Hasn't thrown any barbs anyone's way. A lot of slamming going on from that seat. Other than that, sure. Are you taking issue with the slamming, Henry? Yeah. Yeah, in a in a hundred k main. Yeah, I'll be honest, I am. <laughs> Azali, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, not Tam this time around. Our director Martin's very alarmed, by the way, by that development. Uh, I do know that we do need to keep this set pristine so that we can return it when we're done with it. That's like 1.5. 50k <laughs> open from Smilkovic. Spicy payouts indeed. Ice cold spear. Three million two hundred and fifty thousand for the eventual champion. Top pair from Alanowski after defending against the min raise open from the button by Smilkovic. Thirty-five K, all standard fanfare. Yeah, two of the tournament chip leaders squaring off. And let's just gonna call with this top pair. Oh my. Ali I spy a certain Fedor Holtz atop of the chip counts out of nowhere. We'll get to what led to that momentarily. In the meantime, we still have the matter at hand, which involves a gut shot straight draw, courtesy of the nine on the turn for Smilkovic, who has the action check to him once more and is reaching for tokens. Yes. 160K into 200. Not an hors d'oeuvre. 80% pot. 
Victor not going anywhere just yet. Understandably so. Sizable pop brewing here. Smilkovic with equity. Doesn't convert on the seven of diamonds and Malinowski gets the 100% check mark, although a sizable barrel from Smilkovic would potentially get the king four to hit the muck, Ali. Four liner on board. I'm blocking spades, looking up at the clock. Feels like a mix. Ten of clubs are important card to hold. Not a lot of 10-6, 10 jack we would assign to Wichter's range though, right? In terms of blocking that sort of kit. Yeah, I mean, given that it's king 8-5, yeah. it would have to specifically be like 10-6, 10, 10 jack with a back door or front door flush draw. Blocking spades is nice. Just look at this. Three barrels from Daniel. And Malinowski. Thinking it over. 260 into five and a quarter. Half pot. Would rather call with King 4 than King 10, King Jack. May seem obvious. As to why four spades is obviously a bit of a bad card. Maybe not too relevant in this spot. King four into the mug. Well played, Daniel Smilkovic. <laughs> wow. That was just power poker right there. Daniel showing some heart. Now, we did mention Fedor Holes at the top of the leaderboard. Now, walk us through it, Henry. Well, I can say that... Henrik Hecklin won't be winning a second main event title here as he's bowed out just shy of the money. Ace King of Hearts in a three bet pot against the Ace Nine of Diamonds of Fedor. Came Queen Jack 10, two diamonds. Hecklin flopping the nut straight. Fedor flopping the nut flush draw turn, completing the flush. And the river bricked out where all the money went in. Fedor jammed into Hecklin and he couldn't find the fold with the nut straight. Might it be Fedor's time? As you got to look there at our, the official timekeeper of the Triton Super High Roller Series, Jacob and Co., and just some of what they have on offer. <clears throat> the display did make its way outside the tournament area today. That's how you know it's main event time. And it is Smilkovich time as he gets to work yet again. Ace four suited. Might be Fedor's time indeed, Ali. Nine million in Triton earnings. Two titles, eight caches. Fourth in that Coin River Invitational for 2.1. Get the Back sense the that it might be Tan Chuan's time with Jack Ten suited, big blind. <coughs> no. He's just going to call and see what happens. Diamonds smothered. Two clean cards, though. 65 in the middle and an open ender on the king queen five board. That's a fun flop. Yeah. Jams it in there as Daniel cranes his neck for another look and gets rid of the ace high. Kings. Hmm? Kings. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket kings, Ali. King King. <laughs> no rule against it. I would like to see Roman Hrabic take his hat and then put it on top of David Yan's hooded head. Just, you know. Do you ever have thoughts that you don't then oh, verbalize and put out into the world whilst in the commentary booth? 
few, if any. This reminds me of time in the booth when I was asked whether or not I had ideas. <coughs> I said, yeah, just not any good ones. Malinowski's got an idea with Ace Trey Count on please. the button, and Tan Swan activates fresh off of that last pot. Would be a great spot for him if Malinowski decided he wanted to gamble. 270 more with an ace tray. <coughs> Perhaps a bit rich? Yeah, it feels like it. 12 big blinds. I do apologize, 13. Tan <coughs> up to 420,000. Doubling up, uncontested. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Short stack king. <laughs> <laughs> Being crowned yes, the short yes. stack king. <laughs> hey, say, did he say? Hey, yes, king, king. <laughs> it's top of range. Wow. Picking up blinds. And then the blinds going up to 15,000, yeah. 30,000, back down to 14 bigs. It's like. You're just treading water. That's a bit of a backhand from the structure. Not a racy structure either, no. by the way, here in the main. First two levels are flat. <coughs> 50 minutes long. I don't think I've heard any complaints about the structure, although maybe I wouldn't be the one that the guys would complain to. I think that's fair. I think there's other things like maybe asking you to take a photo of them with someone else that they might approach you for. <laughs> Two tens here as Johannes gets approached by Seidel. Eights. I'm just drawing dead, aren't I? No. 25 I mean. years, looks like, as Victor not drawing dead, in fact, drawing very live with the ace queen of hearts. Potential squeeze spot, although pretty deep against Strava. He has to be yeah. somewhat concerned of some traps. Dissuasive realities in terms of looking to take high variant spots. A tamer iteration on display of Limitless as he flats the ace queen suited adeptly. Let's go. Three way affair, eight off the money. Dropping like flies out here in the 100k main. Could be a fun one. King nine six. Neither pocket pair forming into a set. Malinowski, no heart on board and no pair. Two checks in front of him. Checked around, Jack on the turn. Now two straight draws, one for Seidel, one for Malinowski. Does this one get checked through? Barring some improvement? These three-way spots, eight off the money, some ICM considerations coming into effect. Early position, the early position as well. Seidel against Strava. There's a lot going on here. Lenowski, two checks in front of him on both flop and turn. Kisu as well, the ace queen of hearts, blocking king queen, ace jack, queen jack. Suited, that is. Nice to be in position in a three way affair. Two rounds of checks in front of you. You have these sorts of opportunities. Look at Sidel just 
I'm keeping an eye on Malinowski. But in the end, with the presence of overcards, both pocket pairs find the muck. As Malinowski continues to ascend. There's guys that are more troublesome with a deep stack than others. And the likes of Malinowski rate to be among the ones you just don't want to see with the kind of stack that gives him buffer to get out there and do limitless things. Yeah, a lot of ammunition in that stack already. And he plays different formats, high stakes, cash, nosebleed stakes on GG, oftentimes 100, 150, 200 big blinds deep, tournament poker, eight off the money. I'll tell you what, I've actually been a part of a private game back in the States that Malinowski graced us <clears throat> with his presence in on a few occasions, on the administrative side, of course. And... Uh, it wasn't small, let's put it that way. But he felt right at home. As he looks here, ace eight, hijack. Opens to 60. Roman, a customer on the button. Form of a flat. Roman, not the type of customer you ever want. Number one on the GG poker rankings of 2022. Online phenom. Out <coughs> here with girlfriend, Monica, who qualified into the Triton series. It's like, sure, why not? I'll come and play some high stakes, seeing as you're going. Back to the action. The couple that plays poker together stays together, Henry? Can't say I could answer that one from experience. Is this one... Checks through, A of diamonds on the turn. They're now ahead of uh, ace jack, maybe some ace queen o's. As well as you know, he's already ahead of the broadways. Facing two checks from Limitless. Roman going to take a stab here. Understandable call out of Malinowski, as played. And a very arid deuce of diamonds on the end. We'll see whether or not Rabich is one and done. No. Not many hands that check twice and are comfortable. Or maybe some ace kings that keep you honest on the turn, some flush draws. Having the queen of spades feels bad. Yeah, it's got to check it back. <coughs> Block hands like queen jack, king jack. That's a stacked limitless that you're getting after on the river there, by the yeah. way, as one could certainly sympathize with more conservative choices in that spot for Rabbits. No back-to-back -back main champion this time round, Punat Punsri, fallen mm. victim recently, as has Stephen Chidwick and Danny Tang, some of the recently eliminated players. No. That we're six off the money. Marley, 175,000 min cash. Yeah, this is the point in the main event flight when the cabin attendants come around, ask you to get your seats in their full upright position. The tray tables locked away. We'll be landing shortly. 
Although, I don't know, shortly might be quite a protracted affair. It is a thick bubble in the main. It is thick. 175K for 20th. Zero for 21st. As Tan finds an open raise size off of a deeper stack. And he held a few pots back. Smilko with the defense to the flop we go. Two spades, two tens, and a jack. Nine of spades working hard for Tan, who's got the best of it. Tan, who's been on a bit of a spin. Got to check behind with his ace high. Relevant looking four rolls off. Did we try to get to showdown or maybe a little tickle? Have our answer. Former over the ladder as Tan knuckles back and now the ace high has held. Question is does Smilkovich? Try and get his king high to showdown. Feels like it might be a weak one looking for a showdown, doesn't it? A little bit. I know it's easy when we're 40. looking at the hands, but as oh, played. I was going to try and get a cheap bluff fruit. Quarter pot. We call it cheap, but in relation to can stack, 40K, that's a figure. Really thinking this one through, understandably so. It's getting laid a great price on a call. There's a lot more in effect here. As Ali was alluding to the stack preservation. Five off the money. That 40,000 could be the difference between 175k or bubble boy. King High. Credit. Tan Swan finding call with the ace nine there. Nifty pickup. Nice little sniff out. You think Smilko, the idea gets through on something more in the neighborhood of half two thirds pot. pot, half yeah. pot? Half pot, two thirds pot. What a bad orbit for the Thai fans out there. Oh no. KT coming up short in 26th. He had a very, he had a sizable stack. Hang on a minute. Adrian Mateos has knocked out KT and Stephen Chidwick. Backdoor spades materializing for Adrian against the Pocket Kings. Mm of KT. When did it get in? Got in on the river. Mm. Three bet pot. Mateos. Check called on the ace nine eight. Queen jack of spades, mm. gut shot and backdoor spades, turn brought the three of spades. The river completed the flush for Mateos. KT. Couldn't find the fold with two kings. And jammed into. Sometimes those are the decisions that haunt us out there. Yes. He becomes one of the casualties of war out there today. Yen, ace five suited. Picks up the Dutchman for the ride. Six 
Similar kit to the last board. Two spades, paired, coordinated. Stravar with the gutty, unders. Knuckling over to D. Yan. Forty K follow through effort, quarter pot. Interesting decision here for Strava. All of the options on the table. Check call, check raise, check fold. Feels like it's out of the equation, but never know. Those are raising chips. Two point seven X. Stacks are deep. Yeah, yeah. No back door. It'd be really difficult to get ace high to showdown. <laughs> Does just give up. Well timed aggression from the Dutchman. Really nowhere to go for that ace five. Final 25 led by none other than Fedor Holtz, second in chips. Adrian Mateus and Talal Shikurchi in third, rounding out the top three. Grafton, Squiddy, there in fourth. How about yeah. Seth Gottlieb in fifth? Keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, look at the chip counts here at the feature where Tanchuan's performed well, down to seven bigs, I believe, at one point in time. And in spite of the blinds having gone up, he has worked his way towards 20 bigs, far more playable depth than he was enjoying or not enjoying, as the case may be. Earlier on. Catch that little look at the dealer there by by 10. Just kind of letting him know the Jack 4, not exactly what I'm in the mood for. Do better. You one of these sickos that has any associations with the dealer being somehow superstitiously culpable for your fate? No, not at all. Yeah, me neither. To answer that one, are Never thrown a card. Not softly. <laughs> there have been some spicy marks on my resume. I'm not going to lie. It's all right. Spicy marks. I can live with it. On the resume. This guy. Yeah. Not spicy, but... Serviceable, deems Malinowski. King three off, defends against the ace-queen open, which turns into top pair. As Victor checks it over with dust. Chat earlier and yours truly yesterday upon witnessing Jungle Man Dan wearing similar headwear did point out the eerie similarities between that look, and the one donned by none other than Raiden of Mortal Kombat fame. Of course, I know your parents didn't buy you game consoles as a child, Henry, so you've no idea what we're talking about. I was just never really into Mortal Kombat, but striking familiarity of uh, the Avatar, in my opinion. The Avatar? The Avatar. Not the 17 foot <laughs> blue avatars of the Avatar, the last airbender, of course. Oh, yeah. I heard that movie sucked. Wasn't a movie, pal. The but last go on. airbender? It was made into a movie. I 
I know it was a, a show. I understand. But go on, Henry. The Avatar from The Last Airbender. <laughs> the Avatar from The Last Airbender. I mean, look. The hat belongs in many places. Belongs to many people. What? The hat belongs to many people? <laughs> I'm not even going to entertain this, this uh, wherever it is you're trying to go with this nonsense. Mm. Take a day off, Ali. I'm just seeking clarity yeah, on behalf I mean. of the other people that perhaps Look. are... <laughs> Confused? I do think coming from a friendly place, Henry, that on the next break, perhaps a psychiatric evaluation would uh, be listen, in order. I don't want to be the one to tell you that there was no Last Airbender movie, but you know, seeing as you continue digging. Well, Henry, given that I'm friends with someone who was in that movie, <laughs> I can tell you that there was in 2010. But uh, go on. Three seasons. Mm -hmm. The movie, though? Did you find that? Uh, the movie just got swept under the rug it real did, quick. It did, because it sucked. Meanwhile, Jack 10-9. Coordination here as Tan flops the bad end of an open-ender. At least top pair. 45. 45. For Daniel. Following through for 45. Lower end of the open endo, backdoor diamonds. Always dicey on the bubble. Kim Fu Huang asking us to fight in the booth. Ah, don't worry, that would be over just as quickly as, well, Daniel actually wanted this hand to be over with. It's a hard time breaking. 255 out there. Smokovic with at least a flop top pair. Go on, Ali. I'm just curious what you give him for that side card as the late position opener. <laughs> Whatever it is, he's fancying it to the tune of 60k here on the turn in spite of the arrival of that Ace of Hearts. Out of there is Swan. Two pair plus, you think? I'm going to go with at least the Jack of Clubs, top pair. Okay. Flop. Really bold predictions. Thanks, man. There. Daniel boldly sits atop the leaderboard here. Dan still lurking down on the short end. Blinds 15 and 30,000. That glimpse brought to you by Poker Stake. Somebody asked us to fight in the chat, Henry, and you were suggesting that that would be over quickly. I think you're right. Mostly due to the fact that I am sure to end the confrontation with a firearm. After all, I'm from the States. Oh, the rare self burn. Love to see it. Yeah, you know, we love our guns. Do you believe you've also spent some time in dojos? Wing Chun, your martial arts of choice, if I'm not mistaken. I'm glad you brought this up, Henry, because I actually do hold a brown belt in Wado Ryu Karate. True story. I, I believe it. I wouldn't ask me to practice any of it, given it's been... Roughly 30 years since the last time I had a gi on. Queen 10 suited. Cyborg. Plus one. 
off of 920. The fight would probably be like that scene out of Step Brothers. The double knockout. <laughs> Golf club and baseball bat in hand. Andy, producer James, trying to pull us apart. Right. Screaming. Oh, just put it down, Ali. Just let the kid live. They might just bet on the outcome, too. Uh, there is a that taste is, for gambling you know, in the room. You know high that. likelihood that that may also be the case. But I would like to think that if it ever did lead to golf clubs and baseball bats, that there would be some rationale b behind. Well, on the topic of rationale, not to cut you off, Henry, but Seidel choosing 70K as opposed to 60 I see Dare I'm, I ask why? Yeah, Just, I see okay. I'm coming into effect. Five off the money. Looking to de-incentivize flats from behind, not just the big blind. Chabitz, the customer, unimproved on this flop. Same story for Seidel, who is behind, but will see bet for 45K. He's saying Chabitz unimproved. Potential check raise spot here. That four of hearts, very key card. This board really going to mash the big blind defending range much more so than the plus one. Although Eric, all the over pairs available to him. But note the check raise incoming from Kravitz just knows the spot. Punishing the sea bet. Cool to see this sort of stuff here, which is a function so much more of just habits is situational awareness, the propensity of a stack such as Seidel's to out of this spot here, maybe get after it a bit, especially on that board texture. <coughs> so a little smack of the hand. Yeah, you don't get to number one on the GG earnings list of 2022 without a few moves up your sleeve. Doesn't look at all out of place, by the way. You know, maybe we make too much of this online versus live pro kind of delineation. But I think there are some real differences to be explored. Able to build a very solid, sound, technical foundation when you get... <clears throat> Live, ex uh, sorry, online experience under your belt. And so many more reps in a shorter span of time. And of course, live, you just are forced to kind of have that live read element to your game. You won for live reads, Ali? I, I very much am, yeah. Love it. Yeah, Obviously, hear it. you don't get a lot off of most of <clears throat> the guys out there, but not in this field. I think little subtle things from time to time are very much detected by those at the top of their live game. Smokovic's six is shared by Tan Juan, who flatted the button with a six suited. That allows David Yan's covered clubs to hop on in. Two and a quarter in the middle, three-way affair. King, queen, six. Gutter. And two bottom pairs. I'm surprised to see... Smilkovic, check this one over to Tan. Flatting range going to contain a lot of suited broad base. Round of checks as the board pairs. 
in the form of a queen. Might the boys think this one is up for grabs? Does feel like someone out there should be interacting with a king or a queen? Now let's see. Take a sniff at it. Awkward hand nine of clubs. I mean, does feel like a potential stab spot, but two tone. Smilkovich. He's sort of pot controlled. Some king X, queen X on the flop. One twenty. One twenty. Here he is. Smokovic. Obviously somewhat comforted in terms of the kicker. Now being the king, but not really thinking to himself. He's got to contend with another six in the field, but he does, and it's one whose kicker plays for Tan Juan, but does he want a piece of this still for 120K? Would have position heading to the river, but uncertain, of course, what David Yan's going to do behind him. Full texture, this flat just going to be playing a guessing game for your tournament life. Four off the money can fold. Still have 12 bigs. And tends to agree with your assessment. Yeah, power of having an arsenal of chips. And you just heard Luca Vivaldi come over, say that we're down to the final 24 players, Ali, due to the elimination of Gitis Azaninkas, who had a bit of a rough stint, was cruising along up north of one million, then lost tens against the ace king of Mike Watson, followed by a sizable pot against Nick Petrangelo, now eliminated by Michael Soyser's pocket sixes for his final 400k alley. Man, it really, it really happened quickly, this path to 24, right? but yet to be determined how quickly we get from 24 down to 20 as you get a look at the chip counts there. He misses the cent also. Ramon. So I do believe he lost. they're going to use the final three table redraw as dinner break. So just few moments away from that break, I believe we carry on. Yeah, and Juan decides he wants there we go. perhaps to not have to deal with being obligated to come <laughs> back in the back end of that dinner break as he jams in the ace three, hauls one in, and on their feet are just some of the final 24 combatants here in the main event. This one really shaping up to to be a potential classic here. Ali, but going back to what you were saying, 24 left, four of the money, 47 big blind average. Potential for a bit of a dry stretch, yeah, if we you will. Yeah, we got here quite quickly. Really quickly. And as one might expect, given the nature of this money bubble, and of course the fact that we have such a huge prize on our hands. 3.25 million at the top. 2.2 for second. Two other seven-figure <laughs> scores down to fourth. Nobody wants to be on the outside of the glass looking in on this one. As we welcome you back inside the broadcast booth, Ali Najad and Henry Kilbane. And Henry, as the players go to break, we are going to a break as well. Any uh, Anybody you're looking to keep your eye on? I we mean, come back with three left. Any Easy pickings, to be honest with you. I mean, let's just open up the app and look at... The first 10 names, Fedor Holtz, Sadra Mateus, Nick Petrangelo, that 0 for 23 dry stretch, got the monkey off of his back. Now fourth in chips with 24 remaining. Talal Shikurchi, obviously. Seth that you mentioned. That's my guy. 
You Seth know? with 71 bigs is the one who is a candidate to have the ICM be damned moment, right? You talk about it, ah, <laughs> oh, we say it's uh, for, for poor, poor people, people or whatever, go. right? Seth, not here <laughs> to necessarily put on an ICM clinic, all right? That's not to say that there will be any implosions or anything, but he's just, he's going to put somebody to a decision of that Wrecking much bull. we can be certain. Bull in a china yeah. shop. You never yeah. know what to expect. Absolutely. And uh, what to expect will be 10 minutes of highlights, and then we will return back here with continuing coverage of the main event from the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam. Stay close. GG Poker, the biggest poker site. Best poker GG site. Poker. Why? The most Someone ambitious. This is a crazy. It's a doom. Oh, baby! Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi way, a whole population analysis, a GTO Bible, and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker, whether it's online or live poker.
players remain unimproved on the four of hearts turn. K2 taking some time. Comes in with a check. Now Grafton's got still got that gutty. May, maybe he bets again, trying to fold out Jack X. Just depends on how heavily he waits. K2 having Ace X or Jack X. Check. Check. Knuckles behind. We're going to see a free river. It's the King of Hearts. Crafter now improving against the Jack X and 5X of KT's big blind defending range. Bring Kenny, by the way. What a backdoor to flush. Yeah, I guess KT is trying to think about how often he's up against an Ace X. Ace X he doesn't think would fold, but he does think Broadway's would. So he's going to come in swinging 175k. It's a sizable bet here, and it's Pretty tough for Grafton to call here of just a pair of kings. Does block the backdoor flushes, right? Queen of hearts, important. Block some straights that would continue in this manner, like queen 10. Yeah, that queen of hearts, by the way. Key card. The sizing is important, too. As... He might not think that KT would value bet in a naked ace for this sizing. Say ace 10, ace 9, maybe they go smaller. So this size, in your opinion, polarized to like two pair plus or? Yeah, a bit more, I would suppose. Oh, wow. So we're saying straights plus. A two pair would what, be ace jack. I didn't raise the flop. Ace 5, ace 4. King jack. King jack might not go for this sizing. Oh, let's see if Grafton can figure it out. It, the blockers are important. King of clubs is not good in since he does block. Well, I mean, King X would have a pair. Never mind. Hmm. I can see him trying to break this one down. Looks like. Which one is it? He can't decide. It's a fold. KT really having to earn that one. 1.4 million chips now. Most recent casualties. Anson out in 35th. Artur Martirosian. Lisa Wad Pak and I, one of the most entertaining players we've had in recent memory. Agreed. Daryl Go, Sebastian Gale. Obviously, we saw the departure of Orpin just before the break. Gale, if I'm not mistaken, was at the top of the leaderboard for some time really? during day one. Obviously, not quite as prosperous here in day two as Malinowski goes to work. 8 9 suited up against a 7 suited. Seidel in position, but well behind. Top pair for Wichter. And welcome back to the Hoi An Resort and Golf from here in Hoi An, Vietnam. Continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series, where day two of the 100K main event rolls on. Alina Jad with Randy Liu now. And Randy, I don't know how much of that last frame you feasted your eyes on, but it happened super quickly to get us down to 24. As a three-table redraw is upon us, we will have a new featured table. But as we were all talking about with Henry during the break, we suspect that things are going to grind to a much slower pace at this point based on the average stacks, based on the fact that we are looking at the thickest bubble thus far, 175K going to 20th, four places away from that, and of course a whopping 3 million plus up top, four, count them, four seven-figure paydays at this final table, a record-breaking field of 135 entries. Randy, would you agree then that we're about to uh, be in for a bit of a grindy part of the program? 
hundred percent we're gonna be in for the grindy part, right? You know, the biggest bubble that you just mentioned and alluded to. Um, players are gonna play tight, really. It's gonna be let's wait it out. Middling stacks and short stacks are just gonna kinda hang in there, try to chip up when they can, but won't get too out of line. But, but not everybody's going to play tight, right? Right. I mean, this is kind of the spot where some people tend to activate and capitalize on what they perceive to be tightness on an excessive level out of the opposition, which, by the way, no shame in it. It could be one's professional duty to conduct themselves in that way during this phase of the program here on the bubble. But guys like a Seth Gottlieb might find themselves activating, currently sitting fifth in chips, right? I don't know whether or not you've feasted your eyes on the uh, rest of the chip counts, but, uh, you know, Fedor Holes up top also strikes me as a guy that's not looking to play tight in this spot, right? Yeah, we know the chip leaders are going to definitely fire away and try to win some chips, right? Um, but, you know, we look at the bottom, right? These okay. are the type of guys who are supposed to kind of hang around, try to wait each other out. But, you know, right, when I look at the bottom, the person in 23rd place, Tan Shuen, someone who is definitely going to just, I don't think you got it. I'm going to push it in. I'm willing to still play post swap with you. So, you know, those guys can maybe hopefully spin it up and cruise their way into the money and reach that top prize. But, you know, by no means is everyone going to play Super tight, but it's expected just because the bubble is quite large. Average stack right now, by the way, Randy, is 1.4 million, 47 bigs. I can't think of a bubble on which we had an average stack that deep thus far at this Triton Super High Roller Series. So, of course, with that reality, one would expect we are going to be in for a bit of a haul, anticipating that we're going to play down to the final table here tonight at least that is the idea and we are down to three tables we've got ourselves a new feature as you get a peek a very brief one albeit 15 and 30,000 at that feature table you'll see the faces which include Matthias Eibinger Smilkovic still there Red Aces a nice development on the backside of the break for our Eighth place stack. Pocket tens for Johannes Strava. Eleventh in chips. Yeah, let's see how he plays his two tens. Let's see he's coming in for a call. Mainly a byproduct of us being far away from the money. Just a flat. Somewhat inviting for well, the blinds to impossible. hop in there. All right, yes. So what did you do with my chips? Neither does. But all the comes. And some other ones a giant pot. Yeah, but if you win the giant pot and then you win the tournament, it's then you got a great pot. board for both hands. Uh, I actually I see Daniel Smerkovic checking yeah, two so aces. Yeah, basically always do it. If it then drops it off, you're like, why did you even win it? And, if it wins the tournament, it's like also tilted. Obviously, no. Strava prefers to have a check in front of him than a bet, I would imagine. Let's check back. Two tones on the turn. And you can see that Strava checked back the tens because, you know, they're very deep. They're far from the money. Still want to contain the pot a bit, even though I don't think he's that worried about his hand being worse. But you just want to try to minimize the number of streets that bets go in. and. We're checking though, Daniel Smerkovic is coming with a huge bet, 150k. Oh, 50k, excuse me. Yeah, not quite as huge as you <laughs> thought it was, but in fact, quite small. Yeah, um, a nice size bet for Johannes Strava here. Comfortable. We get to show it down for cheap. Safe. Doesn't yes. really change anything. Seven of Diamonds is dry. Yes, Strava's 50k call in position brought the pot to 295,000. Maybe we see Smerkovic coming for big sizing. Thinking that. Well, I mean, he knows the two aces is most likely good. His opponent check back doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't have Jack X. Most of the time, it is pocket pairs that are going to be willing to call bet. Hold on. Hold on. Excuse me, all in? All in? Well, this is a surprise. 
and just put yourself in Johannes Traver's shoes as he faces this jam from Smilkovic. I mean, it does feel like maybe I'm just getting bowled over here. Kind of wouldn't mind if the implications of being wrong weren't so great. Clicking call and just being like, really? But Yeah, you can see Johannes Strava there. He was confused a bit, but was yeah. like, yeah. it's really not worth all my chips right now. We're too close to the money. And, yeah. You know, I think Smerkovic there with the huge jam was hoping to get his opponent to out-level himself and make a call, but, you know, he was going to review these hands when the delay catches up to him and adjust accordingly. Sees that he didn't even use one-time chip with those two tens. Getting a good long look there at Lun Lun. Long. The new faces at the feature, coming off of back-to-back -back caches in the 50k 8 max and the 25k turbo, where he final tabled 165,000 plus in career Triton earnings across three caches. Oh, no, sorry. Nope, that one flashed. My like that. Seven no space. Is the card as well? No. Yes, we have 10 Okay. Thank you. Lots of information. It's a different game now. 100 big blinds. Pretty nice. Close to the money. Gonna apply some pressure. 70. Great. 70. Well, I mean, Smerkovic, right? He's not, he's not afraid of his stack size. But ace king for Petrangelo. Nice spot for him. Small blind versus button. Playing above 70 big blinds, you're gonna see him size up a bit. Or is he coming off a call? Did I see that right, Ollie? You did, and perhaps this is an extension of what you had touched upon, which is keeping it snug out there, not looking to bloat pots you're really discouraged to take those sorts of risks because the implications of a big collision you're on the wrong side of are brutal. Yeah, you can definitely see the adjust in pre-flop strategy amongst several different players and remaining so far. Although, of course, when you slow play Ace King like this, you're going to let other people have a chance to take a crack at it. Well, nobody has managed to get ahead of that ace-king on the flop nor on the turn, which brings a second tone and a second seven. I'm curious to see if Daniel Smerkovic is maybe going to stab here at 5-3 offsuit. For him to, to defend, it's a clear sign that he's willing to take spots post-flop. Let's see. He can represent a 7x pretty credibly. I'm a big fan of this play. Just five high with the gutter. 125. Mateo's just an ace eight high, not much of a hand, but I wonder if a Trangelo might come along with ace king. He's got the nut no pair. No, looks like he's going to be out of here. Smirkovic, he's the one that's kind of swinging. At so far, yeah. Yeah. If the like seven of spade exposed, you get two folds. Mm. I know, right? Seven of spades was exposed. Good point. Yeah. Seven always coming. We get more credit to him. So. <laughs> Maybe leveraging that reality to rep the queen more mm -hmm. successfully. Yeah, He's, that's why he had to size down a little bit. Good fall, Matthias. I even checked, was it really seven dos suited? <laughs> Yeah, it was. <laughs> if it wasn't the 100k, maybe, but 100k too expensive. Ibinger, fresh off of his first cash of the series, finishing fourth in the 25k, adding to his career Triton totals, which now exceed. Three million. Has two titles under his belt across 
eight total caches. App, by the way, for those of you who might be scratching your temple and wondering why it is that the figures I'm reading off don't sync up with what you're seeing, intentionally leaving out tabulations from results here in Vietnam. Trangelo. Eyes off Daniel Smerkovich, who hasn't been shy of aggression. And this is, you can see a very contrast of styles right now. Smerkovich is just being relentless, whereas Petrangelo being a little bit more passive. Let's see. Two sevens. A lot of stack to play for, but uncomfortable. Do you really want to play a huge pot right now? As you can see, he just eyeballs the top and sees there's 24 remaining still. He bets to 350. Too much heat for the sevens and for the queen jack as Daniel Smilkovich takes another one. It consists predominantly of Mateos and Petrangelo bucks. I know we've only seen a few hands so far, but I'm liking the direction that Smirkovich is taking this. He's going to be able to take down a lot of uncontested pots. Free of charge. There really should be a statue of Sam Greenwood in that pose. That is his classic pose, isn't it? What is it? The thinker? That famous the thinker. philosophical... And more on the side. Yeah. Close. That's Poker's version. The Greenwood. The Greenwood. I like it. Ace King. He likes it. Under the gun. One million. Seventy. Just a touch up from the men. <clears throat> All right, Smirkovich, you want to do some more damage? Ace Jack on well, the dealer button. The damage on this occasion would rate to be done to his own stack. He chose to play back at Greenwood, which he has. He's feeling like he's getting away with these plays from the last few hands. Going to try to keep it up, but Greenwood with the mandatory push all the chips in there out of position. Just north of 30 big blinds. Could be hard to play this as a call. I would love to see him four bet it. Pretty much all of it. Jam. Lots of fold equity. On. And the jam. As predicted, snap fold from Smilkovich. Daniel, so you play every hand. Super <laughs> credible so in this spot. <laughs> you didn't have a good hand that time. Oh, you not that good. Then. You didn't have a good hand this time. I did. <laughs> Park of eight. Great hand that time. <laughs> Better than today. Mm -hmm. Allegations that Smilkovich has been speedy. Looks that way. He's been speedy. Five high. Nice shot. You don't believe him for four values in a row. What? You don't believe him to have four values in a row. But I had a value hand that time. So it was Helps. The it question is, did you have a value hand once? It's true, yeah. I had the easy shove in the world. Jack-10 offsuit up front for Lun Lun. Too much pressure. 8-9 suited off of a 65. stack right. for Mateos, 65. though. A different proposition as he opens to 65k. Mateos, by the way, has had a heck of a series. 14th in the 15k, 18th in the 30k, 11th in the 75k. Net positive. Positive, short <coughs> some final tables. Maybe this is the one.
40 big blinds for Greenwood. Closing to action. Suited Jack. 65. How many blocks do you have? Nine. Nine. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Greenwood defends. Comes up empty on the Queen 7 6 board, which produces an open ender for the Matador, Adrian Mateos. Nice flop for him. One and done. Should get, get this one over pretty quickly. Instant monk incoming. Yeah. Greenwood all done with it. By the way, we call Adrian Mateos the Matador, and I've discussed that former main event champion from Spain, Carlos Mortensen, I believe also had earned the nickname the Matador way back. But he doesn't play anymore. He doesn't play anymore, so it's okay, right? Take a minute here to remind you that our official staking partner on the Tri Triton Super High Roller Series is Poker Stake. You're going to want to check them out at PokerStake.com where you too can get in on the action with however much your heart desires to get a little taste of what we hope you're enjoying out there as we effort to deliver you the best in streaming poker entertainment. Now, during the break, I'd run into Henrik Eklund earlier today. He came in and he said, Ali, Love when you guys have fun with everything, but I will not accept you calling me the Great Dane. And I said, why is that? I said, because there is only one Great Dane, that is Gus Great. Hansen. And Gus is a legend from Henrik's native Denmark that he credits, really, with getting him into poker, and he's a big fan, and I said, okay. Which, of course, means, as we see Lone Loon opening to 60,000, Randy, that we are tasked with giving Henrik a new nickname. I'm going with the Mediocre Dane. <laughs> oh, Randy Lou, ladies and gentlemen. 5-6 suited here for Straver, <laughs> which turns into the better of these two holdings on a Jack-Jack-5 board. The lack of hesitation. It's almost like you were ready for it. <laughs> Can't blame Lun Lun for following through on this board texture here, especially as the King of Spades is working. Jackson fives. Most likely going to be a calling coming. And he does. Safe card for sixes and fives? Very much so. Jackson fives, rather. Oh, I know. I don't know why I said sixes and fives. It's all good. We get it. Six kicker. Plays. Really? <laughs> the six kicker <laughs> plays. <laughs> Lun Loon plays. All right. So let's get back to his hand here. Ace King just firing away again to have the best hand a good amount of time. For Johannes Strava, though, I mean, there are flush draws. Two of them, to be exact. Still pick those hands off. Him check calling again would look pretty strong. Would shut down a third barrel a lot. Let's see. This will be a lot of respect for him to fold his turn. up at the clock and he has hit the best hand into the mock loon loon might we have just gotten a look at some of the distinctions of approaching the bubble play there randy as straver out of position looking to preserve every one of those chips not wanting to enter murky water as it stands and that's a great point 
Right, his stack is very comfortable right now. If he makes a couple wrong calls, we down to like 25 big blinds and lower. Blinds go up, get strength up some more. And he's also thinking that Loon Loon's got the stack that can't really splash around opening off the 15 big blinds, right? Is he really just barreling off high card king mm -hmm. or queen? Probably not. No, That's off to Loon Loon. Taking advantage of the situation. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's the guy who's willing to kind of take that one step further that's going to take advantage of this approaching the bubble situation. See? Not playing every hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's not that difficult to fall. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Let's not sleep on the fact that Loon Loon earned that muck, by the way, Randy, courtesy of his willingness to barrel again. Of course. Most people would have just bet the flop, checked the turn, and just lose. And now he's got put himself in a situation that can maneuver much better, right? Sitting just north of 20 big blinds. That's because he's Loon Loon, not Loon Lose. Loon Lose. Yeah, sometimes that's, people refer to me as Randy Lose, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> couple of jacks here in the big facing the button open of Greenwood off of 565 yeah nice spot to chip up some more contemplating whether to three bet small or jam jams the play yeah oh. I like it really narrows the range of hands that are you going to it. have an opportunity to continue as Sam says you got it back to back pickups there or one of the very robust members of the Malaysian delegation. Shout out, by the way, Pot Dragon in the chat. It's quick to point out that all... These Triton stream costs are a thumbs up, if you will, a like, a subscribe, all that we ask, and not that often, mind you. So if you are enjoying what we're sharing with you, free of charge, do us a favor and click those buttons. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the players here who are clicking buttons in an effort to work their way into the money here in the 100K main. Poker Code co-founder, Matthias Eibinger. He's deuce in the hijack. He's looking for a spot soon. It's a little bit far from the bubble. Let's see what he thinks. Not the bubble, I meant the button. He's out. And suited. Good for a pop up to 75. That earns. <coughs> no, it's correct. Strava to the pot. Dealer push. Bad news for the short stacks, Randy, as the blinds are going up to 20 and 40,000. Mateos atop the leaderboard, 2.8 million, and that's good for the overall chip lead with 24 remaining. Ibinger with just eight bigs here, shortest overall stack in the field by our count. Big drop off, too, between him and 23rd of 24 runners, Brian Kim, who has 16 bigs. Level with Seidel and just a click behind Kale Burns. Tight cluster down at the bottom of the overall leaderboard. Available to those of you streaming us. I'll try the Poker Plus app.
Ace nine off suit. And cut off for Strawberry. Gonna open it up. He's made a hundred K. He's going to standard two point five X for him now. Moon Moon, Ace King suited is recently found a lot of spots to help him increase his stack. Ace King suited is one of those hands that's ready to go. Jambo oh. incoming. Boom. No takers. Second time Loon Loon has been willing to jam. And you know when a guy who isn't the shortest stack in the room is willing to jam on a bubble like this, the range should be narrow. It should be, correct. I mean, yes, his frequency seems high right now, but sometimes people get hit with the deck a bit. But no knock to him, because he did that nasty multi-barrel with Ace-King on Jack-Jack-5-4 to get Stroud to fold 6-5. I get hit with the deck pre, but when you don't get hit with the deck post, you gotta earn it. Not worthy that Loon Loon folded A7 off soon to cut off. Wow, and Good what a great timing. time to choose to do so as Mateos wakes up with the Ace King behind him. Smelt it. Mateos has got a awkward seat position. He's got two deep stacks who are willing to get it in with them. Two fives gonna take a flop. It's a good Un fair fight. Understandable defense for an extra 50k. Oh. 240,000 to the King 8 6 board, where Smilkovich's fives look up at three over cards. Top pair. For Mateos. Yeah, great spot for Mateos to fire continuation hey, back. Comes in with one third pot exactly. Two big blinds. Smerkovich, two fives. Probably expects to get C bet into a lot, but three overs is not too fun. Does have some backdoor straight draws incoming, so we'll peel one off, expecting a lot of pressure from a chip leader. Ace pretty much seals it. I don't really see Smerkovich being able to continue on a turn bet. And I don't think Mateos would be that sneaky to check. Are Top you surprised two. to see him bother to, to peel one off? A little bit, but Smerkovich does strike me as someone who's willing to fight for post-flop spots. So maybe a, the two fives in a different hand of a different player, I mean. 265. Might see a muck on the flop. I mean, obviously Mateos is the guy that can end your outing. Yeah, he, he is a multi barreler. There is. <laughs> I'm definitely the number one candidate. I've never seen a marked card in my life. I've never seen a test of that. <laughs> you never it's like we're going to get a new deck never here. Never seen one, never seen a pitch off the deck. Like, I'm literally the worst ever. Mateos. Suggesting one of the cards had a bit of a mark on it. A lot of times we blame the shuffle machines for that sort of stuff. Of course, all hand shuffles here in the Triton Super High Roller Series, but a long day of play, tense fingers, fingernails, Someone's they take a beating. Trying to sweat those whole cards, really the squeeze them out. Mixed games are where the deck really gets abused because you get the box squeezes, mm. you know, none across, two across, trying to figure out not you hit your Jing card.
onwards <laughs> with the new deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Come on, guys. That's why I see the the ace. As, well, it's Mark. Nick, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you a little uh, little lag for a trick here. You look really hard at the back of the card, and then like as if there's a mark on it, and then. Uh, I need to look for him. No, no, but I look. I do it, so I like look real hard at it, and then I get quiet, and then I then I bust it away, and they're like, "Oh man, he he is an ace." <laughs> oh, it is. I'm not sure if I got the point. Where is the advantage that you could possibly get? People will be like, "He's raising strong. He is an ace." I did. Preserving the image. Mateus okay. is being. Relentless with pressure. Two fives to start to hand off the cutoff. Watson is getting a little bit shallow. 645k, king five off suit. Closing the action. He's not shaking. Big Mike here. He got six black rays. And then bam. Wants five to defend. Nine. Five? Yeah, thanks. Adrian. To be sure he knows how deep Mike is Check. as he proceeds with <coughs> the best hand. Watson, king high on the ace nine deuce board. 40. The mini bet. Unfortunately from Watson, he just can't really mess around too much, right? Like, let's just say he wants to get a little floaty. It's quite detrimental to his stack if he's wrong. 15 big blinds are hanging in there right now. But he hasn't given up yet, is he thinking? No, nope, he's out. King five, is he thinking? Stop. Like the here. Right here. Like well, I mean, he is thinking. Like yes, but I mean, he's mucking. But account. he's thinking about when to muck. Shall we end this? I think you should just muck before he even checks it to Mateos. <laughs> just open fold. It's like this like isn't the one. Ace high board. Yeah. 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 You got more chips than me? So yep. You do, you're going to bet. You sit around and you think of extremely obscure angles you can pull for like very minor advantages. Corey doesn't sit around and think of them, but when they come up, he will <laughs> right. talk about them. Just like that. Like, boom. Yeah. Feel like the ace king is getting thrown around. Lin Lun again. You have these, can't, pleasures. These, these nails can't mug the crowd. Oh, an ace queen for Ibinger off of the shortest stack in the room, Randy. Cold, cold, cold. Don't need a crystal ball to know which way this one's headed. Jam. Call. Whoops. Matias doing what he's supposed to do, and Loon Loon just had the medicine for him here. But we still deal flops, turns, and rivers. Sometimes bad beats do Loon. That's certainly what Ibinger is hoping. Jack 10 4 with a couple of hearts, Little and there are you. paths to victory for Matias. Swapping outs. Mm. Nine of hearts does like. open the door. Two way straight draw, and the better of two flush draws. Ibinger, 29% equity, one to come. Board pairs, though, and that is it. That was a good deal. For Matthias Ibinger. Oh, no, 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 no. One time jack. M2. Car Three time ace king, one time jack. Well, run good. Should have. I wouldn't need a lot of tips. Yeah. Just a cold deck for Matthias Ibinger. Yeah, it's like, I mean, oh man, I got the goods. What a great timing. The big line ace queen. Them, right? Too yeah, much of a hand. <laughs> no Put anybody on Matthias' stack. They're going to be it, headed yeah. for the exits. Loon Loon. What an orbit this has been for him. Chips. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully you not shock my Clawing ace queen into aces again. <laughs> just short of average. With all time bearing. Ah, yeah, yeah. 23 remain. 
I thought it was like 300 something yesterday, like 50 bigs. No. Uh. Tough. Oh, it's okay, still survive. Time to continue to pressure Ace Jack. Watson sitting on Ace Two suited on the dealer button. Like the stack size worthy of a reshub, but hand is not too great. We'll lay it down. Can't get myself into trouble with that hand. <laughs> Feels like Mateos is going to be able to get a lot of opportunities to get some raise intakes. I mean, you can really blaze your own trail here if you're Adrian Mateos. Make more than a few mistakes before you need to come off it. Yeah, you can just pretty much relentlessly raise if no one's giving you resistance, and knowing the resistance is sh should be some tight hands. People should not be making reckless mistakes right now. Nikki P picks up. Ace five off suit. You know he saw the chip leader fold, so it's, now it's his time to go. I was cut rush. Two time ace king, one time jack. Nice. There'll be a lot of raise and take it on our hands, I suspect. Yep. As do you, Randy, as does everyone out there who has ever watched a big money bubble you know this is the part of the game you know these guys have been studying this over and over lots of experience in it you know don't be upset at the game just how it's played don't even be upset at how it's played <laughs> it's just <laughs> how the cookie crumbles right king jack here we go more aggression. Two nines now for Mike Watson. Good timing. Yeah. Feels like go time. Definitely go time. He's seen Adrian Mateos open so many pots lately. Pretty much a slammed off jam. like he won't be getting any action. Nice pickup incoming from for Watson, 765k, just under 20 big blinds. These short stacks, they're just trying to hang in there. Kind of nice for Watson not to have to face elimination there by a, a Mateos call and let's run it. Given there are three shorter stacks than his in the field for the time being. This blind short stack into chip leader. Never fun, but Lun Loon has actually chipped up quite a bit. Ace Deuce. Be a bit excessive to jam here now. So let's see if he comes in with maybe a limp or a raise. No, actually just 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 pure respect. Just folding ace deuce, small blind versus big blind against the chip leader, thinking, look, I don't want to raise, you're doing call in position. Hard to play this hand post flop. 
I don't want to limp because I know you're going to raise me because you're going to just try to attack me. It's like, I'm going to get myself out of, out of this position and just wait it out. I mean, massive respect to Adrian Mateos' chip lead. I know that a lot of times the pro opinion of moves that are plus EV not being taken, and I'm not suggesting, by the way, I certainly don't know whether or not ripping right there in this exact scenario for Lun Lun is the right way to go against Mateos is big with shorter stacks out there, several of them. But the thought I'm, I'm trying to convey is that a lot of times if you don't take the plus EV line, the pros will sometimes be like, oh, fish. You know what I mean? Like, what, you know what you're supposed to do, you didn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know, man, from the ICM standpoint, and like, you never know what someone's considerations are, real life out there, real money. You know, I, I don't fault Lun Lun for folding one bit. I'm okay with it. In fact, I promise you I would put Ace Deuce into the muck in that spot. Mm -hmm. I just, I've worked my way so fortunately up the ladder here to where it does feel like I should be able to coast potentially straight into the money. Yeah. Yeah, I think Lun Lun is basically trying to avoid situations where he just bleeds down back to that short stack he was not too long ago. It's a little strange though, because it's a little bit contradicting to when he multi-barreled that ace king off. So maybe this 30 big blind stack is just so much more comfortable. Like, oh, I can just cruise in and people take now. Whereas when the shortest stack, got to fight otherwise i'm going to be the first one out yeah exactly he had to get busy then mm -hmm. now he doesn't it's other people that need to get busy to tread water yeah so let's see what he does with these two fives is he going to open it up or send him to the mock well, he's still going to play this mainly maybe he doesn't want to play out of position reasonable against a chip leader well remember once the chips are all in, there's no post-flop decision-making to be had. But this is not the case as the min rays open from Lun Lun. That's great to pique the interest of Daniel Smilkovich as we witness him defend. Smilkovich is a, a tough customer in the big blind. 8-7 deuce rainbow. Unimproved is Daniel. Currently sixth in chips overall. Uh, not a bad flop for two fives. There's two overs still, but interaction in the form of back rush straight draw. Yeah. 75k. Samarkovich, nothing. Just two overs. Hasn't sent the cards into the muck yet. Maybe he's thinking of making a play. Smarkovich, you sick man. Check raise. Just putting the pressure on the Lun Lun here. Look, if Lun Lun didn't want to play Ace Deuce earlier, I, I don't really see how he can want to continue here in a awkward spot. Yeah, super murky. Not on the bubble. Maybe we have a different proposition on our hands. Even then, obviously. Right now, Smirkovich is really seems like one of the most dangerous post slot players remaining in the tournament. If you don't got the goods, he's going to put the pressure on you. situational awareness. I talk about it a lot, but Smilkovich knows it would take so much hand for Lun Lun to want to continue there. Yeah, and I think if he got, had gotten resistance on the flop, he would have just shut down. Like, okay, well, he must have some kind of pocket pair that's pretty good. Meaning if Lun Lun had called if he had check called raise. The raise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like, oh, when you check raise, it automatically means you're going to bet any turn, any river. Very controlled. Oh. 
Watson hasn't been too shy of defending the big blind with some mediocre hands. This one going into muck. Good for him because he was dominated. How many first timers do we have left in this pack of 24 as we look out there? Randy, Smilkovich, well, Smirkovich, Yan. yeah. That's two. Um, Brian down. Kim. Kim and Strabber, that's three and four. Krabitz, yep. That's five. Nine. And that's it. Yep. That's it. Five of 23. Rather, I think I said 24. That, of course, was prior to the departure of Ibinger. As we see Strava, ace king, opening under the gun, hijack for Mateos with an ace king of his own. Five the expected three bet. Expected three bet. Expected four bet. Expected call. Expected chop. Okay, <laughs> you far? already know, once you say that, it's all on us if they don't chop it up. <laughs> <coughs> so three bets become four as Mateos and Strava play a 2.4 million chip pot. All suits in play. Yeah, 96% of the time we're looking at a chop here. See, I told you. Top yeah, left. King Jack Eight. Carve it up. West, uh, no sweat. Oh. Oh. When you snap, and the first card I see is Ace. Yeah, this is. The Ace is key, no Ace is it. I know. Hold the winner. You did? Could have got it in real good. Eight nine two did? I think it was trash, but it had a nine. Hello. Paying a visit to your fashion house of choice, apparently. Dior. Dior. I love it. I was having a conversation with Triton CEO Andy. Mm -hmm. You said that Japan is the best place to do our shopping. Is that right? I In terms of that. the depressed currency, the yen, and also instant tax back. Oh. Hadn't thought about that, by the way. I always felt like Japan was a little bit expensive, but... Please. Maybe you need to pay a visit. Shall we go together? Load up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pick up a few omakases. Some Japanese curry. Mm. Love that. You into takoyaki as well? Is that the uh, fried octopus? Oh, you do know. Yeah. Stuff's all right. Lin Loon's open to 80,000 now being observed by Greenwood. Is evaluating how to respond. Look at this respect of the bubble situation. Yeah, I would flat. think this is a lot of times coming in for all of the chips, but it's under the gun from a sh sh smaller stack to be respected. Interesting choice by Greenwood in the small blind. And he might be feeling better about that choice on an Ace King 3 board where. He presumes that much of the range that Lun Lun would be willing to open under the gun with contains this sort of kit. Yeah. The truth is, though, that he would have won the pot had he jammed pre flop. Good point. Let's see. Let's go check, check on the flop. Greenwood gonna feign some strength. <coughs> Hope to get this one checked down against a smaller pocket pair. Loon, loon. Maybe it's time to fire. Well, let's take a look up at the number of players remaining. 23. 
Look at this. A lot of pot control. Yeah, pot control, and also presuming that Greenwood would be inclined to flat a lot of hands that are really good and also might have the bigger ace X's among them. Well, having seen Greenwood flat two tens, it wouldn't surprise me that he flats ace queen and ace jack in this spot as well against mm -hmm. Under God. Mm -hmm. Greenwood just hoping to get the showdown. Would love to see Lun Lun. Wow, instant check back an ace. Would have kinda like to see him bet that ace. Also you wouldn't have to show your hand. I think it's a key part of it. And the kicker one. problems were solved courtesy of the three on the end. Yeah. Andy. I mean, I don't know, I'm not too sure what he's afraid of. I suppose it's just I don't opening want to face the a, action. Yeah, Simply I don't opening want no the action. Race. But very, very telling there to all the other players about how Lun Lun might approach some hands. I liked it, man. I, you know, keep it clean out there right now. Mm. There is no worse feeling than the one as you're walking out on the outside of the bubble in a moment like this where you, you look back and go, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Yeah. You know, and you've seen that look on a lot of players' faces over the years, Randy. A hundred percent. I'm sure this has happened in this tournament where someone bet and got jammed on and you know eventually bail out earlier in the tournament. What timing here for two kings? Especially for Mateos. I know. Under the gun, big stack. Looks like he's getting after it. I mean, he is getting after it, but yes, does look like it. And Strava here. Two aces. Wow. No way. 280. Now listen. We already know that for Strava to be three betting in this spot off of his stack depth from the small blind, real hands loom. Ali, just stop. No, He's got two kings. What yeah. is he going to do about oh, this? Oh, no, no, no. We're getting him in. But when are we doing it? Now. Only one hand beats us, pretty. Yeah. He's going to get it now. Yeah. Jam, snap, oh. cold deck. And no one loves to see this more than the shortest stack in the room, which belongs to Kale Burns. Seidel down there as well. They're just rooting for King right now. Yeah, they are. Green 10 deuce, aces. Still in front. Could get clubby. Not this time. Board pairs, and now just one of two kings in that deck would spell disaster for Strava. Any other card, and it's his. Jack, safe paint on the river. And that really was so a disappointed cold when we faced King, deck King last time, but this was actually worse. Mateus, he's <laughs> shaking his head. This changes things a lot, actually. The I'm chip, listening. The chip leader just lost a third of his stack. He's not going to be able to be able to be as relentless as think more raised folds down to thirty something big stack. lines. One short stack, safe now. This is actually a really good development for the other two bigger stacks at this table, like Smirkovic and Petrangelo, as they're going to get more opportunities to open raise. Whenever these sorts of developments happen out there, Randy, it sort of reminds me of making sure that you're nice to people when you're on top because you never know when your roles might get reversed and they're like i remember when you kept abusing my blind here try this on for size of course it's just poker it's not personal and it's not as nice as it once was for mateos who now sits behind stadaver to whom he passed over a good chunk of his chips with kings against aces no shame in it Watson, short stack, 17 bigs here at our feature table, where three tables remain 
in the 100K main here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam. Strava actually table captain now. I can hold it to him. Dealer button. Looks like he's out though. Must have been pretty bad. Ooh. What do we got here? An ace nine suited and a king queen. One million effective. Going north to almost 3x. King Queen is usually a jam in this spot. Although Loom Loon has kind of shown some signs of playing a little bit more snug, and I think it's concerning Mateos there. So he's going to take a flop. Oh, and he's going to hit top two with a couple of diamonds and a heart out there. Any merit to Lun Lun just even trying? Perfect. Yeah. To check, keep it clean. See whether or not Mateos wants to start putting chips in here and now, or maybe get naughty with a check back. Yeah, like you can see that Lun Lun likes to try to keep it to like more of a single or double streak game. Does go for a check. Should be. I'm expecting a check fold from him. You know, he's been a little bit snug plus flop. Oh, let's see what he comes in with. Now actually gonna reach for chips. Feels like cool. fighting back. 65k is a small bet. King's full on the turn. Mateos has this one locked up. Yeah, this board is all Mateos. I wonder if sometimes he goes for a check because he smashed it so hard. You might think King X would bet the flop a decent frequency. It looks like he's going to come in. Should be a smaller bet. No, he doesn't want to get some folds. He wants those Queen X's to call. Just doesn't have enough to continue Ace Nine of Hearts. Yeah. Surprised at all by Lun Lun's willingness to check and tear one off, even in the face of a small bet? I think so. I'm pretty surprised. But maybe he feel like he's getting picked on a little bit and he saw the small bet and was maybe I'm good, maybe he'll just check down. Backdoor nut hearts could have shown up as well. Yeah. Maybe some Broadway gutters. If he was up against a bigger bet in the flop, probably would have pitched it. That's why, you know, these smaller milky bet sizes are quite effective. Collecting chips that might not usually happen. Talasha Kershi just sitting on the top by himself right now. 79 big blinds. 59 for Benteos in second. How about it? He just on gets the, things done in the biggest buy-ins. On the businessman side of the bracket, but also... He loves the online on, streets. On the more professional side of the spectrum. Shakurchi. King Jack, meanwhile, for Mike Watson. 90 if you do. Strava, newly minted chip lead. At this feature, Ace Four suited in the cutoff. Tempting to play, but Watson's open off of a smaller stack. It's concerning. Let's see if he wants to put a small three bet in or just fold. Two ninety five. Aggressive. Gonna work oh, unless someone picks up two kings. What timing this is for Lun Lun. Can't necessarily blame Strava for looking to maybe lean on that open from Watson. Go off of Watson's stack depth. You gotta make sure that you can give him credit for raise folds. 
Now, Moon Loon jams over the top of all comers. And the field thins after the Watson fold, but a count being asked for by Straver. Are there worlds in which he thinks he wants to call off the problem here, K Ali, more? is that he made it 295k pre-flop. A little bit larger than expected. He might be priced in. Let's see. These chips are way more important though, right? Final 23. Sure. Pot laying them over 2 to 1. Good lay down. No, he got an ace king. You can show. Kings? 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 Good Adrian. Just taking a little shot at maybe getting some free info, you know, you asked the Ace King suited? No. Better. Here. Look. Oh Kings. Thank you very much. Just gotta ask the right questions at the right time. Right. Be friendly, right? If you're relentless against someone, no, he's not gonna tell you. King. That's it. Fair. Pressure. Eighty K. Loon Loon. No hesitation. Two black sevens into the muck, Randy. Not worthy. You concur? I concur. I think it's okay actually, even in the hands of season pro. Two sevens is just awkward. Do you really want to be flat calling right now? Telling everyone he got a mediocre hand. Do you really want to be three bang two sevens and having to take a post flop? How often do you actually practice. flop a seven? Not too often. It's okay. I'd actually want to say it's mandatory. Twenty three remaining, three from the money. Adjustments on display. 23 left and 20 paid. Queen 10 in the muck in the hijack. He's five suited. That's going nowhere in the cutoff for Adrian Mateos. Solvers don't let you fold this hand. They just send it back to you. <laughs> you keep trying to click fold and it <laughs> just, just won't work. It's, it's grayed out. Yeah, it's grayed out. You can't even time out. It just gives you extra time bank. If you're in position, the call button also not available. It's just <laughs> only three bets. Double down. Mateos takes down a little pan con tomate. You a tapas fan, Randy? I love tapas. Love me some Spanish food. Yeah. I like the... Uh, I love it when we were in uh, Madrid. There was yeah. some really nice tapa places right around. Sasa de la Pisa, I think it was called. I don't remember us going to eat together. I know. In Madrid, Randy, and yet you're talking about several nice tapas places. You know I'm a foodie. So shall we fix that next time? Assuming I'd say so. Yeah, I like, some, I like me some good food. I do too. One of the fringe benefits, by the way, of being on the Triton Tour is we visit new cities. Opportunity to taste authentic cuisines from around the world. We just announced like two new stops coming, I think we did on the Trident Social, so good opportunity. For those that maybe missed it, Randy, talk to them. We got Cypress coming up okay. to round up this uh, four-stop tour for the Ivan Loud Player of the Year. Okay. And then we got London incoming 
in How supply about slash it? August. That's How my place. About it, huh? That's a great place for your foodie too. You know, I'll take Spain over London. London has a bunch of nice restaurants. But it's not British food is not known for being the best. Shepherd's pie. Uh, I like me some shepherd's pie. That's good. What else do they serve? I, I like, Fish and chips? I like haddock and chips with a little mushy peas. Mm -hmm. Don't mind it. Bangers or mash? Me. I don't, you know, you're not going to catch me drunk at 4 a.m., so maybe I'm not as into it. <laughs> I feel like we've probably played twice as many hands at that table with all the short snacks. Don't know. Haven't been watching, but. They keep truck right? Yeah, they do. I think they do, yeah. Hope so. You like that hamon iberico, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's some good stuff. I really like the, I forget what they, what do they call octopus there? Pulpo? Pulpo. Mm -hmm. Really tender. The best. Oh, quite tender. Two queens? Well, the ace nine is a little more tender. The queens, I think, are a bit tougher. Queens is flat oh, calling yeah. here. This is hey, very oh. notable. Hmm. Some misbehavior by Smilkovich, or just acknowledging the fact that Mateos is a bigger stack? That's a part of it. I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm curious to see how he maneuvers this post flop. You and I both. Yeah. Or maybe he was hoping for some induction from the smaller stacks to reshove. Yeah, that's true. Behind you. Didn't yeah, think by the squeeze. You might not think it's likely that he can get Mateos in for this many blinds with a bad hand. So I can see where he's coming from. Most certainly not folding post-flop, especially on this board. Ace of hearts and the nine of spades both working on this board texture right now. Note to sizing, Ali. 190K is mm -hmm. not small. Smirkovich sees that, right? He might be like, hmm, why are you betting so big? Yeah. I mean, I'm not folding two queens right now, but it's suspicious. It's interesting. Turn card. Drop me a deuce, blank. Yeah, that's a very welcome sight for Daniel, who is very much playing the cautious pot control approach against this bigger stack of Mateos. Three out of the money. Do we give up with Werma Tails? Let's see. Black call me in positions, called a near pot size bet. Seems like I'm up against two nines, two eights, jack ten, queen jack type hands a lot. Two hearts, possible, but I've got an ace of hearts. Check makes a lot of sense. Should be pretty happy with two queens now. Your opponent's checked. Are we allowed to check back though and then just decide on rivers we provided are, that adrian leads we are if we think we're going to get checked raise all in on the turn at some frequency just to avoid that situation altogether and that's what he's going to do again just tidy procedures yeah the turn check through doesn't necessarily define smirkovich's hand as never a jack since we are three from the money right now mateos knows that Holding a nine in his hand, blocks pocket nines. I would wouldn't really want to call a bet. Let's see what he does. Imagine it's getting snapped off for almost any size. He's done. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Provided Daniel wants to put something out there, which is not compulsory. Randy, that Adrian would be true. Anything I feel like but done. Smirkovich is gonna try to find some value. The chances of the C bet near pot double check to check raise is just not a common play. A big bet here. I like the big bet. You know, sometimes we talk about we do small bets, we induce some raises that we don't want to see. Bigger bet defines your hand as something that should be good. You should never check raise me. Yeah, I I like where your head's at there, Randy, in terms of, you know, we get cutesy and all of a sudden we invite the raise, which we know is the product of that cutesiness, and now our queens 
start to dry up a little bit in our hearts and our minds. Whereas we come with the bigger bet and we kind of take that out of, out of Adrian's available responses, one would imagine. And we also sort of polarize too every now and again. Of course, by polarizing, you know, maybe you get hero called by a random 10x right. or right. whatnot. Greenwood, 10-9 of clubs. There is a big blind that's of Loon Loon. Took a look. Maybe. Gonna raise. Not much of a hand. Should be over soon. There we go. Well, unfortunately for him, Patrick Antonius not a part of this final 23 here in the main, but I did just get a message from him, Randy. Go many years back to before he even had a family, but dropped a note to let us in the booth know that we made his daughter's day, both of his daughters, by mentioning them when he was on the TV final table. They absolutely loved it, and that was really kind of us so shout out to Patrick and to his two beautiful daughters a eight suited Angelo up to 90 Greenwood Suited wheel card. It's the hand that you could 3-bet bluff, but Greenwood hasn't really been trying to get involved in these situations. It's going to fold. Long to the tails in the big blind. 3 do suited. Safe to say, you're barely dominated with this hand. Well, the hearts are dominated, unfortunately, for Adrian as he calls. Extra 50k. Not so fun flop. He's king queen, easy to get away from for Adrian. We'll see whether or not we find. Similarly snug operations out of Petrangelo to the ones that we saw from Daniel with the overpair. Answer is no, as sprinkles and takes it down. You're a fairly new Papa as well, yourself, right? Randy, how old's your... Uh, three. At three? Okay. Just turned three, so going to school now. Not that She's, new. like, ready to play some poker. I haven't shown you something. You want to see? Don't tell me. No, no, you got to see. Really got to see this. 25 and 50,000 are the blinds and the annies now. Oh, wow. And you know what? She found the 10 of clubs herself, put it up to the 10. No no advice given. Okay, well, for those, obviously, who cannot see what's happening in the booth now, Randy has just shown me a video of his daughter watching our streams on the big screen. Obviously, she's got a deck of cards somewhere at her disposal. And on the screen, we see a 10-9 with the 10 of clubs. She's reached into the deck at just three years of age and put 
a ten of clubs up onto the screen to match. Tell you what, that is the beginnings of That's one's a poker, poker career prodigy. right there. <laughs> Smilkovic, the nine and the seven of diamonds, matching enough for him to raise it up at this new blind level is Watson. Time to put some aggression, aggressive action. He doesn't like that it's undergun and undergun plus one. These are stronger positions, but if he doesn't take this spot, he's going to hit the big blind really soon and a small blind. That could be 125K gone. Wow, he's going to lay down two eights. That is a big, big fold, Ali. I mean, remember Loon Loon dumped the two sevens? Yeah. Ooh. Watson, 22nd out of 23rd right now. Three do not make anything. I mean. Wow. Big, big fold. It is insofar as you know that Watson is in the realm of stacks that needs to pick a time and make something happen. And obviously you can continue to get whittled down and then that line you have to draw might be drawn with something worse than two eights. But he's content to continue to allow this war of attrition to play out with the other short stacks. See if he can't creep ever closer to this money bubble. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he made a mistake at all, but definitely noteworthy. I think some players would shove two eights there. Mm -hmm. Onto this flop now. Smirkovic whiffed it. Let's see if Petrangelo comes along with ace two suited. You know, technically it's a good board from, but it is under the gun versus big blind. Let's have the back door spades. Check raise, Ali. The board is king 3-3 three, three rainbow. Big blind versus under the gun. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. This is the second data point that we've got on Nick Petrangelo. Not subscribing maybe to some of what we've seen out of some other stacks. Yeah. Granted, oh. he's pretty huh? deep. Four. But... He's got <laughs> some gamble in him still. He's got gamble. Paired flop check raise there against Smilkovic, who isn't short. Earns him the chips. And everyone out there looking to earn the Triton title, along with that Jacob and Co. watch. And of course, not to be overlooked, our custom handcrafted Shambhala Jewels bracelet. Just some of the fine jewelry comes out of there. Craftsman's hands, diamonds, precious stones, and 18 karat gold. Trangelo hasn't yet I guess so, yeah. put his small blind out there, but does so in the form of a limp with the deuce three suited. And Smilkovic mulling it over with the king eight. Randy, you've drawn my attention to a development on screen here. The number 23 is just ticked down to 22. Who have we lost? To lose Ben Heath. Looks like he clashed with Talash Kershi. Lost 710k. Wow. 10 8 of clubs against 8 9 offsuit post flop. It is going to be the nut straight for Tala. Ben Heath calling off. Just a pair of 10s. Man. Digging in. Tala's got that image of just blasting away. Looks like he tried to hear a call off. Done. <sighs> Massive chip lead now for Tala. Four million in chips. Smarkovic is in second with 2.3 million. Followed by Malinowski, Limitless, everyone's favorite. Also has 2.3 million. Then Nikki P in four, 2.1. How many blocks? Three. A request on how many black chips? 
Black chip being 100k. Hundred K on request from Mateos with the King Jack Two cut off. Petrangelo. Twenty nine of spades, man. How much fight does Nikki P have? He's got a lot of fight, especially if he takes this Queen Nine suited upstairs. Oh, time card come <laughs> in. He's, He's invested. Yep. You can't take the time card and fold now. Seventy-five. Everyone checking Mike Watson's stack. Okay. Black call in position. Nikki P's got some plans. Sure seems that way. Now that flat does create a bit of an interesting option for Smilkovich. There was some Questions asked of Mike Watson stacks from both players. Yeah, he's pouncing on this. Is the why are they so concerned about Mike Watson's stack if they had a good hand? Is it because it's one of those closer spots? Do you think it's straight up that that, that emboldened him? Obviously, the value of an ace two suited had something to a do with of, it. A bit of everything. That was a small part of it. Ace two suited also blocking the hands that are willing to get in with you. Unblock the hands. This guy is just an animal. He's like. The first time I've seen him play at mm -hmm. this Triton Vietnam st stop, mm -hmm. he's definitely vaulted to near top for me of just players I really enjoy watching. Yeah. No, not much of a chatty player, but his game speaks for itself. Not quite as enjoyable, by the way, to have to contend with as we've witnessed some real heroic spots. The three bet there in the face of the open and flat, and then don't forget that check raise that he had as well. Can't remember the exact spot. It was against Lin Lun, mm -hmm. where he check raised <laughs> Queen 10 offsuit, no yeah. connection, 8-7 yeah. board. He's relentless. That's the type of guy who ships a tournament or bubbles. I could see it. Peak of the chip counts once more here as it would appear that we are approaching a soft bubble scenario with 20 paid and 22 left. Randy, for those that are unfamiliar, what is the difference between a soft bubble and a hard bubble? Well, soft bubble is one more off the money. And in this situation, they want to make the hands fair dealt to each table. So they'll still kind of play a little bit of a hand for hand, but counting the number of hands played on each table to kind of even them out. So I believe one table might be have played a little bit more hands, so I'm gonna let the other table catch up a bit. All right. So we just Guess sit here we're, now. We're pausing <laughs> on account of that. As mentioned, Talal Shakurchi at the top of the overall chip counts, 4.25 million. Daniel Smilkovich sitting second now. 52 bigs, a big gap between those two stacks. With Dermalinowski. Limitless currently in third. Johannes Traver in fourth. And Nikki P in fifth. As Mateos, the one time chip leader, sits currently seventh overall. Average stack 1.5 million. Good for 31 big blinds at present. This quarter 50 level. Mike Watson at this feature right now. Shortest stack in the room. Just a hair shy of Seidel, who's got just north of 400,000. Bryn Kenny, 520K. You had to set an over under right now, Randy, on how long it's going to take between now and when we are able to burst the bubble. Where would you set it? 60 minutes. Yeah. Seems fair, doesn't it? I don't know. I'm bad at this stuff. I'm bad at this stuff, too. Henry knows his numbers. They got us. If Henry knew his numbers, he wouldn't have tried to take the under on 2,640 calories <laughs> for Patrick Antonius. What's happening what, out here? What have we here? 
Jung that's not Jungle Man wearing a hat, is no, it? No, no, that's Rabbits. Obviously visited a similar boutique in town. Got himself involved in this one against. Uh, is it? Is it Tan Xuan who's holding cards? Uh, Seven Jack, nine King Queen on the board. Four liner. No flush. It looks like Tan xuan has got cards. I don't see cards anywhere else. Yeah, and underneath his left hand. Yeah, the dealer's looking that direction too. <laughs> One of the more expensive left hands, by the way, in the building. Hobbits has barreled here. And now Sean's hand finds the muck. Your table getting caught up on their texts. Yeah, he's smashing that keyboard. Well, at least he's not playing Candy Crush. That would have been disappointing. See how bad he is at it. Greenwood would be a Candy Crush beast. The ROI is just not there. You playing mobile games, Randy? Guilty? I used to. Outgrew it, did you? Yeah, I'm trying to think. What was the last mobile game I played? I don't know. Minesweeper. Just kidding. That's not a mobile game. <laughs> That's an immobile game. All right. So, once again, outer table action as they haven't been dealt as many hands as the featured table. Rabbits, fresh off of that pot against Tan Xuan in the small blind, limping in against Malinowski. Third in chips overall. Let's take a flop here. Seven ten king, two clubs. Checks back. <coughs> Blink looking three on the turn. One more check onto Limitless. One of the most feared players in the game. No, oh, he's reaching for chips, Ali. Rabbits eyeballing that bet. Looks like 100k to me. I don't take it. We're level now? One more, I think. Guess we're going to stick with the outer table now. Suspect that we need to catch up with one more hand. No RFID readers at our outer tables, of course, hence the lack of whole cards. I like that they do this soft bubble counting of hands, keep it fair for everyone. You know, some players out there try to do a little tanking. Look at the pitch on that dealer. Did you see that? Those are ninja stars. Mm -hmm. You know, lift your hands, don't get them cut. Southpaw, by the way, I always find that a little funky. The lefty dealers. 
<clears throat> they say left-handed people are more creative. You think that means their boards are more wet when dealt? See Soiza and Tan Shuen here with some chips in front of them. There will be a undergun open. Undergun plus one flat. Action on Soiza. What have we here? Nine high. Five right. and a four. Two clubs. Just see under the gun actually check these kind of flops a lot since they're so high card heavy. See how Tan plays. Tan could easily have some pocket pairs that can continue. Maybe pounce on some ace highs. DK. Mm -hmm. Soisa's not giving up. He's going to take one off. Remember, Soisa was the opener in this pot. Yeah, Ten I would say his hand's corner. not defined at all. Jack on the turn. Second check from Soiza. Interesting spot for Tan Schwen. Let's see what he comes with. Soiza does have Tan covered coming into this one. Schwan with two caches already here in Vietnam. 11 total over his career, which includes a title. <coughs> shy of 7 million. Set the number in Chinese. I believe our dealer speaks Chinese. I think he said 290. What did he say? Looks like one. Uh, no, two yeah, it's 290. It's 290. Not my Chinese. Three white, three blue, close. two black. I believe Soiza does speak some Chinese. I don't think Tan Chuan expected this. Oh, no. He's oh. snap called. What has he got? Not great news for Tan, except... Two jacks and six. Is it set over set? <laughs> a set of nines on the flop for Tan Chuan, and on the turn, a set of jacks for Soiza. No. One out. And that is brutal. 1.2. 1.2. No, no, I'm not, but all in, all in, button there. Every time under the gun, call under the gun, but one. Yeah, 95. He bet very small, 19 to 325. Just call. Skate, I thought you got aces. <laughs> no. What a seismic ripple through this main event. <laughs> As Tan Xuan is showered in 22nd, which now puts us on the stone money bubble. It was an open, a flat, top set. Soiza with the overpair, check calling, and then binking the jack on the turn, and check jamming, putting Tan all in. Obviously, you put anyone out there in Tan's seat, they're finding the exit as well. And sometimes it, it's those big hands is what gets it down to 21 remaining now. That is sick, Ali. No one deserves that. No one. I do believe there were some choice Chinese expletives that were muttered on the back there end was. of that. Didn't, I we don't need a translator. Speak a little bit. Okay, what, what did he say? I Why don't I'm you let all the people I'm not going to say it in English. 
but I know what it meant. Can you repeat it back in Chinese then for us? I don't think I'm supposed to dangerous. do that. Dangerous. Randy, that's trying inappropriate. Not that I've made a career out of being appropriate. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty sick. Flip side, by the way, Soiza, boom, second in chips overall. Jacks are supposed to beat nines. So I always he won 1.4 million like chips in that pot <laughs> just now. 1.4 million. You really don't expect to see pots of that size at this point in a tournament such as this, Randy. It requires exactly those kind of ingredients. Yeah, especially post-flop, though, right? Post-flop is nine, even more yeah, rare. Right. Set over set. I don't think Tan Shuan's going to be getting the best night of sleep he's ever had tonight. No. No, he's not. He's going to have a lot of people ask him how he busted to for the next hour. Set or set. I do think that if we find a flat screen TV in the swimming pool tomorrow morning, we'll know where it came from off of whose balcony. God, that's just so nasty. Heart really goes out to Tom's water. Right Beast. What's happening here? Molly? Petrangelo, cut off, ace deuce, take it up. Stone cold bubble. Greenwood has used a time card here of seven. I'm beginning to think that the card might be another seven. He's hesitant to call, but will make the call. Mm -hmm. Two sevens, the seven. most likely holding. Oh. King four deuce, bottom pair for Petrangelo. Mickey P. Seems like a good spot to throw a little tiny bet out there. Big blind is gonna play very straightforward right now. Stone cold bubble, especially quite far from the shortest stacks. I don't know what the other card is. Seven six suited maybe. Seven eight of hearts. Trying out there. Appreciate it. Ace of diamonds ever? Try harder next time though. Possible. Whatever it was, it's in the muck as Nikki P continues to cobble away here. Had a big number. His stack not earned courtesy of one big windfall. Chiseler. There's a lot of chatter going on in the background. Sounds like Paul. Ike busted Steve, which I Ike busted to Steve in the 75k. Uh, limp calling like a non all in way. Look at this. Outer table, different one actually, where Talal holds court. Well, Bryn Kenny wasn't going to get outdone in terms of headwear today, was he? No, he was not. He was not wearing this earlier. The chain's back. Oh yeah, full flavor on Sensei. Meanwhile, Looks like Shikurchi's got Adams staring at a riverbed of what looks like 225,000, two blacks and a white. The board reads Queen, Queen, 7, 4, 10, three hearts. Raising chips, snap, fold. Shikurchi 
Getting caught, perhaps, leaning light on the stone money bubble. We will see the big stacks in the room do a bit of that. To be expected somewhat. Cards back in the air at the feature. Ace, deuce, four, Smilko. Cut off open. Johannes Strava, A6 of diamonds. A lot of stack to play for, so his threat, his stack shouldn't feel too threatened. Should be able to safely take a flop here. They have 1.9, right? Yep. Dominating as a defender and flopping top pair alongside Smilkovic on the ace jack 10 board. 70% of the time, this one ends in a chop. 65. Little sprinkle. We didn't defend our big blind to flop an ace and fold, so presumably Stavar will call and take the turn. Yeah, the small bet's a welcome sight. Mm -hmm. Another 130 into the middle. Nine rolls off. A little uncomfortable, maybe for Smilkovich with it the is. ace deuce here. Yeah. Or he's going to bet the turn to set the price and then check back river. Both options are viable. We'll check. Chop it. Five on the end will indeed. Secure a chop at showdown, if we're allowed to get there. Smoke goes check back. Yeah, let's see how Johannes wants to approach this. He could block bed, he could check. If he does block bed, it'll be probably pretty small. Maybe you check to try to get your opponent to try to take a stab at your 10 X's and Jack X's, but he's gonna come in. Block bed. Less than the C-bet size of okay. Smirkovich. Happy to flat the 60. As these guys will carve. Money bubble of our 100K main event upon us. 175K will go to 20th, 19th, and 18th. And of course, 21st will be worth nothing. Unfortunately, one of our remaining 21 players will be he who experiences that displeasure. Mike Watson, some displeasure when you have to sit with seven big blinds. Remember, he did put two eights into the muck pre-flop not that long ago versus an open. Yeah, for about nine big blinds too. Definitely going to see if that one's going to pay off as he's sitting at the bottom with Eric Seidel. Seidel got a little bit less chips, 305k. Cards back in the air now. Another ace deuce, this time suited for Smilkovich. He's been relentless. Oh. 
Looks like a raise and take incoming. Loon Loon, 8 6 offsuit. Shouldn't be looking to play. This on the Stone Cold Bubble. No takers. Tense moments. Randy, understandably. These bubbles are so painful. It's thick, isn't it? How much are we talking? 175K, as mentioned. And you did point out that Mike Watson does have a bit more than Eric Seidel now. Seven bigs versus six. Yeah, there's a decent gap between the bottom two and the rest of the field. Mm -hmm. I think all those guys like Brent Kenny, Burns, and Greenwood and Kim are going to wait around. Like, come on. If one doesn't go down, the other one will. King-Queen suited for Johannes. Yeah, sweet spot here. Loon Loon, Ace 10. Look, normally this is a a good spot to reshove. 22 big blinds, small blind versus button. But maybe it's okay to just wait a little bit, let the other guys get it in. Yeah, I like this play a lot. Into the muck goes the Ace 10. Mateos asking for a count, already invested in big blind. Big blind Annie. Neck and neck and chips. I don't like that look. Okay, you're like, ooh, past the re-raise part. <laughs> Just calling. Open ender on the nine high, two hard board for Mateos over here, who we would presume has a range advantage. Yeah. Against Straver, even with Johannes opening from the button, just situationally, we expect. Yeah. Good this pot holdings. Have, this hand's got a lot of fight on the turn. Still open-ended, but wouldn't mind him putting some chips out there. What, what's King High going to do against this bet? Ace High would have a lot of trouble. Let's see. And plus, if they happen to hero call you, you can still hit a 7, 8, 5, or 10. Is this an over bet? Do you say 300? He's aggressive. Yeah. Into 285. As he wants to get this one over with here and now with nine high. King Queen happy to comply. Oh, on here. Something's going on. The boys kind of look at one another and say, hey, we got a mission. Let's work together here. All in All Let's in just get on the inside of this bubble, shall we? What are you picking on me for? Don't you know Watson's out there? What do you got here? One bruise between Holes and Malinowski. Board reads 8, 8, 10. Malinowski opened the pot pre. Not sure whether or not Holes was a three better or a flat caller. Pre flop, we can see that. Here it was a bet and a call. Fedor Knuckles. Based on the pot size, seems like it is a single raise pot. Yeah, so we would imagine Malinowski open for the raise. Fedor flatted. Yep. Flop. Check call of 100K, six on the turn. Now, Malinowski again goes to work. It's all two black chips and a white. 225K, likely to bet size. One.
one more call. Clubs come in. This one's getting kind of big. 100 a man on the flop, 225 a man on the turn. And the way Fedor has played this hand, seems like he's either got pocket nines or maybe an ace high flush draw that got there. Check call, check call. Action. Check, check. And Malinowski gave up there on the river, uncertain as yet what it is that Fedor tabled to haul it in. Hazard a guess, Randy? 10-8-8 board, check call, six, check call. I'm thinking two nines is, is very likely. Hope to see it. Maybe even a couple of sevens, who knows? Possible. Similar hand. Pretty Action much the same hand. At the other outer now. Yeah, 10 7, by the way. Okay, so it was the 10. Out there. 3 3 jump. jack on the flop. Four double pairs on the turn, and the ace deuce does hold. As Talal Shakurchi ends Kale Burns' main event hopes of making the money and bursts the bubble, much to the delight of the field here in Hoya. Well done, Eric. 175K locked up. Boys love to see it. I mean, that's great for Seidel and Watson as they were the two shortest stacks. It was Burns getting in queen eight of clubs, small blind versus big blind of ace deuce. Bricked out. We're in the money. Good feeling, especially for the likes of Mike Watson, who now maybe is thinking to himself, happy I folded those yeah, two eights. he's like, good decision, pat on the back. 175K to the bankroll. Locked up. Play is going to change. Watts is not going to pass up any spots anymore. Yeah, Same thing for Lun Lun. What? Are you going to bother me when I'm in the, the big blind here? You didn't have anything. Don't worry about it. Ace three versus Queen Jack. BVB in the money. 40 big blinds to start to hand. Yeah, we've actually applied some real grease to certain situations. This not necessarily one of them. Two, 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 two big stacks. Two point one. Ace three for Mateos. Jack for Petrangelo though, turning into top pair. Sneaky check there. Top pair, Jack Kicker. Board pairs now. Ace highs tend to like this sort of stuff. Yeah, with no bets on the flop, Ace high looking pretty good. Only has 7% though. Checks again, and I actually don't think that Mateos is going to fold to a bet. He just has Ace high. There's some draws out there in the form of spades and straight draws. Random stabs, of course. Mm -hmm. Min bet, ace three, mandatory call. Unless you have some six soul read on Nikki P, which is pretty hard to do. Yeah, no kidding. One third pot. Pot laying four to one. Call comes in. Mateos shooting his man a look here. Backdoor spades and the overcard show up. I don't think Petrangelo's in love with it. Jack doesn't play anymore as a kicker. There's money to do this thing. That's 75. Oh, not bad. That was not my run out. Ace high. I win. I was really trying Still to support you. 
<laughs> Trangelo. Trying to treat, treat. treat Mateo, says this Vietnamese sunshine appears to have been <laughs> treating him. <laughs> Had a chance to chat with him. He said he's been out on the golf course three straight days. Is there a worse? getting in some value out of here. Yeah, pretty fucking said it's jam packed out there on the course here, which is a big part of the appeal. The resort. This guy's a genius. No wonder you're in the money. Either like, you know, good news, bad, I don't know what the sports deck, you know? All right, right. I don't know if I've wasted it or... All right. Premiums only. Here we go. Premiums only. It's premiums, okay, Ali? We're in the money. Yeah, there's a premium. Ace three suited. <laughs> I think he's convinced the table. Sometimes a little speech play. Plant the seed. Three Nothing three wrong three. with it. Well, let's see if the speech play will work. Ace eight off suit. Mateos fares not too bad against uh, seven big blind jam. He's going to call. He knows. Tough guy to beat, but we'll see what we can do. Cards on their back. Watson looking to hit the side card or maybe pick up some flushes. Well, obviously he's much happier to be in this situation on the inside of the bubble than he would have been on the outside as Mateos has him in a bad way. Where they say it against the ace three, 825 in the middle. And wait a minute. Right. Wheelie. Seven, four, a deuce. Cars, Wheelie but... options indeed. Uh. We need a four of spades. And now, chop outs as well, courtesy of that board pairing seven of clubs. We still want the four of spades. It's my official lead. So yeah, the eight man. smacks Mateos and sends Mike Watson to the rail. His main event run comes to an end, but at the right time. Valiant efforts, squeeze into the money, 175k into the bankroll. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. <coughs> I think Watson's got some short deck in him, so it's not the end of his trip. Yeah, I think Mike likes to get out there. Rumble with the boys in the short deck streets. Yeah, he does. I look back. Enters all the big short deck events, actually, even the 100Ks. So we'll be seeing him over the next few days. Markovic, small blind versus big blind, and Sam Greenwood's got ace eight. Chips Wait. are flying in. Just the how? Dominated ace theme beginning to emerge. One, two. Smoke go. Shoot it up. 3x. Do upsize. Blind v blind. Yeah, I mean, Greenwood knows that Smirkovich has been out of line a lot. He's going to go for it. Snap off. We might have another casualty on our hands shortly. You're not Same wrong. Board <laughs> Same board as last time would be good for Greenwood. One point five. As predictably, we start to see big collisions here on the inside of this money bubble. Yeah. With 19 left, jack 5 4. Queen. Still in the lead. Greenwood looking for help on the turn. Both players hit the ace, but unfortunately, 
chop outs are not as replete as Greenwood would have hoped, given that the queen will play even if the board does pair. Needs an eight, gets a seven. Good game, Sam. Yeah. Good game. End of the run for Sam Greenwood. Finishing 19th, picking up his own little package of 175K. He wants me to blind us. Yes. Yeah. He too. We need to wait for a new player. Do we need to wait? What is him? We wait. Well, Greenwood also will be playing some short deck later. I know he loves that game. GG. 18 remains. It's important to make the newcomers pay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Mateos, it's important to make the newcomers pay. Doing a little hazing, are we? Just 18 runners remain. A little rebalancing effort, it would appear, as Fedor is racking up. Maybe just a color up? No, no. It's definitely a rebalancing effort. Shortest stack, sub 10 blinds belonging to Eric Seidel. Randy, 455K. <coughs> just feel like a lighter mood in the in the air than we always have on the bubble. I mean, so palpable. We actually do have a uh, pay jump around the corner. Next place we'll it's get 175k, but if you can survive one more, you get 20.4k more. Pay jump. Ace Jack for Johannes Strava. Upstairs, just a tickle north of the minimum. Smarkovich is in, 10 8 suited. How much you pay? Like 2 million? 1.8. Relocated 1 here to Thanks. our feature table. Currently sitting fourth in chips. Getting his lay of the land. Going to come along with this ace eight. That's been a hand that hasn't performed particularly well, although granted on one occasion. Did send one man packing. This interference, though, is a lot of cards shared. Between the bunch. King Queen Deuce board does provide the Broadway gutty to Strava, and his 90k follow through ends the ordeal. Straightforward execution there. Just a couple of eliminations away from getting down to two tables. Nick, fast. Randy, and you talked about that pay jump from the three straight flat payouts of 175K for 20th through 18th up to 195.4. Cool. 
race. Eight, seven, seven, eight off suit. suit. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, not, not standard, is it? Ten nine suited. Time to give this guy some action. Now, Fedor has been on the outer table, so he's not really up aware of what Smirkovich is up to unless he's been relentlessly looking at the Trident Poker Grinding, Plus app. Right. 370. Well, I think he's got some suspicions. He knows. Has the 10 9 suited? Goes to work on that button open, makes quick work of Stravers A7 out of the big. And Smilkovich, mind you, Hulse is tussling with a bigger stack in front of Smilko here. But Fedor performs oh so beautifully in these situations, doesn't he? Yeah, he's very well experienced. Had a lot of deep runs in North Cyprus, final tables. Ready for some redemption. <coughs> this guy's supposed to be retired. It's not fair. Ten six of clubs. Gonna try to attack the big blind of Lun Lun. Nine three is a hand that doesn't fare well when attacked. That's when he puts it into the mark. Round we go here in the main. 100k buy in event. Pay jump upon us. We had some outer table violence. Ali. Talk to me. Eric Seidel jams the cutoff. Ace 8 offsuit for nine big blinds. Called by Talal by Ace 9. Nine on the flop. Seidel's out. 17th place for him. Or. It's 18th place. 18th place. 18th place. So we are going to lock in that little pay jump we've been talking about. 195K guaranteed amongst the last 17 players. It's that way, doesn't it? Mm. What's going on here? One brewing. By the looks of it. Green Kenny. Ow. Jam 690k to so Timothy happy. Adams. You're so happy to have, but even with the short stack when you lost once you're in the money, four cards were. Well, ran out Jack 8 6. Okay. 10 on the turn. River card was a 10. Kenny had A7 suited against Ace Queen. Mm. Couldn't get there. We could, however, and by there, I mean down to just 16 players, which means it's time for a redraw, Randy. I like me some redraws. Record-breaking main event. Where we are waiting to award not one, not two, not three, but four seven-figure paydays. Just a staggering prize pool put together here as we welcome you back inside the broadcast booth here at the Hoiana Golf Resort in Hoi An, Vietnam. Just soaking up some of these recent developments. Ali Najat alongside Randy Liu and I want to say Nick Petrangelo, Daniel Smilkovic and Fedor Holes right to be the guys that we want to keep our eye on after this two table redraw, Randy. Yeah, most definitely. We know Fedor Holtz has been already attacking at our feature table, right? And Smirkovich has been relentless, right? Like, during the bubble, post-flop, he's just 
pre-flop really been really aggressive, even post-flop, right? Check raising with just pure air. Uh, my eyes are on them. We haven't seen much of Tala in the feature table, but we know he's the t clear tournament chip leader, five, 5 million in chips, and that's the guy who's going to put pressure on. Well, we are going to find out shortly on the back end of this break exactly who will be at our feature table. Don't go anywhere, though. More coverage of this 100K main as the money bubble has burst from Vietnam after this. We all hate these spots. We have a strong pocket pair, kings, queens, jacks. We call a re-raise and then there's an ace on the flop. And I'm gonna teach you what kind of hands you should be hero calling on the river. Raise. It's important to note that Malinowski has made it 5K pre-flop. It's actually more than 3X raise. Maybe Linus is reading into that as some kind of weakness. Come with a four bet in spots like this. But not on this occasion. Now let's get right into the action. Here Linus with an interesting 3-bet. I think it's fine to call or to 3-bet. Typically in softer environments, if you play low stakes or mid stakes tournament, just call, keep the variance low, keep a lot of hands dominated. But in these fields, people are a lot more stickier, so it makes sense to also mix these hands as a 3-bet. Pocket jacks can go either way, 4-bet and get the money in pre-flop. Linus is going to certainly have some weaker hands like 10s and 9s, and he's also going to be calling weaker hands against the 4-bet. If the money goes in and he has a bigger pair, then so be it. If we look at the 3-betting range from the big blind, we see it's very linear, meaning a lot of strong hands as a bluff like jack 10 suited, and of course all the big pocket pairs and ace-king. Now for the button, he's supposed to defend really wide. It's early in the tournament, so you should be calling with a lot of hands unless you know your opponent is very, very tight, then you should adjust. Three bet means it's 20K. Let's just take a flop. And it's an ace high flop, which puts Lolliger square in front. Ace six, four and Lolliger into 42, five. Heavily downsized 6K. If you size a bit up more, right, you're just going to get called by better. This invites calls from middling pocket pairs that don't want, don't really love the ace-high board, but will feel committed. Now on the flop, it's very straightforward. Linus wants to bet very often with a small sizing. Button has a lot of auto folds. Uh, he can also choose a big sizing and go three suits for value with like ace-king. Ace-nine is a nice hand to bet small. That's what Linus opts to do. And I think it also works really well against most players. As we see, the button in general is supposed to play very aggressive against the small sizing, which I think is very unrealistic. That makes this, these small bets on these textures very attractive and very profitable. Linus isn't going to gain much information since such a wide variety of hands would be willing to call 6K. It's tricky because you feel like if I bet again, I'm only gonna get called by better. I think on the turn, it's also a very standard check. You want to pot control. We also see that, and it's going to be very interesting for the river. If Linus decides to bluff, he should be choosing hands that have some sort of outs, like Jack-10, King-Jack, where you can at least hit your gut shot. A couple of checks on the turn and the driest of rivers. You mean that Limitless is on some kind of middling pair? Got a time card used here. Two jacks. Doesn't have a spade in his hand, so if he was looking to pick off some spades, it would be in his favor. Malinowski going to look Linus up as Lolliger gets value out of Ace-9. Now, on the river, Linus decides to value bet, which I think makes a lot of sense. If we check, from my experience, Maybe not on these stakes, but if you play mid stakes, low stakes, you're not gonna get that many bluffs from King X. And also it's questionable if people value bet all the ace X, especially if they have a very, very weak ace X, people don't find these thin value bets. Now, Linus decides to bet, which I think is very, very good here, of course. And now Victor has a decision to make. And we see actually that Jax is 100% call, why? Well, Linus should never really bluff with a jack because jack 10, king jack, these kind of hands want to be bluffing on the turn. So when you determine your hero calling range or the hands you want to be hero calling with, then you should take hands or blockers that do not block Linus bluffing range. And here Linus should be bluffing with all sorts of air that gave up on the turn, didn't turn any equity or immediate draws, 
And now on the river with nine high or 10 high or eight high, you wanna be bluffing those hands. So we see that Victor wants to call jacks, but very often wants to fold 10 nines or eights because those hands make it more likely that Linus actually has a value hand. And it makes it less likely that Linus has a bluff. So Victor played this hand perfect, Linus played this hand perfect, and this is just sometimes how it is. Of course, when you play against the best in the world, you cannot just wait for aces. Sometimes you have to make some loose hero calls. Linus will certainly have enough bluffs here. So great call by Victor. We shouldn't be results orientated, didn't work out. And of course, nice value bet by Linus as well, well played. And don't forget to type exclamation mark poker coaching in the chat to get more information. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker.
a flat. Somewhat inviting for well, the blinds to Sebastian. hop in there. All right, yes. So what did you do with my chips? Neither does. But all the comes. Here. And somebody wins a giant bot, you only box anyway. Yeah, but if you win the giant pot and then you win the tournament, then you get Great board for both hands. Uh, I just see out Daniel Smerkovic checking yeah, two so aces. Yeah, basically always do. If he then drops it off, you're like, why did he even win it? And if it wins the tournament, it's like also tilted. That's Obviously, not. Strava prefers to have a check in front of him than a bet, I would imagine. Let's check back. Two tones on the turn. And you can see that Strava checked back the tens because, you know, they're very deep. To four from the money. Still want to contain the pot a bit, even though I don't think he's that worried about his hand being worse. But you just want to try to minimize the number of streets that bets go in. And with checking, though, Daniel Smerkovich is coming with a huge bet, 150k. Oh, 50k, excuse me. Yeah, not quite as huge as you thought <laughs> it was, but in fact, quite small. Yeah, um, a nice size bet for Johannes Strava here. Comfortable. We get to show it down for cheap. Safe. Doesn't yes. really change anything. Seven of Diamonds is dry. Strava's 50k call in position brought the pot to 295,000. Maybe we see Smerkovic coming for big sizing. Thinking that. Well, I mean, he knows the two aces is most likely good. His opponent check back doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't have Jack X. Most of the time, it is pocket pairs that are going to be willing to call bet. Hold on. Hold on. Excuse, excuse me? All in? All in? Well, this is a surprise. And just put yourself in Johannes Strava's shoes as he faces this jam from Smilkovic. I mean, it does feel like maybe I'm just getting bowled over here. Kind of wouldn't mind if the implications of being wrong weren't so great. Clicking call and just being like... I think of him, but when they come up, he will... Right. Just like that, like boom. Yeah. Feels like the ace king is getting thrown around. again. You have this these, these, these nails can't mug the crowd. Oh, an ace-queen for Ibinger off of the shortest stack in the room, Randy. Cold, cold, cold. Don't need a crystal ball to know which way this one's headed. Jam. Call. Whoops. Matias doing what he's supposed to do, and Loon Loon just had the medicine for him here. But we still deal flops, turns, and rivers. Sometimes bad beats do loom. That's certainly what Ibinger is hoping. Jack 10 4 with a couple of hearts, and there true. are paths to victory for Matias. Swapping outs. Mm. Nine of hearts does like. open the door. Two way straight draw. And the better of two flush draws. Ibinger, 29% equity, one to come. Board pairs, though, and that is it. That was a good deal. Right? For Matthias, I think. And one time, Jeff. And two. So you <laughs> like this, where you, you look back and go, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Yeah. You know, and you've seen that look on a lot of players' faces over the years, Randy. 100%. I'm sure this has happened in this tournament where someone bet and got jammed on and you know eventually bail out earlier in the tournament what timing here for two kings especially for mateos i know under the gun big stack looks like he's getting after it i mean he is getting after it but yes it does look like it and strava here two aces wow. no way two eighty. 
Now listen. We already know that for Strava to be three betting in this spot off of his stack depth from the small blind, real hands loom. Ali, just stop. He's got two kings. What yeah. is he going to do about oh, this? Oh, no, no, no. We're getting him in. But when are we doing it? Now. Only one hand beats us, Pre. Yeah, he's going to get it now. Yeah. Jam, snap, oh. cold deck. No one loves to see this more than the shortest stack in the room, which belongs to Kale Burns. Seidel down there as well. They're just rooting for King right now. Yeah, they are. Green 10, deuce, aces. Still in front. They get clubby. Not this time. Board pairs, and now... Just one of two kings in that deck would spell disaster for Stravar. Any other card, and it's his. Jack. Safe paint. On the river. And that really was a so disappointed when it was face king, deck face king last for time. You like that Hamoni Berico, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's some good stuff. I really like the, I forget what they, what do they call octopus there? Pulpo? Pulpo. Mm -hmm. Really tender. The best. Oh. Quite tender. Two queens? Well, the ace nine is a little more tender. The queens, I think, are a bit tougher. Queens is flat oh, calling yeah. here. This is hey, very oh. notable. Hmm. Some misbehavior? by Smilkovich, or just acknowledging the fact that Mateos is a bigger stack? That's a part of it. I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm curious to see how he maneuvers his post-flop. You and I both. Yeah. Or maybe he was hoping for some induction from the smaller stacks to reshove. Yeah, that's true. Behind you. Didn't think it, a squeeze. He might not think it's likely that he can get Mateos in for this many blinds with a bad hand. So I can see where he's coming from. Most certainly not folding post flop, especially on this board. Ace of Hearts and the Nine of Spades both working on this board texture right now. Note to sizing, Ali. 190K is mm -hmm. not small. A very warm welcome back to the break desk here at the Hoi Anna Golf Resort and Casino in Hoi An. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, for event number nine, Randy. The 100K main event, a record-breaking 100K main event. And in the words of Jason Kuhn, and I'm paraphrasing, the biggest 100K of the year. So with that being said, without further ado... Let's jump back in. Final two tables. What did I miss during the bubble, Randy? I presume snail pace-ish kind of play? Snail pace, but some of the players were getting out of line, mainly uh, Daniel Smirkovich. He was just being relentless, being re-raising hands that weren't that good and trying to attack on people who were trying to sneak into the money. Um, but, you know, there was a big clash from Tan Shuen against Michael Soiza on the outer table. It was set over set. I saw. Pocket nines, nine high flop, turn was a jack, so I had check raise all in and stacked him for a lot of chips. He lost 1.4 million to bust out in, I believe, 22nd place. And eventually it was Kale Burns to go on the money bubble. He jammed small blind into Talashikurchi, queen eight of clubs into ace deuce suited and bricked out. Well, talking of Talashikurchi, currently our chip leader with 84 big blinds as we Take a quick look at the app now. Talal out in first, Daniel Smilkovic in second, Timothy Adams sat in third, Fedor in fourth, and as you mentioned already, Michael Soiza sat in fifth, rounding out the top five. The stack depth getting notably shallower compared to when I went away. It was around the 45, 46 big blind mark, but now we're looking at a 35 big blind average. Some ICM considerations, Randy, given that, you know, we're looking to 
set the final table. I tonight. mean, there's always going to be ICM considerations as we're just deep into the tournament approaching the final table. Right now, going to be people attacking. Chip leader is going to try to chip up as short stacks hang in there, try to double up and spin it up. Well, let's spin the wheel, shall we? Talal Shakurchi, our chip leader, an overwhelming chip lead, might I add, at this feature table. Blinds 25,000, 50,000 as things stand, although I do believe that the blinds have actually gone up. Or not yet, am I mistaken? Maybe not. 25k, 50k, final two tables. Everyone currently guaranteed 195,400 for their efforts. We are on a 21k pay jump between 16th and 15th. The four players that managed to sneak their way into the money, but then obviously bust post bubble mike watson sam greenwood eric seidel and bryn kenny all early eliminations here in the money as we dive back into the action few minutes left this blind level andy limitless in the cutoff So two final tables here in Vietnam. He got a seventh place in event number one, 164k. Ninth place finished in the 75k. Yeah, that brutal but aces against Jacks. Yeah, he jammed two aces for 20 blinds and two Jacks. Jack on the flop. Shout out Stevie Chidwick. Although he has admitted, Randy, that he's run incredibly well to find himself here fifth in chips humble incredibly humble I believe one ace queen against ace king on the well, close to the bubble if i'm not mistaken all right so victor malinowski did not Wait, see bet king six yeah. six talal defends king four hits top pair Checks again. Three hearts out there. Let's see if Limitless opts for putting some chips in. Jack High. Not the greatest showdown value type hand. Maybe he wait for a river. Yeah, double delayed. That's what he's opted for. We can see that the king on the river giving to allow the full house. Maybe Victor gonna ride this one to showdown yeah Should but to allow give him the Talal's chance not gonna give him a chance right he's seen someone check twice very likely he's up against an ace x gotta get that value because ace x would never bit the river if check two now don't forget ladies and gentlemen you can Sweat the outer table action over on the Triton Poker Plus happens. Victor, let's go of his ace high, Jack high, <laughs> strike one. Yep, uh, three checks, right? Three on the day, yeah, three on the day, one on the return. I feel like it seems to be the very early stages of a shift and then. You know, warm up as the blinds do go up, just as I suspected. That final two table redraw happening just before the blind level increase. 30,000, 60,000, 60,000. Brought to you by Poker Steak. Shout out Poker Steak. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, I have the Triton Poker Plus app on the side while you stream and watch the stream with us. Follow the outer table. Yeah, talking of watching the stream with us, shout out to the thousands of you watching over on Twitch and YouTube. The viewers over on YouTube, as always, if you could take a couple of seconds out, drop us a quick like. Let's get that like number up to over a thousand. Just as a show of support for the hard work that's being put in behind the scenes. Randy, also a fan of getting the numbers up. And we're obviously looking to continue growing our channel platform. 
with this high stakes free poker content. Nothing else like it out there in the world. Nikki P opens two sevens, ace town, ace ten down from Mateos. Johannes Strava gonna lay down king six. Uncontested. Your chips are important. You're important, Randy. <laughs> but your chips are also important. That too. They're more important, I would say. Breathing is important. Make sure you breathe out there whilst playing poker chat. Look at that mountain of chips yeah. in front of Talao. Oh, Overwhelming okay. uh, chip leader with 16 yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I didn't do it deliberately, sorry. This is your first time? <laughs> a few people <laughs> asked, or oh, not a few people. <laughs> Rhymes with Orange saying, has Mateos played in any prior events at this stop? He has indeed. He's been at our future table a few times. Three caches, in fact, at this series. Cash the 75k for 159,000. Cash the 30k for 64,000. And then cash the 15k for 39,900. Sam Grafton, obviously responsible for the biggest bluff of the series so far feels like at least of the tournament from what we've seen on TV yeah that was a pretty pretty big fold from Adrian Mateos two aces 10-10x king onto this hand real quick BBB roughly 30 big blinds in play Dry board, action on Strava. King high is pretty good for both sides. Paired board. Yeah, limbed pot. A little bet coming incoming. Don't know. Protection, Randy. Yeah. Honorable king high. And actually gets the same hand to fold. Nicely done. Some guys would just try and check that down and don't get to scoop the pot. Yeah, can we take a moment to appreciate both Nick Petrangelo and Johannes Strava? Nicky P came to Vietnam with the 0 for 23 monkey on his back and has since cashed three events, a fifth place finish in the 25k for 286,000, cashed the 30k as well as the 50k. So three caches here and now adding a fourth to his Triton track record. We've spoken time and time again about the monster under the bed that is variance. Even the best in the world fall victim to it. Shout out to the viewers, by the way, seeing a lot of love come in. Due to, you know, you guys just showing up. Appreciate it. Glad you guys are enjoying the coverage. We are live on a 45 minute delay the integrity of the game. The plan is to play down to the final table tonight. Yep. That is the plan. And then tomorrow we'll be crowning our main event champion. Said champion will be walking away with 3,250,000 for their efforts. For some, it would be a career best score. For others... It would just be another day in the office in the form of seven-figure scores. Meanwhile, there's a 50k turbo going on. Do tell. Jason Kuhn hunting for number five, <laughs> still in it. Okay. In it with the likes of Isaac Haxon, Artem Arthurosin, Punat Punsri, Chris Brewer. JK getting busy. Yeah, five remaining. You can follow that on the Triton Poker Plus app. How about it, Jason? 
rough start to the series, but did obviously final table the 75k now. The 50k turbo as Soiza plus two and sizable chips chip stack himself. Currently sat fifth. Timothy Adams in the small blind, ace nine suited. Let's see if he wants to play this one. Oh. Gonna make the call here. Grafton, a deuce of hearts. Yeah, Squiddy on the short end. Getting laid six to one. Tim, you have like 2.8, 2.9? Yeah. Not interested in defending as the suited ace -X. Go to war. Adam's actually covering. So is it. Have a small. And proceeds to flop the not flush draw on the queen, jack, seven. A couple of diamonds out there, Randy. Yeah, it's a hard one to... Continuation bet with for Michael Soiza. No connection at all. Small blind flatting, earliest position. Does have a lot of broadways in it. Let's see how Soiza wants to maneuver. Start with check. A board texture that he seems to think smashes Timothy's flatting range. Yeah, I think the small blind can flat hands like king queen, ace queen sometimes, and you know, Jack-10. There's a lot of hands that the small blind will continue with. It's, the small blind flatting is, you know, a little bit afraid of the early position raise, so you can see it slow down with those kinds of hands rather than three betting. As played, Timothy Adams got the nut flush paired board. Big bet. Almost pot size. I was hoping to pick up some chips from uh, Cautious. King Queen or so. Timothy up to third in chips. Just ahead of Fedor and Michael. Looking to close the gap on Daniel Smilkovic. Responsible for that incredible spin story from way back to the start of the series. Was down to eight big blinds after a I want to say a level and a half? No, it was, level, it was level one. Oh, sorry, an orbit and a half. I do apologize. <laughs> Not a level and a half, you're right. An orbit and a half. Against Greenwood. Then went on to hold the chip lead with four or five tables left. Quite the story. Smirkovich has got game. Like, he's <laughs> just relentless. So I'm excited to watch him play. Currently sitting in second. Shikurchi, chip leader, ace nine suited, leaning. Timothy Adams is out. Doesn't want to mess with Tawal. Malinowski, four deuce suited. Not the best hand. <laughs> is connected though, suited. Gonna know where he's at post flop most of the time. Well, we can see he doesn't want to see spades. Ace, jack, six, this hand, one would assume, is over and done with. Now, yep. Randy, I have to ask, this field, as Talal finds out, see that takes it down. Stacked. Stacked field. As a you know, a poker fan, a poker purist, someone that just enjoys watching these higher stakes, we've seen a lot of these guys on our screens time and time again over the last decade. Some newer faces, but some guys, you know, who have just been playing world-class poker for the better part of 10, 15 years. How do you root for any of these guys? Like, who? how do you separate who to root for and who not to root for? Well, I mean, that's, that's a... That's and a don't worry, you don't have to tell me who you're not rooting for. 
Or who you're anti-sweating. That's <laughs> not, not why I'm asking. I'm not anti-sweating anyone, of course. You know, everyone's got their own fan favorites, you know, whether it's from their socials or just watching their content that they've some hands they've played. You know, I think uh Fedor definitely has a lot of people rooting him on, right? You know, he's got his own training course. He's got he's always had these fans when he's made his sick run and I think Limitless is uh another big favorite. Right. Like someone who's played the highest stakes is willing to battle pretty much anyone at Nolan and hold them. I think these two probably got a lot of fans and I think Grafton, you know, He's just all so chatty. Yeah, fresh off of that. I like them. I like them all. I think they're all worthy of winning. You know, for different reasons. I do like them. Well, I'll tell you what. I know for a fact that Brian Kim's sister mm. has been tuning in. Brian Kim came over today to have a quick word and just say thank you for the commentary and the fun we've been having in the booth. Apparently, Brian Kim's sister is his biggest fan. Watches all of the streams. That's awesome. So shout out to Sally. I'm a big fan of Brian Kim. Um, first time Triton. I've been very impressed with his play. He just seems to have conviction. Very confident table. And very respectful too. You know? He is. He's uh, just you know, saying. <coughs> you, you can tell like he's doesn't have the ego while he's playing. A lot of fun to be around. That's for sure. Onto this hand real quick, and a little pop for Adrian Mateos. I believe. Go on. Timothy Adams has this won huh? this, this main event time. before. He did. No, Jeju 2019. Uh, two million Hong Kong buy in. Won 28 no? million Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're okay. right. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, Not too bad. Sorry. That was the No Limit main event. Yeah. Thank you. I will no make limit limit have a, yeah. another round of VIP, VIP tickets. The no only main event win. winner still Should in the be. There's not too many of them, right? Well, the Sam, Sam Grafton's 200k doesn't count as a main. The, the coin mm, no, <laughs> that's not the main. Let me check one more name. No, Fedor got second in the 2017 Macau main. Right, yeah, that's when I first discovered Triton. Yeah, they they weren't didn't have a big production back then. Am I right in saying that was you, Lex? In Macau, no, no, we did not have a, uh, a Triton stream back then. Maybe they had a really small one that I'm not aware of, but no, this was this was the early days. Okay, this is pre Montenegro, pre Jeju. Okay, maybe, just maybe, I'm thinking of a different one. You are. It's okay. I do. Do remember hearing Lex's voice? One of my favorite. Yeah, he did some. Poker. I believe it, he he's done some with me in Montenegro and Jeju, but not Macau. See some love for Rui Cow in the chat. Legend. By the way, if you haven't already clicked right. that subscribe button, I do suggest it because a lot of content comes out in between festivals and some of our biggest and most viewed hands have included <laughs> and the likes Rui of Rui Cow and Elton Tang, Tom Duan, Phil Ivey. I'm, ne I'm never going to get over that 8-7. No, it's going to be... Seven deuce of Tom Duan and Rui. Yeah, no, the the most ridiculous hand I've ever seen, really. She told us some. Grafton, ace, eight of hearts, Talasha Kirchhoff. Eight, ten, plus this. Well, Tala defended king four off suit earlier. Let's see what he does with king seven. Ace more. Gonna come along. Because this is five. Oh, yeah. UK on UK? UK on UK, indeed. Talasha Yeah. 900. No, yeah. The quote unquote. Non pro, arguably the toughest non pro 
yeah. of all time. Him and Paul are just, they call themselves businessmen, but they are. I mean, Talal's. They play like pros. Talal's online resume. I mean, this You guy, don't want to know about it. It's so sick. It's insane. Main event titles. I mean, this is someone that, you know, is juggling businesses and whatnot, as well as competing at the high stakes. And not only competing at the high stakes, has been consistently holding his own for as long as I can remember. Yeah, I know. Right a lot. He, he's also been playing mixed games as well, too, on online. So he is a well first poker player. Really is. Do you remember his old full tilt well, avatar? No, I don't know, actually. I'll get it up for you, because I don't really know how to describe it. <laughs> okay. No. I know he's a sick man. He's just so good at poker. So many achievements. So many titles. More titles than a lot of these guys play in this field right oh, now. Dude. While you figure that out, Timothy Adams got two aces. Two aces. Is that it? Mateo City on King Jack of Clubs in the cutoff, looking to put some action in, whether it's in the form of a call or three bet. TBD. Wouldn't fault the pill here from Mateo in position. So is it going to get out of the way on the button? As will the blinds, although Strava, 10 6 suited. Multi-way affair. No, he's going to stay out of trouble right now with heavy ICM implications. Good flop for Timothy Adams. Let's see how he wants to proceed, whether it's in the form of a C-bet or check. It's a type of board where it's not expected to see that too much, but we'll see. Maybe comes in small. No, he's going to pot control. He's aware that he shouldn't be C-betting too wide on this board. Doesn't hurt to have some aces. Let's see if Mateos wants to attack. Uh, he is going to attack. He's going sizable here. He's hoping he can bet large enough just to get these... Unpaired hands to check fold. To really de incentivize some of the. Even Ace X's. Yeah. Ace X backdoor Broadway. But if he gets called here, I think he's really going to feel like Timothy Adams is holding some kind of pocket. By the way, just to finish my sentence before I get showered, not backdoor Broadway. That is not possible. I meant the backdoor Broadways with flush draws. Just in case that wasn't clear, Randy, you never know. Adams to act, aces. They mm. feel like pouncing right here, right now, just in case Adrian does have sevens through tens. No, I think he's feigning weakness, it feels like maybe. I mean, the bigger bet's probably confusing him a bit. What did he do? He did check raise? Oh, he did check raise. Interesting. Hmm. The one and done from El Matador, Timothy Adams, climbs up to 3.5 million. Moves up to second in chips. Average stack, 35 big blinds. Timo up there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hi. Hi. Raid a lot. Al leading the pack. 88 big blinds at this feature table down the other end. Sam Grafton. Fresh off of. I say fresh. You know, it was five months ago. Maybe. Maybe he needs to add another title. Slacken, Sam Grafton, in the money. 
in a high stakes tournament. Surprise, surprise. Champion in the Coin River Invitational 200k for 5.5 mil. Looking to add another seven figure score to his resume. Got some work to do. Does our Squiddy. No. To log on and work here. King 8 offsuit. Petrangelo. King Jack. Sitting on 35 big blinds. I think a lot of guys are pretty happy just keeping it single raise pot right now. Heavy ICM implications. Jack is good for Petrangelo. Law. Start with a C bet. 125k. Decent spot here for Trangelo. Mid pair. Want to contain the pot. Keep it small. Comes in with a call. Just under 600k. We drop a nine on the turn. Straight draws coming around, Henry. Yeah, Talal does pick up some equity. What does he know? Drawing to a chop. A Interesting turn card. Like, does he want to try and realize this small amount of equity that he's picked up, one over and a gut short? Does he deem this a turn card? He wants to continue firing on with that king of clubs blocker in hand. Blocking hands like 10-8, king-10. Yeah, he's thinking about it. I mean, he knows that the regs want to try and not put in too many chips without the goods. Ace of diamonds on the river. Very, very interesting card for Petrangelo. Most likely a slam dunk check, but when it checks to Chikurchi, he can't think the king-8 is good. Does he want to try to represent that ace? Does he think a queen or jack would fold to a river bet? If so, how much? It's really difficult for Petrangelo to be unpaired. Yeah, but if it's a weak pair, it's hard. Jack. Jack's good. Nick Petrangelo building. Building a stack here. Building a bit of a resume as well at this series in Vietnam. Four caches now. Question is, is how sizable is this one going to be? Yeah, Vietnam's been great for Petrangelo before to stop zero caches. One final table so far here. Fifth place. Event number one, 286K. And two smaller caches, 22nd and 12th. Keeping an eye on that event number 10. Jason Kuhn in the hunt for his fifth title. Mike Haxton, Arto Martiroche, and Chris Brewer, and Puntsri all out there battling for the final No Limit Hold'em title of the series as Squiddy battling for another Triton final table. Jacks under the gun and Mat Mateos. We got to fold earlier on in the tournament, Randy. The aces, that is. Waking up with the goods. What timing is this? Two aces. 300k. Grafton's sitting on 20 blinds against a guy who he knows. Three bet light. Is this just jam and one jack is gone? You see that from Strava? He's drawing to one out. He's drawing one immediate out. Is there a chance he can just slow down and not lose all of his chips? I don't think so. Not 20 bigs. 
I don't think so either. Not against Mateos. Look, if it's me three better. Yeah, he's in. Sure. Snap jam from Grafton. Met with a snap call. The aces of Mateos in fantastic shape here. Four to one favorite with five cards to come. If Mateos can hold, by the way, we'll move up to second in chips with 15 left. Sometimes it's just your time to bow out of the tournament, although the 10-9-5, Randy. Some chance. Yeah, Squiddy with a little smirk. He you sees it. Hold, right? One out. Clubs. One out once for Sam Grafton. Not the spot you want to be in in a 100K tournament. Four of clubs. Pleasure, guys. Yeah. Seals is fate, the 200K coin rivet champion. Fist bump between Grafton and Mateus. As always, gentlemen, is Sam Grafton. Yeah, pure class act. Really is a class act. Nice cash for him here in Vietnam. Didn't have a cash before this one. Nice to save it for the higher buy and stuff, Randy. You of know, course. Dig, dig yourself out of the hole a little bit, you know? 0 for 7, cash is the main. Adds just shy of 200,000 to his Triton track record. Everyone now guaranteed 216,000, by the way, Randy. We are 6 off the final table. It's a nice little pay jump for everyone. How about this for a top three? Talal Shikurchi, Adrian Mateos, and Fedor Holtz. Strong. It's about as strong as it gets. GG's in the chat for Sam. See a lot of love out there. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty more of Squiddy. Those new festival dates being released today. Yes, Cyprus coming up in May. Yeah. We've got London. Was it July slash August? This, this is, you had one job, <laughs> Randy. Is I, I queue you up. Okay. For the, the date you, release. I'm roughly correct. I know you are. Yeah, so we're going to be going back to Cyprus May 10th through 25th. Fifteen. Uh, 15-day festival, as if the 13 days here weren't enough. Uh, Strava, Rebets is king suited. Shikurchi asking for a count. Yeah, King Deuce is going to find the mark. And going back to the May dates that have been released, Randy, if you haven't already dropped us a follow over on Instagram. Do. That's where that information was you know, in the form of a reel. A lot of content, interviews, behind the scenes footage with some of your favorite players. All posted on the Triton Poker Series Instagram page. More importantly, if you like the free content here, give us the thumbs up. Let us continue that for you in Cyprus, in London coming up, two guaranteed stops for you unheard of it is unheard of it's the first time that i found out about a triton series by more than a week <laughs> to madrid i got a call from andy was on a plane yeah, like from kosamui the 3. same day is that 3.40 because someone without mentioning any names me didn't have a passport <laughs> 140 well, here we are. Here we are. And we're friends now. This is great. Wait, we're friends? Oh, awkward. Okay, never mind. Easy now. Where's Ollie? <laughs> Easy now. I want to go that far. Two nines. Big blind versus cutoff. Mateo's going to keep it small. Going to see a lot of this. Pre-final table. Good flop from Mateos. Over pair, two to board. Petrangelo, two overs. Ace of clubs, not too bad. See him reaching for chips already. 
And then again, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to bet it. Just counting down his stack. Check. It's a blank. That is as bricky as it gets. And the deuce of hearts, Mateus still with the overpair and the equity advantage, 86% on this deuce of hearts turn. Yeah, let's see if Mateus comes in swinging. He likely has the best hand. Pot size turn probe. Yeah. From Mateus, swiftly met by the Nick Petrangelo fold. Nicky P, by the way, looking fresh, beard shaven, fresh haircut. He's been out in the sun a little bit. Heard he's been at the golf course Wouldn't three days him. in a row. Yeah, love that. Three days at the golf course met by three days in the main event. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the magic potion right there. Also, got his first cash here in Triton. Three caches so far. This is a good trip. Oop. Can get better. <laughs> can. Can get a trophy. Can get one of those seven-figure scores up top. <coughs> Four of them to be had. All right. Because you butchered it, Max asking London when. Something we should know. <laughs> I will say, in our defense, that we were in the booth when this announcement was made. Thank you. But London can confirm July 27th until the 10th of August in Cyprus. Yeah. North Cyprus, that is. May 10th through 25th, heading back to Merit. Love that place. Yeah. The oh. Diamond. Ooh, All the stops have been great here. All right, let's take a flop here. Limitless versus Soiza. BB versus Button. Sub 20 big blinds to play for. Connection. Limitless. Yeah, top pair, top kicker. Potential big bet spot for Victor. 3.30 in the middle. Feels like a big bet spot. Don't Feels hate being that way, but proven wrong. Let's see. 2.50 into 3.30. So you're... It's okay, don't you don't... It's fine. <laughs> you tag, tag nailed me in it. next time. Yeah. Tag you in. See about getting the job done from Limitless. Max James saying, you coming back to Samui or Thailand, Henry? I will be. I live in Phuket, Thailand. It's the place I call home for the time being. Where else are you based, Randy? I know before when you were... Playing 25, 50, 100, just basically challenging anyone. I'm finding more out about you as the days go by. <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, those battles that happened on the online felt happened from hotels and grind houses all around the world, not just the home base. That was a long time ago, man. I can't remember. You know, this could even be pre Black Friday Ooh. for some, some of it. Wait, how old are you? 37? Maybe something like that. Wow, oh, you got a decade on me, bro. Yeah, decade. The oh. OG. The real OG the, right here. The OG right here <laughs> in the booth. Legend. Petrangelo. Let's raise. Matala Shikurchi has been defending that big line quite a bit lately. Yeah, really leveraging his chip lead over the field and... Going to pass up on this oh. opportunity, the plus one open. Slightly sized up open from Nick Petrangelo. Question, Randy, has your internet ever cut out whilst you've been grinding? I know you were obviously grinding many, many tables at one time as we dive back into it. Most certainly table. it has, but let's take a look at this. Brian Kim is putting chips out. Oh, boy. What do we have? Brian Kim... Against Lunlun by the looks of things. Kim in the small had Lunlun covered. Loon was down to his final 10 big blinds. Kim ISO jamming from the small with 15 bigs. And he's going to be left with five big blinds. Shortest stack in the tournament. Byproduct of Loon's ace 10. 
holding up against Kim's ace and nine. Once again, shout out to Brian Kim's biggest fan, his sister back home, watching all of his streams. Love that, by the way. Big fan of the family. Family support. Yeah, the family support in poker it really does go a long way. Sally, if I'm not mistaken. Sally Kim, shout out. So we see Brian Kim down to four bigs. Another yeah. cash here. Three final tables, right? Is it three or is it two? Is it really? It is two final tables. Two final tables. But only two caches, but both were final tables. In trouble here, though. Going to need a spin up. He is indeed currently guaranteed 216,000. So, decent ish day, or couple of days in the office, regardless. But yeah, just quickly. What do you want to know now? Hotel lobby internet, or hotel internet in general. Did you used to carry around one of those sticky and internet dongle things? No, I, I was using whatever internet I could find. No, I did not have one of those portable okay. ones. Yeah, Big, I've had, I've Biggest had... pot that you've lost due to an internet disconnection. Jeez, I actually don't know. Are we talking like 5K? Yeah, probably. That's disgusting. It definitely has happened. Not so common nowadays, obviously, in 2023. Shout out Fiber Optics Internet. Internet's bad down under, I'll tell you that. Two kings for Soiza. Tala is reaching for three betting chips. Eight, six suited, out of line. Bad timing. Yeah, certainly bad timing, Randy. Maybe the fact that Michael is kind of middle of the pack, if you will. Late position open. Some heavy ICM. Implications, obviously, in effect with 15. Also, you know, the four bet from Soiza, but there's some EV to be added here, not just ICM. We'll talk about it. The conclusion of this hand, Shikoji, with an interesting spot now, given the four bet click. Yeah, it's exactly 2x four bet. Gonna make the call here. Just making the stance. Well, wow. making a stance against top of range. 1.5 million out there. Soiza with 1.6 back. If Talal flops any piece, may be in trouble. Ace, Jack, nine. Two clubs, one diamond. This is Four awkward. Pot. This is very awkward for two kings, right? Four bet pot. Yeah, he's cautious. He's a little bit worried. He could be up against, like, some ace queen, ace jack, ace five suited. Plausible. Two kings blocks king queen. Yeah, blocking some of the four bets. King I, ten comes I don't to think mind. he thinks he's up against eight six suited right now. Oh Tala is reaching for chips here. 600k. Oh my, snap fold. Soiza. Outplayed by Talal. You look shocked. Well, raid a lot. Raiding. Just finds the 600k. Gets the kings to fold in the four bet part. Cut off the button and extends the lead here. Significant blow for Soiz's stack. Talal now playing 94 big blinds with 15 players left. Let's just uh, head on over to event number 10 quickly. Four players remain. Chris Brewer and Artur Martirosian tied at the top. Punsri and Kuhn still in the mix. Ike Haxton eliminated <laughs> in fifth. Everyone over there guaranteed 182,000. Don't forget, Jason Kuhn looking for his fifth Triton title we'll keep you guys updated you can do too much or you go all in call ace king and you lose the full obviously stack. sweat a long way from the triton yeah. poker plus app possible for at least it was easy i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I think still last year. Yeah, I think it's a decent chance. Still <laughs> to be honest, but I still six five still. But I still can't do anything. You know, that's the sad part. You know, like what can I do? <laughs> so well, six, six, <laughs> yeah, six, sure. Five, one, five, I eight. thought six five. Six, I five. think seven that's four more like. Huh? It was I five. could see. It, it was better than six one. It looked like seven four. Timmy Adams sometimes just three bet ripping it in. King six. Keep it simple. Big blind versus dealer button. Call. Jam call. We got a big coin flip going on. We've got a second place stack coin flip going on. Randy, talk about flipping for six figures in equity here. Fifteen left in the Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam main event. Fair fight. Five to come. It's come eight four deuce. Only backdoor for Strava being the form of a will. 3.8 out there. The seven of hearts. Hills off on the turn. Timothy Adams now just one card away from moving up to second in chips with 14 left. GG. Well played. That is a big hold for Timothy Adams. Big blind, V button, Johannes Strava. Yeah, those are mine. Nothing you can do there, Randy. Big nope. blind jams on you, gonna have them crushed. Decent amount of the time. Flipping for his tournament life in this 100K and coming up short against one of Canada's finest. Mm, as good as it gets. Timothy Adams moves up to second place, 5.1 million on pace to maybe take down another main event title. We got all in and call Brian Kim. Against Roman, Roman. Travitz, yeah. yeah I have one. Looks like button. I no, I do apologize. Early position, V early position. Oh. <laughs> what cards do we got here? Uh, doesn't matter. Brian Kim, gentleman as always saying, good luck guys. Looked like ace jack V ace king. Roman Kravitz, number one on the GG leaderboard for 2022, by the way. Brian Kim, class act. Hope to be seeing a lot more of that young man at future stops. Typically find him in the high stakes. High stakes no cash, cash game. games out in LA and Vegas. Deep yeah, stacked out I've, there. I've seen him play on live at the bike and things. I think that's where he's most comfortable, just putting people in the blender across multiple streets. Yeah. But also showing some real talent here for his short stack game. Oh, he's good. He's got deep stack and short stack figured out. Love to see him at the next Triton stop. He knows the festival dates now. Does indeed. He'll be back. We know it. Now, Randy, couple of bust outs. Yes. Everyone now guaranteed 237,000. Talal Shikurchi leading the pack. Timothy Adams. Tied up there, close to the top, with Raid a lot. And I do apologize. There's 12? No, hang on. This next bust out's pretty important, actually. Because... Well, do fill me in. What have I missed? Well, 12 gets 237k. If you can survive one more, you get another page up of 43k, giving you 270,000. You're going to want to hang in there if you're... On these shorter stacks, if you can. Okay, let's keep an eye on that. For now, Nick Petrangelo. Oh, we got yeah, he busts in 14. Five. Sorry, we got 13 remaining. I was looking at it wrong. Right, right. That, that's why I thought it was 13. No, no, yeah. I think I, I, I know the reason. Uh, but yeah, Brian Kim busting in 14th place. Everyone now guaranteed 237,000. As we dive back into this, Petrangelo top pair and a flush draw. Unfortunately for him, or fortunately I mean, for the limitless fans out there, Malinowski <laughs> whiffing. Yeah, Petrangelo just smashed it. Not going to be able to get any action. 65. Even the small bet. Can he get anything from Malinowski? These chips are so important to these short stacks. Splashing is not ideal. Let's see. 
Yeah, Limitless has a 40 yet. It does have a shot clock. Okay. He's going to reach for some chips in the form of check raise. Two overs, jack of spades, a ball texture. It's going to favor his range from the big. Let's see what Petrangelo comes with. Yeah, this small seabed that Petrangelo looks like it induced the check raise. Had he bet bigger, Malinowski might have not have gone for the check raise as it would be more detrimental to his stack. Going to start with a call here for Petrangelo. Lots of stack. 690k in the middle. Under 2 SPR. Blanks out. Interesting card, actually, because if you were check-raising, you would be perceived to have 6x as a bluff a lot. Some 6x, yeah. Action on Victor. Don't forget, this is a button open, so Petrangelo he can just as easily have a straight on this board. Yeah, and look, Limitless is just pure bluffing here now. Trying to rep that 6. 180k. Now, Petrangelo Scott does have a real concern here that he could be up against a, a straight. Looks like he's going to need to just continue for call. See if he hits his flush. Maybe gets checked to him. He can show it down. Raising is... I think that would be a bit excessive. We'll see. Call it is. Big river coming. Less than pot behind for Limitless. Not the type to give up as, would you believe, Randy, a straight on board has rolled off. This is one of the most interesting cards to fall, actually. What a ridiculous run out. Check raise flop, barrel small turn. Straight on board. On the river. Feels like a river where Petrangelo could potentially take it away from Limitless if he slows down. I can see even Limitless thinking about jamming All himself. In. All in it is. Petrangelo playing the board. How much is it? 8x. It is a reasonable holding. 8x of spades. 8-9, off suit. What a disgusting Check raise. run out for Petrangelo's hand. He calls. We're going to chop it up. Wait. Me too. <laughs> but I had fucking nuts the whole time. And you had mm. nothing, right? I can't see your hand. I have a jack high straight. Jack no, okay. <laughs> Kicker? <laughs> you limitless, good. ladies and gentlemen. He's happy about the spot. <laughs> oh man. Can you believe straight to chop? It's not like it. <laughs> the needle. <laughs> 13 left. That's the end. In the biggest 100k of the year. You almost got me on the river. Almost doesn't Love count. Love to see it. <laughs> almost doesn't count, Randy. Well. How about it? 40,000, 80,000 blinds going up. Chip counts brought to you by none other than GG Poker. Talal Shikurchi still chip leading the final 13. Timothy Adams nipping at his heels after winning that huge flip not too long ago against Johannes Strava. Anyone want to run the math on how much equity that flip was worth? One can go their entire career and not make that equity back <laughs> when it happens Remember on me. the biggest stage in one of the biggest 100Ks. Just saying, you know, for any of the math nerds out there. Shout out to the viewers at home, by the way. Let your friends know that we're live. 
Feel free to tag us on socials if you've got the stream up, maybe in the background. Whilst cooking some lunch, maybe. Got us up whilst taking the dogs out for a walk. I don't know. Drop us a tag. Randy, over on Instagram, Nananoko, Henry, yeah. myself, Henry Kilbane, Triton okay. Poker Series, Ali Najad. Love to see where you guys are watching from. <laughs> Just, you know, make sure Hopefully. you, you keep it clean. Like it yeah. Okay, if you're watching in lucky, like the shower, yeah. <laughs> maybe keep that to I yourself. I really got lucky this tournament, so I cannot complain. Or don't. Right, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Back to the action. You got lucky with the ace queen. Uh, aces. <laughs> aces. Aces. Ace queen. Oh. Cool, yeah, like day one, yeah. Yeah, well, I have aces. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I won a many, many chip with yeah. aces this tournament. True, true. No time banks, you know. <laughs> Chip leader, ace five. Let's open it up. Talal Tal has been leaning on his opponents. This is number one and number two. Pocket nines for Adams in the cutoff. He's going to want to keep things small with the call. Don't really see him wanting to play a huge pot. Queens for Adrian Mateos. Note that one nine in Michael Soiza's hand. Mateos on 45 big blinds. 800. Oh, oh, thank you. This is on the Lagarde Shikurchi, obviously. Gonna get out of the way. But that flat call from Adams does invite the three bet squeeze. We can see that this is top of range for Mateos. Looks like four. 3.5, not He's less. currently third in chips. This is first v second v third with 13 left. Well, chip leader's out as expected. Two nines in a tough spot here. 3.5. Thinking about taking a flop, thinking about getting away from this pre flop. Small frequency jam, probably not. Let's see. Oh. He's out. Timothy Adams just grinding it out. That's a really painful fold. Million. <laughs> painful fold it was. With two nines. It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it hurts to you. <laughs> Not giving much back. It did hurt. Still 13 left. Update, by the way, from event number 10, that 50k turbo. Three left. Artur Martirosian v. Jason Kuhn v. Chris Brewer. Panat Punsri out in fourth. Jason Kuhn again. Just to reiterate, looking for title number five. Black-white champ tuning in from Plovdiv. Bulgaria, shout out. Jan asking what the delay is. Currently on around 45 minute delay to protect the integrity of the game. We've got Niseko Japan, Melbourne at the most ridiculous time, apparently. Good morning to the viewers out there. Ice Cold Spear saying low key and amazing fold. Very solid fold from Timothy Adams. Little pot there for Limitless. Sitting on 17 big blinds. Average stack right now is 32 big blinds. Six of them above it. Significantly deeper than the other events we've covered thus far. This clock, 50 minutes. Limitless got ace, nine of clubs, 20 blinds now after picking up the last one. Start for raise. Mateos got king, queen suited in position.
I'm always thinking about bringing it upstairs. Big Five hundred eighty. <laughs> That's a bigger three bet in position. Just above seven blinds. Twenty big blind effective. And Limitless is taking note of the bet sizing. You might think a premium like Aces King Queens Ace King might go a little bit smaller, perhaps. What is this? This is like a three and a half x. Right? I think with ICM we want to go a little bit. Wow, bigger he's pushing it in. They're gonna get it in. Twenty big blinds a piece. And Mateos looks a little bit confused, a little stunned. Did not expect this. He did not. He's been shown in the ace nine, and <laughs> I've not seen that kind of reaction on Mateus's face. The face telling a story that we can only make up in our heads as the flop Ooh. comes. Ace four oh. three. Okay. <laughs> All <laughs> spades. <laughs> we saw the ace of spades <laughs> in the window. Love to see the smile, by the way. I mean, you take a beat. <laughs> like that with 13 left in the main event. But Limitless, as always, just true professional. On to the next almost. tournament. What? You're almost tilted. If I lose that one, I will be tilted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does not think that he should have gone in with what ace nine of clubs, I believe. Flying it off with nothing. What? <laughs> <laughs> Petrangelo talking about the Jack-9 rifle. Oh, right, yes. Let's not sleep on the name Limitless, by the way. Maybe sometimes taking the... Oh, no, what's going on? Are we going to be down to the final table? Like, we're closing in on this FT chat. We thought we'd be here until 3, 4 a.m. It looks like Ace-6... Against pocket eights and an eight on the flop, leaving the ace six drawing dead. Yeah, that was blind versus blind. Loon loon jams the small blind. Two eights, flop the set, bait or down. Wow. Okay. Okay, chat. Then there were 12. How much we guaranteed, Randy? So. For 12th place, you get 237k, survive one more, 270k. If you can reach the final table, 324,000. Not too bad. That way, sorry. Four, seven, three payouts here. And fifth is actually 965,000, so it's pretty close. I saw that one needle for whoever comes fifth. New chip leader, Adrian Mateos, courtesy of Limitless, is 1.6 million chips. Who are we bringing over here? That's not jungle. That is Roman Kravitz. How come his hat is so much more stylish than one jungle? Jungle just rode on it. Welcome to the jungle, whereas Roman, it's got some art on it. So just a quick rebalancing. Two tables of six, ladies and gentlemen. Triton Poker Super High Roller Series main event coverage continuing here until we reach our final table. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. Again, Michael Soizer seems to be one of the biggest selling points when it comes to PokerStake.com, has been selling action to every event during the series and has made two final tables. Another deep run here. Cash the 75k, by the way. Deep run here with 12 left in the main. So congratulations to everyone that bought action in Soiza over on PokerStake.com. Love what they're doing. Making this, making hands like this. 
a fun sweat. One sixty for Michael Soizer. You have uh, one point three nine. One point three nine total. Total. Sure. Timmy's got Queen Jack. Oh. Gonna complete it. Defend. He is dominated. Wouldn't want a queen on the flop. 1.39 to start, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So 1.2, 3 behind. Yeah, cheers. Sure. Jack high flop. Timothy Adams takes the lead. Soiza. Not gonna feel too bad about this flop. It is dry. It is also the type of board where you sprinkle a little chips in there. Big blind's going to check fold so much. But he's going to play cautious. Check. Navigating this card is going to be tough. Or so he says. He's now got ace, queen, and three fives out there. See for Timothy Adams, is he gonna fire away? He might be thinking that air would see bet this flop a good frequency. So maybe he's up against ace high a lot, and that's why he's gonna bet. 340,000. Timothy Adams hoping to get looked up by ace high. Pocket pair is lower than a jack. Ace of clubs in hand, Randy. Yeah. Blocking some of the club draws. I mean. Discipline laid out. <laughs> so Timothy. Take it down, discipline fold. And Michael Soizer, by the way, and Randy. Hmm? Randy, Randy, Randy. A better way to watch poker. Some of you at home have been watching that 50k over on the Triton Poker Plus app. And if you were watching the 50k over on the Triton Poker Plus app, you would have heard, you would have been one of the first people to find out that we have a five time champion. Download 1.7. the Triton yeah. Poker Plus app because the that's the type of stuff the end, that's end. going on over there. Jason Kuhn, ladies and gentlemen, taking down the 50k turbo for a record fifth Triton title. How about it, Randy? He's the only one with five titles. It was Makita. Makita now is the only one with four <coughs> titles. Jason, mini titles. I'm looking back. Madrid. Won the 150k short deck. In a class of his own, Randy, yeah. when it comes to Triton. It's amazing. And also, very similarly to Madrid, <coughs> rough start to the series for Jason, but just grinding through, persevering, showing up day in, day out. Yes. We had the cash the other day. Similarly to Madrid, a brick after brick, after brick, then taking down the 150k short deck. Now, closing out the Hold'em events. Fifth title in the 50k turbo. Yeah, so he's got three short deck titles, two no limit titles now. How about it? Jason Kuhn. Ladies and gentlemen, if you aren't already, make sure you're following us over on Instagram because there's going to guarantee that the team are going to have some stuff over there showing you some of the behind the scenes content and coverage from that 50k Triton Poker Series on Instagram. Petrangelo King Jack offsuit. Hundred eighty five K. North of a min raise. Roman. <coughs> Ace three of hearts. Perhaps a three bet is in order. We'll see. 
He's one of the most aggressive newcomers I've seen so far. 1.4 million? Yeah. Keep it up. 1.4 million? Go on then, Roman. Roman Kravitz, by the way, not to be slept on. You don't get the number one in tournament earnings title on GG for an entire year. Yeah, that's really hard to do. <laughs> you know, you, that's not just variance, Manny. That, that comes with a lot of skill. We saw him come second in the first event of the series. First ever Triton series for Roman, of course. Out here with his girlfriend, ACR Pro Monica, Sorry. who won a 100k package into this series. She lost a coin flip to Limitless in the bounty envelope pulling. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, she did, let's be honest, mate. She lost the 66.6 .6 to 33.3. There were 200k bounties left with three pulls left. Even worse. At the short end of the stick is Michael Soizer. I smell jamming coming. Two eights is a... Uh, got a lot of fold equity. It's vulnerable. Can I take the spot? Adam's going to ask for a count. Yeah, got to get a count here. This is close. It probably is, right? Cut off. This is close. You can see Adam's doing some back of the envelope math. So he gets a count. Knows that Soyuz is going to have suited Broadway. Some ASEX that he has dominated. A lot of some pocket pairs. Some real heavy ICM implications coming into effect, and also some future game implications as it Adams does make the call and another six figures in equity flip right here, Randy, with 12 left of the Triton Super High Roller Series main. There we go. 3.1 million in the middle. Safe for Soiza. Queen five do so far. So good for Soiza with the pocket eights and the eight of diamonds on the turn. Not even a sweat, Randy, going to the river as he boats up. Just a formality. Michael Soiza, shout out to those of you watching along that got a piece. Let me know, by the way, if you did. If you got a cheeky, cheeky investment over on Poker Steak. Thirty-nine big blinds. Well, currently, the short stacks are David Yan, Seth Gottlieb, sitting on twelve and thirteen big blinds. Then it's Winfred Yu, sitting on five more big blinds than them, and eighteen. Roman Hobbit, King Five with Diamonds in the cutoff. One sixty. Let's start for race. Suited King. Adrian Queen Jack. Does he want to put some pressure? Maybe see a flop here in position. Adrian looks dialed in. On a flat call here. Few people in the chat, Randy, with a little Michael Soiser piece over on Poker yeah. Steak, by the way. Victor, OO Crypto. All right, guys. GL, GL, enjoy the spin, enjoy the sweat. 
They must have loved that all in. No eight ball on the turn. Talal getting a chip count on Roman. He's in the big blind. Gonna peel one off. Or peel three to the flop. Mm, that's I'm actually one. quite intimidated yeah. by Talal. His, his presence always just asking the question. How much are you playing? Dialed in at all times. That's He's flopped it, huh? Top two on the seven, six, four, Roman. With an open ender. And Mateos. With the two overs. He See could if Mateos has a little tickle here. Yeah. Could get some action from Roman's hand, too. Open ended. Gonna reach for chips and could be quite exciting. Pot coming up, 250k C bet. Talal, top two. Roman C betting off of this slightly bigger stack of 22 big blinds. Looks like he's got a piece. And that's why Talal's coming in for a raise here. Just thinks if Roman had air, he wouldn't bet on 7, 6, 4, 3 ways. This is the type of board that's supposed to smash the big blind. Yeah, he wants to get all the money in against the overpairs, right? Just in case a scare card, a three, a five, and eight rolls off. Mm -hmm. Wants to just stack him right here, right now. You know, run it, if you will. I mean, Roman's got to be a little bit worried. I don't think he thinks he's got fold equity of king five. Does he take one off now? Right Play the lot. turn. Let's see. Does he think he has hold equity? I don't think so. An 8 9 to check raise a flop will get it in with you on the turn, anyways. He's got clean outs. He can't let it go now. I feel like with ICM considerations, huh? there are time to. Fold wow, just draw. folds it. Yeah, king five. Oh, Maybe oh, with a diamond on board. That's a big lay down, though. Open ended. Almost a min raise, check Did raise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, that one. It's mainly because of the ICM implications. For sure. Just had soys there. It was spades, though. Eight six was spades. You had a back door? No. <laughs> <laughs> Delayed post mortem <laughs> no, from the Kings. It wasn't to do with any backdoor. Yeah, yeah. The eight six is made to win, I guess. Fold that yeah. How about it, Randy? How about it? Stream catching up with the guys. They're finding out. Oh, right. Who's been up to what? Who's been naughty? Shikachi, not on Soyuz's Christmas list. That's for sure. Oh, right. The two kings. That's what you're referring to. Yeah, that was. That was a brutal hand. 480. Three bet. Soiza, he's got new chips. He's going to put them to work. Ace eight suited against Mateos. Let's see how Mateos responds here because he's got a very playable hand. Does he want to defend his cutoff open? Or might he play cautious as he will play out of position against an aggressive player like Michael Soiza? Mm -hmm. Soiza's going to. Get some action here. Dominating Mateos. Mateos doesn't know that he's being dominated right now. He's calling 8-7 suited, expecting those cards to be live. What a flop from Mateos. Open-ended. Flush draw, two overs to the board. Looking good. Well, 
1.1 out there, these three bet and four bet pots. Not really going Soyuz's way as he continues for 500k. And is this just a print to check jam? Well, for, Soyuz, uh, uh, for Mateus, rather. You're definitely printing chips by check jamming here. Never problem to get it in. Can you create more EV by check calling? That's the question Mateus is thinking. Yeah, he's just going to push it in. Nicely done. Mateos cruising along up to 6.5 million now. Chip leader. These final 12 players. Three caches here in Vietnam. No final table. But now finds himself chip leading with 12 left, 1 million on his Triton track record. Five caches, 3,250,000 up top of this one. One of, one of the best to have ever played the game over the last decade, Randy, without a Triton trophy. Maybe somewhat surprising to some of the newer viewers at home. Ready for some chips back, Soiza? Two aces. Time to start this rocket going. Ace Jack uh, for Talal Shakurchi. Really Remember, they just discussed 8 6 suited a minute ago. Maybe Talal wants to consider 3 betting his hand. I don't think he's folding. <laughs> well, how about 4 2 5? Randy. Okay, we got to keep in mind, Soiza last time, four bet, exactly two X with two kings. They both know it now. They just discussed it. Maybe that crosses Soiza's mind and is like, well, if I'm going to four bet this, maybe I don't do the same size. Maybe I go all in to look weak. Maybe I call the three bet because my hand is so good. And... Look, if you just found out the guy three bet you have eight six suited, right. calling seems pretty good. And it was the exact same setup as well. Button v cutoff as we see the king seven deuce rainbow board roll off and how about one of the driest, most dis disconnected boards possible in no limit holdem. It's You've almost the like two aces. perfect timing that he found out about the eight six suited right now. 175k. Slow play. He slow played pre-flop. Might well slow played his flop. Just smashing it. No flush draws. No straight draws. Understandable size down from Talal. Soiza happy to continue to the sum of 175. And how about that for a turn card? Jack of Diamonds giving Talal equity. Getting to allow a clean outs, albeit to maybe a card that will prompt him to slow down as he has picked up a ton of showdown now beating, you know, eights through tens. Although you could argue maybe tens jamming, eights and nines feels close. Pretty bad card for both players, actually. You know, maybe Soyuz has ace queen sometimes. Soyuz could be up against, like, say, queen jack, that three bet. You, ace ten. He's being ace cautious, ten. going to check aces. Soyuz are back up to 2.9 million in chips. Any post mortem? No? Silence? <coughs> Nothing exchanged between the two. That's how things stand. Major Mateos El Matador. Top of the chip counts. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker Blinds. 40,000, 80,000 with an 80,000 big blind ante.
Kravitz. You have one of the other aces. <laughs> Bottom of the counts. 19 bigs, some work to do. Two tables of six here, everyone guaranteed. 237,000 for the reference. Next ladder will come after one more elimination. Some updates from the outer table. Smilkovic getting busy over there. Winfred Yu down to 16 bigs. Seth Gottlieb nursing a 13 big blind stack. Jan nursing a 12 big blind stack. Lundlund's been on a bit of a spin. Now tied with Fedor Holtz, both with 28 bigs apiece. And aces again. This time for arguably the most active player at the table. Timothy Adams going to peel from the small but the nines action on one of the shortest stacks. No wonder we've gotten down to 12 left so quickly, Andy. Catch on, Robin. Wow. Squeezy. 475k. Thinks this looks pretty strong. 1.4 starting. Yes. It's uncomfortable. I told you, man. He. Do you see where I'm coming from when I said he's he's really intimidating? Like the way. He's just always asking questions, man. Seven seven five. Dialed in. Rabbits with the squeeze, maybe a byproduct of the Adams flat from the small and again. Timo unable to see a flop with a couple of nines. Yeah, these two nines are just somehow always finding themselves in the muck pre-flop. Once again, Timothy Adams has to lay it down. Looks pained. Roman. Going to be down to 11 and a half bigs after this. Unless he wants to get really heroic, but I don't really see how he can do anything but fold. All right, he's out. Just saw a little eyebrow raise from Timothy Adams there as well. It's like, thanks, buddy. I could have saw a flop, maybe crack these aces of two nines. Why didn't you just fold pre-flop? Outer table. What do we got going on here, Henry? Looks like David Yan is all in against Smilkovic. Looks like ace 10 against ace 6. Smilkovic holding and Yan bowing out in 12th. Eleven players remain here. The 100K Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam main event, 270,000 guaranteed. I'm just receiving word as well, Randy. Just shy of 2,000 entries in the secret lab chair giveaway, exclusive giveaway over on our Instagram. The nice. Titan Evo Triton Poker Edition. Get involved last day of entering. Three chairs up for grabs, if I'm not mistaken. So you're currently looking at a one in 650 shot to win a... It's comfy. I mean, that is one of the selling points, to a stack for sure. Lights, right? It's go special on, edition. Go Let's go. Triton special series. edition, that's two. It's got this, what is lumbar support cushion. Ooh, that's three. That's, that's a big yeah. selling point. Yeah, that's a right big there. one. You tell me some. I mean... I personally have to stand up out of my chair during commentary due to the fact that if I spend too much time in this chair, I'll fall asleep. <laughs> that's how comfy it is. It's not, good. Not that that's necessarily a good thing, but in my world, I like sleeping. It's great. So get involved once again. Head over to the Triton Poker Series Instagram feed. Three seats, three chairs. Three secret lab chairs up oh, for grabs.
pre-flop raise, Timothy Adams. Connected board, gonna take the one off. Mateos, flush draw, hits it, and Timothy Adams has a straight. Oh boy. Trouble. There may be trouble on the horizon, although fortunately for Adams, has got the lower end of the straight. But it feels like he's not going to be able to get away for one bet, at least. And then Mateos has been betting quite sizable. 260 is the bet, just north of half the pot. You know, Timothy Adams can still be at some bluffs here. You know, he checked back the flop, his hand's a bit under-repped. He's got the straight. Biggest 100k of the year. Chips until we, going in. Until, until we, we go to until Cyprus. We, you know, you know <laughs> what I mean. Cyprus is going to be big, Henry. I just feel it. Just under a million chips in the middle. Pairs the board. But Mateos is probably feeling like he should get some value out of the 10. Some clapping in the background, Henry. Yeah, that round of applause for those of you that haven't been here. We've only recently joined the stream. We did mention it in real time. We have ourselves a five-time champion, and his name is Jason Kuhn, taking down that 50K. Back to the action. We'll talk more about Jason, the conclusion of this hand. Yeah, Mateos is trying to size up. Wasn't get value from 6'10". He didn't want to go too sizable. He doesn't want Timothy Adams to hero fold, given that there's flushes out there. Full house, a bit unlikely, given the line on the turn. 6-10. Hmm. It's a tough spot for a straight. It really is. Check through on the flop, call the turn bet, and he's still betting. Like, there's a... 10x is a large part of Timothy Adams' range. He there's, knows it. He's still also, betting it to me. There's also so many one-spade type holdings of Mateos. Jack of spades, queen of spades. Yeah, he's got the chips to kind of lean on his opponent too. And Timothy Adelson is very disciplined. So he's trying to figure it out. Yeah, really getting a nice close-up there. Of Adams just reverse engineering the hand, trying to break this one down. Discipline fold ladies and gentlemen, from Timothy. One of the best in the game at the moment. Finding the fold at the right time. Mateos, on the other hand. El Matador, just out there. 7.6 million. Average stack, 3.1. He's the man to beat. Now, just quickly as we had to focus on the hand. Jason Kuhn, ladies and gentlemen, taking down Never that 50K turbo. Event number well, 10. You can't, you can't have one plate, one table. Yeah, we believe for a record yeah. breaking. <clears throat> fifth title, now separating himself. If there was ever any doubt, you know, any questions, the obvious question was, well, what about Makita? Both of them coming to this series with four titles. Phil Ivey, Wai Kin Yong, three titles. But now Jason going to have his own banner. In Cyprus. Unless, let's not count bads out. Let's not put bads down and out because we do have the short deck. And he is one of the best short deck players in the world. So they both play chance. short deck. Chance for bads to tie. And there's also a chance for Jason Kuhn to get number six. Don't, don't you know what, Randy? <laughs> Behave. It, it's okay. a true statement. Just take a day off, mate. Oh, you are right. I jest, of course. I mean, look. You tell me it's not possible. I think it is. There's a more than 0% chance. What I really want to know is out of... Jason Kuhn and Makita. 
who's up on the year in their weekly UFC props every weekend. Little bet on the UFC against each other just to... Oh, do they? Yeah, a little oh. fun sweat. I don't know. They randomized the main event. Jason was sharing. I mean, I don't think they, you know, they, they keep tabs on it. Nothing huge, you know, just something to make it a little bit more exciting. Not huge for them. Huge for us. <laughs> true. That is very true. <laughs> like, we could use those buy-ins. But just in case, you know, Bats was up on the year, Jason can... I'll say, hey, listen, pal, you take the UFC, I'll take the fifth Triton Trophy as we dive back into this pair v. pair situation, blind v. blind. Yeah, check through on the flop. Both players got some showdown value. Let's see how Mateos will navigate. Start with a check. Soiza checked to him twice. Middle pair. Straight draw back up. Maybe time to start charging some hands. No. Check again. 10 on the river. Overcards their pair. Never a nice thing to see. As played, Mateos most likely wants to try to get the showdown. 240. Just quickly, Randy, whilst it's fresh. Click the link once pinned on Twitch and YouTube. That giveaway once again. Three secret lab chairs as Soiza snap calls. Yeah. The river bet of Mateos and. Mateos just threw in 150k million. in there and just snapped off. Interesting. Thinking about that one. You were saying? Something about a link. Link in the chat, right at the top of the chat on both YouTube and Twitch. Secret Lab, the official chair partner of the Triton Poker Series. Over 2 million users today have a Secret Lab chair. Is it really? In their own homes. That's a lot. The giveaway that we're doing, the latest Titan Evo, the official preferred chair of choice for many leading brands around the world. Exclamation mark giveaway for more if you don't know how to click a link, you know, ask your cat. Kravitz, shortest stack. <coughs> 11 players left. 10 players between you and 3.2 million, Randy. What are you saying? A6 offsuit, small blind versus big blind. Oh. Gonna limp. We know Talal's gonna open up ace king. And it's just too good. Let's see how Soiza responds to it. Okay. 200k more. A6 does fair to do okay against the raising range. Oh. Gonna call here. These two have really been going at it. To now getting that bluff through with the 8-6 of spades earlier on as we head to the 10 deuce deuce. Couple of diamonds out there to allow. With the king of diamonds in hand. Pretty good board for both players, actually, unpaired. Check, check. More diamonds for Talal. Action on Soiza. A6. Looking to get the showdown. Let's see if Talal wants to keep checking or fire away. Think he's got the best hand. One more check. King is good. Didn't need it, but adding a bit more comfort to the ace king from the big. Top, top. Sizable. It is north of 50% on the river. It's a card that 
Might see Soiza look him up here, you know. Although the six of clubs are bad hand. Bad card, rather. Well, he's reaching for chips. He I don't knows. blame him. Yeah. I don't blame him for making this call. I mean, the he's King of Spades, a really good river card for Talal to represent. Shakurchi getting value, Randy. And he's seen Shakurchi just get out of line of, against him, right? Okay. What's happening outside? It looks like Seth all in against Daniel Smilkovic. Ace 10 v pocket nines, no, if I'm not mistaken. No, 8 9. 8 9. 8 9 offsuit made a play against Daniel and is out. There we have it. You're right, Randy. The 8 9 making a play on the button against the under the gun open. Smilkovic, the overwhelming chip leader over there. <laughs> Seth just running into it, and we're down to the final 10, final table bubble. Randy, everyone now guaranteed 270,000. One person going to be going home and not returning tomorrow for the biggest final table of the Triton Super High Roller Series so far this year. Let's not forget the additional EV of the Instagram story, the Facebook picture, you know, you make the final table of nine. You, you, you think they're thinking about that? Well, look, we all have that one uncle that has always what happens if talked the, about the us over the dinner the table family? at Christmas or birthdays, just family gatherings. Oh, poker, is it? You play poker for, okay. for a living. Well, he gets to see that, and he gets to see that there's 3.2 million on top. He's like, you tag him. There you go, Uncle Tony. How'd you like them apples? And he's, uh, As Nick Petrangelo yeah, gets moved to the outer table. Did you not have any family members back in the day, Randy, when you first started out? They're like, what is this online game that you're playing for money? Be yeah. honest. True. I try to hide it as long as possible, though. Same. I hid it for years. I hid it for a very long time. I had time. fake jobs. In fact, there are still people in my family that have no clue. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, we're, we're like in the same camp, aren't we? I mean, I've graduated from four different universities, <laughs> according to my family. <laughs> You're bluffing hard. <laughs> four different universities, four I different just, countries. I always come up <laughs> with, with, you know, specialties that they won't be able to fact check me on. Like marine biology or, you know, computer science. Like, oh, that looks good. That sounds good. Yeah. Back to the action. I jest, of course. Well, there's some truth behind it, but. So, one more elimination from the final table will be set. Four players will be walking away from this tournament millionaires. Champion will be walking away with 3,200,000 and 50,000. Timothy Adams, the only other player, or the only player rather, the remaining 10 with a main event title. Daniel Smilkovic hey. looking for his first. Mateos looking for his first. Talal Shikurchi also looking for his first Triton trophy. Two sixes for Adrian. 160. Gonna come in for min race. Talal, he's been applying pressure. This is number one and number two in chip stacks, and Talal just does not care. He's three betting. The chip leader. Nine, eight of clubs. You gotta give it to this guy. Why do you think the name Raid a lot comes from, Randy? Raise a lot. No. That's not where it comes from, Randy. Nice try. What is Raid a lot? I don't know. That might be it. I'm Gosh. Never mind. 
Let's get back to the poker. Raise a lot, raise a lot. Maybe it was a typo. <laughs> yeah, to stick with it. Auto correct. Two sixes. The stacks are deep. Does Mateus want to tangle with number two and chips here? Out of position. Hard to play. But if you hit the right flop, you could stack your opponent. He's going to try. Let's go. Hunting for a six. 1.1 1 .1 out there. Second v third in chips. The seven of clubs in window. What a tease. That was ace jack seven. Three overs to Mateos's pocket sixes. Gut shot. Backdoor clubs for Talau. Range advantage. Yeah, he's just going to fire this one out and then his hand's over. Two sixes. No connection. Nicely done. Talal, new chip leader again. There we go. Only lost it for a brief stint. Said, hold my beer. 40,000, 80,000, 80,000 anti coming to an end here. As I believe it has. It has ended. So <laughs> blinds going to be going up to 50,000, 100,000 with 100,000 anti. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake, Talal Shikirchi, chip leader, not only at this table, but in the tournament. Roman Fabes down to seven big blinds. We're playing down to a final table tonight. Ten players remain. Final table bubble. Roman going to look to get busy on the flip side of this break as we welcome you back into the broadcast booth. Randy, just quickly, it feels like it's been all Mateos and all Shikirchi out there. I mean, they've been raising, they've been aggressive, right? Um, but all eyes are now on the short stack of Roman Harbert, right? He's down to nine big blinds. No one else is down there. Ninth place has 20 big blinds. Right. Final table, very important to make it to. Prizes are quite large. Well, that is how things stand currently. The outer table, somewhat shallower with Smilkovic, obviously the exception. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Obviously, all eyes on Roman, as we mentioned, the shortest stack by quite some margin, but doesn't become the number one GG poker player of 2022 without some skill. On the flip side of the break, we're going to be setting the final table. Don't go too far as the biggest 100K of the year returns just after some commercials. We'll see you guys soon. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi way, a whole population analysis, a GTO Bible, and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker, whether it's online or live poker.
case excuse me yeah not quite as huge as you <laughs> thought it was but in fact quite small yeah um a nice size bet for johannes strauber here comfortable we get to show it down for cheap safe doesn't yes. really change anything seven of diamonds is dry Strabo's 50k call in position brought the pot to 295,000. Maybe we see Smerkovic coming for big sizing. Thinking that. Well, I mean, he knows the two aces is most likely good. His opponent check back doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't have Jack X. Most of the time, it is pocket pairs that are going to be willing to call bet. Hold on. Hold in. Excuse, excuse me? All in? All in? Well, this is a surprise. And just put yourself in Johannes Traver's shoes as he faces this jam from Smilkovic. I mean, it does feel like maybe I'm just getting bowled over here. Kind of wouldn't mind if the implications of being wrong weren't so great. Clicking call and just being like... I think of them, but when they come up, he will... Right. Just like that, like boom. Yeah. Feel like the ace king is getting thrown around. Lin again. These, can't, pleasures. These, these nails can't mug the crowd. Oh, an ace queen for Ibinger off of the shortest stack in the room, Randy. Cold, cold, cold. Don't need a crystal ball to know which way this one's headed. Jam. Call. Whoops. Matias doing what he's supposed to do, and Loon Loon just had the medicine for him here. But we still deal flops, turns, and rivers. Sometimes bad beats do loom. That's certainly what Ibinger is hoping. Jack 10 4 with a couple of hearts, Bills and there true. are paths to victory for Matias. Swapping outs. The nine of hearts does like. open the door. Two way straight draw. And the better of two flush draws. Ibinger, 29% equity, one to come. Board pairs, though, and that is it that was good deal, right? for Matthias Ibinger. Him, too. So. <laughs> like this, where you, you look back and go, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Yeah. You know, and keeping... you've seen that look on a lot of players' faces over the years, Randy. A hundred percent. I'm sure this has happened in this tournament where someone bet and got jammed on and you know eventually bail out earlier in the tournament what timing here for two kings 
especially for Mateos. I know. Under the gun, big stack. Looks like he's getting after it. I mean, he is getting after it, but yes, does look like it. And Strava here. Two aces. Wow. No way. 280. Now listen. We already know that for Strava to be three betting in this spot off of his stack depth from the small blind, real hands loom. Oh, he just stopped. He's got two kings. What yeah. is he going to do about oh, this? Oh, no, no, no. We're getting him in. But when are we doing it? Now. Only one hand beats us, Pre. Yeah, he's going to get it now. Yeah. Jam, snap, oh. cold deck. No one loves to see this more than the shortest stack in the room, which belongs to Kale Burns. Seidel down there as well. They're just rooting for King right now. Yeah, they are. Green 10, deuce, aces. Still in front. They get clubby. Not this time. Board pairs, and now... Just one of two kings in that deck would spell disaster for Strava. Any other card, and it's his. Jack. Safe paint. On the river. And that really was a so disappointed a when the face king deck king last for time. You like that Hamon Iberico, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's some good stuff. I really like the, I forget what they, what do they call octopus there? Pulpo? Pulpo. Mm -hmm. Really tender. The best. Oh. Quite tender. Two queens? Well, the ace nine is a little more tender. The queens, I think, are a bit tougher. Queens is flat oh, calling yeah. here. This is hey, very oh. notable. Hmm. Some misbehavior? By Smilkovich, or just acknowledging the fact that Mateos is a bigger stack? That's a part of it. I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm curious to see how he maneuvers this post flop. You and I both. Yeah. Or maybe he was hoping for some induction from the smaller stacks to reshove. Yeah, that's true. Behind you. Didn't and think by the squeeze. You might not think it's likely that he can get Mateos in for this many blinds with a bad hand. So I can see where he's coming from. Most certainly not folding post flop, especially on this board. Ace of Hearts and the Nine of Spades both working on this board texture right now. Note to sizing, Ali. 190K. It's mm -hmm. not small. Smirkovich sees that, right? He might be like, hmm, why are you betting so big? Yeah. I mean, I'm not folding two queens right now. But it's suspicious. It's interesting. Turn card. Drop me a deuce blank. Yeah, that's a very welcome sight for Daniel, who is very much playing the cautious pot control approach against this bigger stack of Mateos. Three out of the money. Do we give up for Mateos? Let's see. Black call me in positions, called a near pot size bet. Seems like I'm up against two nines, two eights, jack ten, queen jack type hands a lot. Two hearts, possible, but I've got an ace of hearts. Check makes a lot of sense. Should be pretty happy with two queens now. Your opponent's checked. Are we allowed to check back, though, and then just decide on rivers? We Provided are, that Adrian leads? We are if we think we're going to get check raise all in on the turn at some frequency just to avoid that situation altogether, and that's what he's going to do. Again, just tidy procedures. Yeah, the turn check through doesn't necessarily define Smirkovich's hand as never a jack since we are three from the money right now. Mateos knows that. Holding a nine in his hand. Blocks pocket nines that would, wouldn't really want to call a bet. Let's see what he does. Imagine it's getting snapped off for almost any size. He's done. 
yeah. I can't imagine that provided Daniel wants to put something out there, which is not compulsory, Randy, that Adrian would be true. Anything I feel like but done. Smirkovich is gonna try to find some value. The chances of the C bet near pot double check to check raises just not a common play. A big bet here. I like the big bet. You know, sometimes we talk about we do small bets, we induce some raises that we don't want to see. Bigger bet defines your hand as something that should be good. You should never check raise me. Yeah, I I like where your head's at there, Randy, in terms of, you know, we get cutesy and all of a sudden we invite the raise, which we know is the product of that cutesiness, and now our queens start to dry up. Good decision, pound the back. 175k to the bankroll. Locked up. Play is going to change. Watts is not going to pass up any spots anymore. Same thing for Lun Lun. What? You going to bother me when I'm in the, the big blind here? You didn't have anything. Don't worry about it. Ace three versus Queen Jack. BVB in the money. 40 big blinds to start to hand. Yeah, we've actually applied some real grease to certain situations. This not necessarily one of them. Two. Two, two, point two one. big stacks. Two point one. Ace three for Mateos. And welcome back inside the booth. Ali Najad in for Randy Lou, Henry Cal Kilbane. Sorry, I will like I, at some point. I promise you, I'm going to get it right. Producer James, Henry. how does this guy keep getting hired? <laughs> Can't. No, no ideas. How do you do it? 25 years, I feel like is Listen, the only excuse. Uh, there, are, there are no excuses for it, and certainly no excuses that we are going to be giving you in terms of not going to stay up late, not going to take you through to the final table. One away from there, and we will absolutely bring you coverage until we get to that point from here at the Hoiana Resort uh, in Hoi An, Vietnam. Talal Shikurchi has been holding court from the businessman side of the spectrum, Henry. Speak on it. I mean, we're starting to question whether this guy is really a businessman. Ali is one of the best to have ever played the game, just really leveraging his chip stack here with the chip lead and finds himself out top with 10 left, biggest 100K of the year. Yeah, 7.2 million in this record-breaking Triton main event where, of course, we have four seven-figure payouts at the top. Some have been collected thus far. 270,000 awaits the 10th place finisher while the final table will await all others. The bubble, 54,000. As you get a look at... The feature, which includes not one but two Germans in Smilkovic and Holtz. Petrangelo playing under the Stars and Stripes. Lun Lun from the Malaysian delegation. And Winfred Yu from Hong Kong. 16 bigs. Also a businessman. Randy? Oh, I'm sorry, Henry. You're like, you know that... That girl that, you know, like, texts you. You do know this because you, you experience it all the time. They're like, hey, how's it going? 11 p.m. Then you won't get a reply. A couple of weeks pass. Then you get hit up with the want to do breakfast this week. You, obviously, being here, you are too eager. Respond within five minutes. And get ghosted for four or five days. It's cool. I know what you're doing. Little tease. Well, put me in my place is fine. You just Don't let push. me know when you think it is that I'm supposed to respond to any aspect no, of listen. this story. Henry has Smilkovich has responded to the small blind with a six seven offsuit just mashing against Winfred you here. Yeah, some insane hmm. ICM pressure in effect here, ten left. Oh, oh my sure. Winfred. First hand says, you know what, boys? I'm not going to get pushed around by the chip leader. 15 bigs. I want to win this tournament. Tell you what. Not sure I blame him as Smilkovich 
definitely has been opening wide off of this second biggest stack in the field, takes his chances. Winfred is taking his chances, much more so, of course, as a result of his choice to call, especially considering that Roman Hrabets is still out there with half as many chips as right. Winfred. Winfred hunting title number three, by the way. Mm -hmm. Five cards to come, 57%. Ace high flop, couple of spades on board, and the presence of the nine and the four does give Daniel some backdoor straight draws as the seven of spades rolls off on the turn, Ali. <laughs> I mean, how do we find these sorts of cards in the deck that really present some real concerns for Winfred's wow. prospects as the river oh. is clean? <laughs> Ten of clubs, he doubles and leaves. Been for cards before, but, you know. <laughs> Roman Rabbits all alone on the short stack duties. Yeah, Roman way down there with seven bigs. Winfred. It is fearless. 15 big blinds. Calls it off. Holds with the ace three. Now nursing a very healthy 30 big blind stack. Moves up to fourth in chips as a byproduct of that double up on the final table bubble. Keep you guys updated of the action on the outer table. Mateus Shikerchi. First and second in chips in the tournament out there. It's close, close with ICM, I'm not sure. For 15 bigs, I honestly don't know the answer. Winfred, old school. ICM is for poor people, you know the drill. I put you out there and you're not sure whether or not you click call? I fold, personally, but I'm also not playing 100Ks and I'm also not in his shoes. Two titles, looking for title number three. There's a lot more to it than just the money. Nope, by the way, that Smilkovich immediately activates on the subsequent pot with an ace king, but can't find any customers. His range on display. Thank you. More winner. Been largely impressed with Thank the you. Triton yeah. first timer. He and Rabbits and Big Man, yeah. both at their first festival. Had a little chat with, ironically enough, Winfred during the break, by the way, in reference to his table and, and what he had been experiencing. He was on the outer with Smilkovich and uh, said, I don't know this guy. I said, how's he been playing? <laughs> He's tough. He's very tough. Very tough, very aggressive. Knows the spots where he can really lean into people. And for you with his newly found chips on the button, Jack Nine of Clubs. Saw you also speaking with Squiddy. Some commiserations, if you will, shared with Sam Grafton, obviously bowing out final two tables. I believe Talal Shikurchi also sharing a word with producer James on the break. Smilkovich opening yet again, this time with an ace eight. Winfred flatting from the button. Fedor comes along with 10 high, unimproved on the five tray deuce flop. Action yes. Smilkovich, chip lead, final table bubble. Get away with a lot of small betting. Sub one third. Smokovic really with the pay that man his money. Look going on. Currently 
third in chips. I think he plays a lot better than KGB, from what I've observed. I know the sample was a bit small, but this is Smilkovich, not Malkovich, on our hands. A man whose reputation precedes him in terms of online aptitude. Does indeed. Well, he may be less familiar to Winfred, to those who are regulars on the Triton series and who have frequented the high stakes online streets. An absolutely well known commodity. Queen Jack suited, cut off open. Fedor mulling. 500 to go. Maybe. It's the first of Fedor, suited king. Nice hand to do it with. Solver also doesn't mind flatting, but I think 10 left. Massive ICM implications. Talk about Nick Petrangelo, by the way, crushing this series. <coughs> the seal yeah. earlier on in a very real way. We've touched on it on multiple occasions, but he is dialed in. Taking 3-5 suited up against Winford. Here he is with the bad end of an open ender on the 8-7-6 board with a couple of clubs. Knuckled over. And with two overs and the flush draw, what's Winford want to do? 5-50 in the middle, I think. Stack off threshold when he does bet and face a potential check jam is okay with calling off here. Check jam, check race. Petrangelo committing himself potentially on this board texture. I think if we're a little bit deeper, say just north of 20, maybe do a bit more checking. Turn card connects with Winfred. Big improvement. Check back oh. feels a little tidier than firing Henry, or? Well, Winfred's gone the opposite. Yeah, he sure has. Extreme to that check back that you're talking about, just well, over bit ripping. Got the clubs in case of emergency as backup. Value, protection, final table bubble. Deeming the pot worthy of just taking it down right there rather than playing a guessing game on Rivers or potentially allowing Petrangelo to improve, catch up. Adrian Mateos. Thanks. Talal Shikurchi. Playing a sizable part, Harley. Certainly would seem to have been the case as Talal has been dethroned as the chip leader. Mateos replacing him there, reclaiming his seat on the summit. Little king 4 OV ace 5 on the ace 3 deuce. Shikurchi calling a couple of bets. Again, those hands or that outer table can be viewed over on the Triton Poker Plus app. Roman Kravitz, by the way, has chipped up a little bit. Not good news for those that are looking to punch a ticket to the FT, among whom we count Nick Petrangelo, who gets after the big blind of Smilkovich with the 10-9 <coughs> suited. Yeah, three short stacks out there. Lun Lun, Nick Petrangelo, Roman Kravitz. Then a bit of a jump to Fedor, Soizer, and Adams. Fedor on 22, Soizer on 23 bigs, and Adams on 25. Those three stacks kind of handcuffed, if you will, as things stand. Lun Lun, by the way, getting after it. 
here in Vietnam. Already adding two caches this series. Now a third in the 100k main. Love to see it. Part of the Malaysian contingent that come out here in force. Certainly do. Of course, Triton co-founders Paul Fua and Richard Young, as well as Richard's son, Wai Kin, all among said contingent. Michael Soiza is still in the hunt here. Also a member, currently sitting sixth. Yeah, he's been very active over on pokerstake.com, selling action to pretty much every event, I believe, including this 100k main. Not a lame horse. No, some viewers in the chat actually with small sweats. Let me get the juices flowing. Petrangelo gets back after it, this time in Ace-10. You have a dabble, Arlie. A friend comes up to you. Hey, playing, playing the 10K, the 25K. Want a piece? Never. Never? No. Nah. Well played. That's discipline right there. I mean... Saves the awkwardness. Uh, yeah, I just... Don't Not my thing. Enough to buy action and uh, don't want to offend you. I like it. That's definitely not no, the look, rationale. You just, but you know, I don't know. Don't I support your friends. It's fine. Right. No big deal. The guilt trip <laughs> method work for you typically in these spots. <laughs> King seven suited as Fedor takes the hijack spot and goes to work on blinds that have woken up with pocket threes and ace ten respectively. Winford's got Fedor covered. Yeah, this feels like a fold. Well, well played, Winfred. Lun Lun, Ace Ten O, one of the shortest stacks in the tournament. Few options available. Somewhat importantly, though, not the shortest stack in the tournament. Really not the easiest spot, as simple as this looks. Single raise, pot, UTG5. Pop. Mm. A joke. It's, the hard <coughs> chat, it's gonna defend. Note the SPR going to the flop. Which is Jack-5 deuce. Ace of hearts working. And Sloon still in front. Yeah, Ace of Hearts working, just not sure how often we get to realize our equity. Fedor certainly trying to come between here and equity realization as he barrels. Yeah, nice sizing. Maybe inviting the pill from Lun Lun with that ace of hearts that you alluded to. No, discipline. Ace high into the muck. Everybody keeping an eye on the state of affairs here. In event nine, the main event. The long deck side of the program here at this incredibly successful Super High Roller Series from Vietnam. Roman down to five big blinds, by the way, on the alpha table after defending his big against mm -hmm. Talao. Things didn't pan out. Shortest stack by considerable margin. Loon let go at that ace 10 now with an ace nine. Once again, it's a king seven that opens, suited in variety, this time spades for Smilko. Chip leader open, Lun Lun 
happy to take the regem spot for 11. Okay. Fatal in the big. How different is the Ace-9 suited to the Ace-10 offsuit situation from a hand to go where Loon Loon is now willing to jam but previously was not? Yeah, Fatal was opening off of 22 bigs from under the gun with the chip leader behind on the button. Ale. This one, different. Fedor, happy to come over the top. Smilkovic going to get out of the way. This is to get us down to the final table, Ali. Sure is. And the spot, not a good one for Lun Lun. 2.6. Hmm? Share the nine. Medium. Medium and medium and playing out on the outer <laughs> table as well, by the way. Between Mateus and Shikurchi. That's good, good news for Fedor so far. Keep you guys updated. I would have preferred if you had an ace. Believe ace that is what we're waiting on. I, I think I've seen a small card in his hand, so. No, really? I, I just saw it flash, so. I think it was probably the ace. No, I think I saw ace X suited. Ah. Ace medium. So once again, just waiting for the hand on table one to allow and Adrian to finish. Fedor, pocket nines. Lun Lun, ace nine suited, cards on their backs. Final table bubble time, Ali. Here we, we go. Could this be no. the moment? Yeah. I'm fine this way. Obviously, no, he wants Fedor. You have an ace, he said. Oh, okay. I thought like uh, the other one. Significant equity advantage and even more so courtesy of the Jack 6 4 flop. 83% as the light flickers in Lun Lun's world. Can he pick up the flush sweat? No. A queen on the turn, not exactly an exciting one. As Loon reaches for the mic, be looking for any bit of superstition he can find in search of the ace, and instead, he hits a 10. No shame in it whatsoever, Mr. Loon. None at all. Can't fault the rejam against the chip leader, just unfortunate. You didn't ask me, do I have an ace? To run into <laughs> Fatal. I don't want to make him feel bad. In the big. I have an ace. And with that, I was going Ali, to do that same thing. final table of event number nine, the 100k main. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. That's it. Well, has been set. Morning. And it's been set luck, with guys. not one, but two Triton nice first timers. You and have to play more. A couple of VIPs yeah. as well. Shakurchi and you on the VIP side of the conversation. First timers in Rabbits. And of course, Smilkovic. Not me, you. 270,000 going home with Lun Lun. 324,000 locked up by the remainder of the field with a jump up to 418,400 that will be upon us in terms of ninth to eighth. Well, it was a short stanza there, was it not, as we come back into the broadcast booth here to wind things down for the evening with this FT. We talked about it. It's a three day affair. This is the second full day of poker. These nine guys really going to be earning it but four seven figure paydays up top just a staggering amount 3.25 million awaiting our champion of course the watch as well as you get a look at those payouts on the triton poker plus app henry sum it up for us then from uh the top of the day until now honestly surprised that we're here at this this time i was expecting and it well much later night than this shout out to luca vivaldi obviously uh, organizing the structure. But yeah, three days of play tomorrow, the main event. Talal Shikurchi coming in as the chip leader to the final table, but not not a byproduct of, you know, big hand over big hand or anything like that. Just pure aggression from Talal, just finding the spots, really leveraging his big stack. And I've got to tip my hat to him because in my opinion, those final two tables down to the final table just playing an absolute blender. Aggression is not going to be an attribute exclusive to Talal once this final table gets underway. Looking at the customers he's got behind him, truly, you think about the likes of Petrangelo, you think about Smilkovic, Mateos, Holes, I mean... Everyone. 
there isn't a name there that just doesn't have the caliber to take this down. Nowhere to hide, my friend. No. But uh, somewhere to go for us, and that is to our chambers to retire for the evening. Two o'clock tomorrow, the restart as the final table of event number nine is set and will resume. Until then, on behalf of our crew and Henry Kilbane, Ali Najad saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you later.